Chapter 2205, Star God Pendant. For a man and woman to be together, it would be a huge problem if a man could not satisfy his woman, no matter how much he enjoyed it. Things would worsen with time and he would eventually develop a sense of repulsion toward it. However, the elderly members of the family kept on arranging marriages for him. He had seen countless renowned doctors and alchemists, but it was strange. This condition was surprisingly difficult to cure and he did not improve at all. He then gradually lost his confidence as a result. Unknowingly, the news of him being useless had been spread out. He was quite useless before this too, but that was just in terms of his cultivation. Now, it became more to do with the women. Many people took this as a casual joke on the dining table. After King Shui mentioned it, Tai Dashao's face flushed red while staring at King Shui with his eyes full of killing intent. King Shui was rubbing salt into his wound. No, it was even worse. At this moment, Tai Dashao wished to kill King Shui at once to release his anger. That was the power of words. A simple statement could maximize one's hatred. Tai Dashao did not think about how King Shui had managed to find out about his condition. The first thought that came into his mind was that he was being humiliated. This man revealed his ugly side. With a grand wave of hands, he said, Come on, hit him but don't kill him. Hey dumbass, can you stop that? What is your main point of coming to me today anyway? Don't you want to cure your illness? King Shui emphasized the word, illness, and, cure. The statement was very effective as Tai Dashao stopped his men immediately. He did not come to King Shui for King Shui's power. Instead, he heard King Shui was a miraculous physician. King Shui seemed to be really popular here. So he came to try his luck. Yet, King Shui was not very kind and said he only treated incurable or chronic illnesses. Tai Dashao wondered if his own condition was considered as a chronic illness. A lot of men who suffered from erectile dysfunction spent their whole lives with troops of wives. They even lived with wine and women outside. That was plainly cheating themselves and others. However, he was still young and wanted to make an attempt. Hence, he went out of his way to get here. He thought that the Imperial Cuisine Hall would surely be nice if he sounded polite and showed his identity. Previously, everyone he had approached treated him as a precious guest. This time, it didn't go as he expected and it felt really bad. You are willing to treat me? Tai Dashao was stunned and asked, feeling confused. No, I just don't want to be troubled. I'm afraid that your seniors would bring chaos here if we're to kill you. I can treat you, but it will come at a price, King Shui answered. You mean you can cure me? Tai Dashao was still surprised. Your illness might seem difficult to others, but I can cure it easily. I can find out whether it is curable today. King Shui sounded confident. Okay, okay, as long as you can cure it, just set a price. I will treat you as the most precious guest from today onward, Tai Dashao replied instantly. Money has become the most worthless thing by now. You have to know my rules here. I either reject a patient, take a half of his belongings, or an item. King Shui looked at Tai Dashao and said. I'm fine with you taking half of my items, but I'm not the handler of the clan now. How should we do this? Tai Dashao frowned as he replied. I mean something that belongs to you. I won't force someone to give something that is not his. Oh, that is great. My own belongings. Although I can't give you my women and kids, Tai Dashao sounded serious. King Shui rubbed his head. Fine, I'm not planning to do that either. Women and kids are humans. They are individuals. As such, I have no rights to ask for them. You're right. I've finally heard something nice from you. 
King Shui turned around and saw Bei Wang Fan's indifferent face. He then turned back and faced Tai Dashao to say, All right, I take back my words. I don't want anything. Come, wait until I cure you. Then get lost and never come back to give me troubles again. Tai Dashao giggled and walked toward King Shui. He was not afraid that King Shui would do anything. King Shui held his hand out and tapped on Tai Dashao's body rapidly. The Nine Yang Force opened up a hidden, small meridian in his body gradually. Warm energy flowed within his body and Tai Dashao felt his lower part heat up and become as hard as iron. Luckily, it was covered in clothes. Tai Dashao was excited. He had never felt so strong before. Though he could get hard previously, it did not feel as powerful as now. Then, King Shui performed the acupuncture. All these were done while they were floating in the air. It took about an hour. After finishing, King Shui kept his needles and said, Remember what I have said. Do not trouble me unless it is a serious matter. If my woman had not spoken on your behalf, you would already be dead by now. Your family has a strong background, but that is just about your family, not you. The worst thing I have to do is just run away after killing you. Nobody would be able to catch me if I escaped and nobody can do anything to me. You will find out at that time. Tai Dashao did not care about it. I know, I sensed your killing intent, but that is over now. I want to thank you. How should I express my gratitude to you? No matter what you say, you are my savior now. I might be a bastard and a failure, but I know how to be grateful for what I've received. I won't simply bully the weaker ones. King Shui felt this guy was not as bad as he seemed. King Shui waved his hand, I have said it before. I do not need anything from you. You must be sister-in-law. Frankly speaking, my woman is also beautiful, but she is no match for you. I really have no idea how to thank him. I have something here which I'm unsure of its value so I'll give it to you. Tai Dashao said and passed a star-shaped pendant to Bei Wang Fan. Then, he looked at King Shui, I know you don't really like me. Honestly, I don't like myself either. I'm Tai Dashao. That's my name. I'm from the Tai Ching Immortal Palace. Let's meet again in the future. I see you as my friend. Tai Dashao was straightforward. He left with his men soon after saying that. King Shui shook his head. Some things were so peculiar. Initially, they were to fight mercilessly and King Shui would probably kill the opponent. Eventually, the battle turned into a peaceful encounter. An unnecessary slaughter was avoided. Perhaps, they might even meet again. He shook his head and stopped thinking about it. At this moment, Bei Wang Fan approached King Shui and passed the beautiful star pendant to him. The star pendant was very pretty. It looked like an actual star. A silver string held the pendant together. It gave out a soft glow and an extraordinary charm. The glow was very comforting. Perhaps, that was why Tai Dashao had kept it for so long. Usually, a man would not wear jewelry and this seemed to be a female necklace. However, Tai Dashao did not give it to his women. Maybe, he just obtained it recently and did not have the chance to give it away. He ended up gifting it to Bei Wang Fan. King Shui looked at this star pendant and was startled. Using the heavenly vision technique, he saw the wonder of this pendant. Star God Pendant, Divine Artifact, able to be boosted. It was a mysterious and powerful pendant which could be possessed. To connect with it and own it, seven drops of blood were needed and they needed to be added separately in ten sittings. Chapter 2206, Divine Artifact, The Goddess is already taken. Star God Pendant, Divine Artifact, able to be boosted and could recognize an owner after dripping seven drops of their essence blood onto it in ten sittings. 
It could block a fatal blow for its owner once every day and could increase the strength of all aspects of the owner. One of the side benefits was that it could boost the recovery rate of injuries, essence, and energy. Star God Energy. There would be a certain chance that this would activate automatically whenever the owner attacked, and would negate 20% of opponent's defense. Star Teleportation. After blocking a fatal strike once per day and if the owner encountered further critical danger, the pendant would teleport the owner to a safe place 10,000 miles away and aid the owner in concealing his aura completely for four hours. King Shui was startled. This was an extremely powerful item. Possessing it meant that one would have two extra lives every day. It could even boost 20% of all aspects of strength. Not to mention the most important point, which was that this divine artifact could grow further and continue to level up. Many divine artifacts would still retain the possibility to level up further, but it was very tough for them to do so. However, as long as they had this ability, their value would instantly shoot up by many times. Bei Wang Fan noticed that King Shui kept staring at the pendant. She curiously asked, What? Is it a good item? Indeed. King Shui immediately replied, What's so good about it? Bei Wang Fan was very curious. King Shui moved closer to her, took one of her fingers, and suddenly bit it. Bei Wang Fan was surprised by King Shui's action. She wanted to pull her hand back instinctively from the shock and pain. King Shui savored the moment for an instant and even licked her finger. This caused Bei Wang Fan to panic, but a moment later, her essence blood had dripped onto the pendant. When the pendant began to glow with a dazzling light, Bei Wang Fan was surprised once again. This was too beautiful. After the process was completed, King Shui fastened the pendant around her neck. She felt very comfortable but what truly shocked her was how powerful this star god pendant was. She then inclined her head and stared at King Shui. This man clearly knew how valuable this item was and yet, he had chosen to give it to her. King Shui, this is too precious. I can't accept it, Bei Wang Fan said. It has already recognized you as the owner, King Shui said and smiled. Don't worry about it. I'm giving this to you willingly. You don't need to feel any psychological pressure. If you really aren't fond of me, I wouldn't force you. You don't need to feel that you owe me because you are someone that I love. King Shui laughed as he spoke. Someone that I love. These four words gave Bei Wang Fan a huge rush of impact. You are also someone who has a position in my heart. Other than my family members, Bei Wang Fan softly replied. King Shui smiled and hugged her. Not bad. Little Fan Fan also knows how to speak words of such affection. I want to hear you calling me Brother Shui. Brother Shui. King Shui trembled a little. Her voice was truly very nice to hear, making him feel very satisfied. He he. Bei Wang Fan also started giggling when she saw King Shui's reaction. Her bright eyes and beautiful teeth could be seen. This was the first time she had laughed so happily and truly. It was like the blossoming of a beautiful flower. Your beauty is so celestial-like, causing me to feel that you are someone who doesn't exist in reality and will fly away to the nine heavens at any time, King Shui sighed. You are always saying such sweet things, Bei Wang Fan smiled. She was really very happy at this moment. There's no need for me to lie to you. Could it be that you wanted me to tell you that you are ugly instead? My skin might be thick, but it isn't thick enough for me to lie blatantly like that. So you really do have a way with words. No wonder you have so many women. Who said that I have many women? You said it yourself. Don't tell me. You really don't have other women. Bei Wang Fan laughed as she spoke. Cough cough. Let's change the topic. 
How are things at the Taiching Immortal Palace? King Shui feigned ignorance and started to diverge from the conversation topic. Bei Wang Fan replied, The Taiching Immortal Palace is a very strong existence, but Tai Dashao cannot escape the predestined fate of his generation. He is the only male heir remaining and if something were to happen to him, the line of descent for the Taiching clan will be finished. Tai Dashao's strength isn't very strong because his clan doesn't dare to send him out to temper himself, fearing that he might die. He has never been in danger before. Although this man is arrogant and despotic, his innate nature isn't bad. Maybe his personality was shaped by his environment, and he became nothing more than a tool used for child reproduction by his clan's orders. Truth be told, he can be considered quite fortunate. King Shui smiled. How can he not be fortunate, living such a relaxed life? Wouldn't all guys love that? Bei Wang Fan curiously asked. Ha ha, you are right. King Shui said and nodded. The two of them returned to the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Right now, the hall itself had seemingly become a little nest for King Shui and Bei Wang Fan. They both stayed at the same level and would have meals together and roam the streets for leisure. During the night, King Shui would cultivate and Bei Wang Fan would refine the treasures for strengthening. The days passed by peacefully. King Shui treated many patients and built up many connections. After all, the experts here were many in number. The most important thing was that King Shui had saved someone from a reclusive clan. As a reward, the clan told King Shui that if he ran into any trouble, they will help him out once. This was truly a surprise. Even up till now, King Shui had no idea how strong this reclusive clan was. Because the other party was hiding in the shadows, King Shui had completely no information about them. However, he guessed that their strength should be even greater than the palace lord of the blazing fire immortal palace. Right now in the northern emperor domain, the Divine Palace and the Taiyi Immortal Palace were the strongest existences. This was especially so for the Divine Palace. The news of King Shui defeating the Blazing Fire Immortal Palace Palace Lord had made him and the Divine Palace's fame grew even greater. After all, King Shui's future was boundless. Another news was regarding King Shui and Bei Wang Fan. Bei Wang Fan was the most beautiful woman in the entire Northern Emperor domain and right now, this goddess was already seen as taken. Although she wasn't married yet, the rumors said that she was already living together with King Shui. However, no one could verify the truth of this piece of info. With regards to this, many people were sighing. Sadly, all of them knew that they had no hope and they all were harboring feelings of envy toward King Shui, instead of jealousy. This was because they understood that Bei Wang Fan was at a level so high that they could never reach. This concept was like the loser fanboys of King Shui's previous world, marveling at the beauty of the female idols, yet knowing that they would never be able to get together with them. When their idols changed boyfriend, they wouldn't feel too strongly against that as they knew the probability of them being the boyfriend was even less, compared to stars falling down onto earth. Chapter 2207-16 to TH grade divine weapons are actually powerful. The peaceful days passed just like that and in a flash, it was already three months later. At this moment, King Shui was in his Violet Jade Immortal Realm and awaiting the third level of the Hundred Treasure Chest to open. There were still two hours before it would open and King Shui was filled with anticipation. Right now, he needed many divine crystals and divine square cauldrons to upgrade his divine weapon. He also didn't know how many treasures he would get, once the third level of the treasure chest opened. He could only hope that there would be sufficient materials for him to upgrade it twice. The time needed to open the treasure chest took longer and longer. 
He was worried that the next opening might need a year's worth of time, and the next might even need 10 years or a few decades. The main point was, the passage of time was counted in the real world. Hence, after the fifth level, King Shui felt that it wouldn't be so easy to open the hundred treasure chest anymore. King Shui felt that he would at most, open it up till the fifth level. Hopefully, from the third to the fifth level, he would be able to gain many divine weapon crystals and square cauldrons. Unknowingly, the two hours had passed by. King Shui stared at the hundred treasure chest, feeling very excited in his heart. There were many treasures that came out. There were a total of 120 aptitude pills, 120 potential pills, and 120 growth pills. There were also 300 square cauldrons, 3 divine weapon crystals, 300 cultivation pills, 1 fourth grade attacking talisman stone, 1 defense talisman stone, a recovery talisman stone, an endurance talisman stone, a power talisman stone, a tenacity talisman stone, and 1 fourth grade evasion talisman stone. Right now, King Shui was most worried about the square cauldrons and divine weapon crystals. He just gained 300 of them. He didn't take them out, but directly placed them inside the treasure chest. This would enable it to increase its capabilities once. You could upgrade any item by doing so. The effect was just like the treasure basin. However, the treasure basin couldn't be placed inside the hundred treasure chest and vice versa or one might devour the other. In the worst case, they might both disappear. In any case, he needed some time before he could upgrade his flying sword. He then turned his attention to the time needed before the fourth level of the treasure chest could be opened. Half a year later, King Shui heaved a sigh of relief. The time needed was still acceptable. In this case, to open the fifth level, around a year of time should be required, or even longer. King Shui was actually somewhat depressed when he thought of this. It seemed like he would still need to collect more square cauldrons and crystals from other sources. The upgrade time of the hundred treasure chest wasn't considered too long, but to King Shui, because it needed roughly a month's worth of time, it felt arduously long. This would be considered quite fast by others. After upgrading his flying sword, he decided to upgrade his other treasures as well. Because now, the capabilities of the upgrade were up by one times. His 300 crystals and square cauldrons could be considered as 600. To upgrade to the 14th grade, he needed 200 square cauldrons and 50 divine weapon crystals. To upgrade to the 15th grade, he needed 200 square cauldrons and 100 divine weapon crystals. To upgrade to the 16th grade he needed 200 square cauldrons and 150 divine weapon crystals. King Shui discovered that the number of square cauldrons needed didn't change after each grade. In that case, he might as well use them all up. The number of divine weapon crystals needed kept increasing as the level upgrade increased. He wondered if the increase would remain at a constant of 50 or not. King Shui stopped thinking about these things. After using up all the materials, he felt extremely happy. After that, he equipped all the fourth graded talisman stones. Although the boost to his strength wasn't that significant, it was still better than nothing. After that, he happily looked at the upgraded flying sword. Big Dipper Sword, a flying sword type divine weapon. 16th grade. The user would take 10% less damage in combat. It also increased 16% recovery speed of the user. The damage dealt by 3.2 billion Dao, increased Dao defense by 3.2 billion as well as minimizing injuries by 3.2 billion Dao. Divine Weapon Seal. When activated, it can embed a talisman stone. Attack, defense, evasion, recovery, endurance, speed, 
tenacity, and power were all increased by a factor of 6%. King Shui's current strength ranged from 6 billion Dao to 60 billion Dao. Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Defense. Increased defense by 20%. This had made King Shui's defense reach 72 billion Dao. Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence. It increased 6 billion Dao in blocking effect, giving King Shui roughly around 78 billion Dao in defense. With the additional effect of his flying sword, he could resist another 3.2 billion Dao of injury and increase his defense. All in all, his defense reached roughly around 85 billion Dao. That, in addition to the defensive attribute that was already primary on his weapon, it could resist up to another 2.6 billion Dao with his Emperor's Key, providing another 2 billion Dao in defense. In any case, he could almost negate the strength of his opponent's attacks by half. Unknowingly, King Shui had reached an unprecedented peak. Those twice as strong than King Shui might not even be able to defeat him. There were many factors to consider in combat. For example, speed and endurance were all included, as well as special techniques and methods. Hence, one couldn't compare just by pure strength alone. Also, King Shui had a nine yang body. His bones were sturdy. His tenacity was immensely high, along with his extremely quick recovery power. He even had the nine yang dragon soul, boosting his soul power. Right now, King Shui could be considered a powerful body refinement cultivator. There were truly not many who could defeat King Shui. After exiting the Violet Jade Immortal Realm, King Shui had a satisfied look on his face. Time had gone by too fast. The Imperial Cuisine Hall had expanded during these three months, as they had purchased the feudal land it was on and opened it again. Also, they invited many doctors and physicians. Those people all had a connection with either the Divine Palace or the Taiyi Immortal Palace and were extremely dependable. As of now, he had no plans to accept any disciples but he wouldn't be stingy with his medical techniques. He would share his skills with the doctors as long as they could learn it. It would belong to them alone. Those people were all at least middle-aged and had a very powerful cultivation base. Naturally, there were also some who had no cultivation base at all. But all of them still respectfully referred to King Shui as teacher when they were there. Referring to him as teacher was a term of respect. If they referred to him as master, it would mean that he would pass down inheritances to them. Many of these people naturally wanted to have him as their master, but they didn't have the fortune for it to be so. Right now, Zhang Yu was completely in charge of the Imperial Cuisine Hall. He was a disciple of King Shui. King Shui would not interfere if nothing major happened in the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Unless, of course, there were people coming here to find trouble or patients Zhang Yu wasn't able to treat. King Shui, that Tai Dashao came here to look for you. Bei Wang Fan came to his courtyard and spoke. Bei Wang Fan coincidentally met Tai Dashao when she went out. Tai Dashao was extremely respectful and clearly stated his intentions for coming. This was why Bei Wang Fan was willing to help him relay his message. Tai Dashao. King Shui was bewildered. He then spent a few moments recalling that it was a person whom he had cured a few months ago. He wondered what Tai Dashao had come here for. Chapter 2208. Waft of Fragrance, Widow King. Young Master Tai. King Shui was confused. Luckily, he recalled the person who was healed by him a few months ago. Still, he wondered why the guy was here. You remembered. Bei Wang Fan smiled. I do. Could it be that his balls are not working again? King Shui asked in confusion. Bei Wang Fan's face flushed red instantly. 
This bastard did it on purpose. She did not say anything but simply glared at King Shui. Then she walked away. Not bad. You are more ladylike now, King Shui said with a smile. He made sure that Bei Wang Fan heard him. Bei Wang Fan's mouth corners lifted to form a curve. She was as charming as a fairy. Meanwhile, King Shui started to head out from the backyard of the imperial cuisine, which was recently made. As he arrived at the front yard, he noticed young Master Tai waiting there. He stood there alone and was very happy to see King Shui. King Shui thought of the star god Pendant as he saw young Master Tai. After all, this fellow had gifted a powerful divine weapon to him. So, King Shui smiled. What brings you here? Is it not working? What is not working? Ah, no no. You are a miraculous physician. It is great. Young Master Tai did not know his meaning initially. He figured out when he saw King Shui's eyeing his lower body part. Younger brother, I'm here to drink with you. I know an expert like you doesn't care about the common things. I got two divine wines. I purposely came to share these with you, young master Tai said as he took out a bottle of wine happily. The bottle was not big. It was about 1.5 kilogram. The bottle itself was not flashy as it was painted in a plain and worn out color. Yet, it looked very classy and outstanding. King Shui never lacked any good wine. It was something that young Master Tai did not know. However, King Shui was surprised when young Master Tai opened the wine bottle. The reason was that the quality of the wine was not bad. It was on par with his own tiger bone liquor. King Shui's wine was specially made with a secret recipe and it was kept for many years. This wine seemed to be exclusively made with a special recipe too. It looked like an aged wine. It doesn't smell bad huh? Let us try. Young Master Tai poured a bowl for King Shui before pouring another bowl for himself. King Shui smiled and toasted with young Master Tai. It had a fresh and thick fragrance in his mouth, as if a kind of delicacy were melting inside his mouth its wonderful taste spreading throughout the body. All the senses were awakened. Not bad. Where is this from? King Shui nodded and asked out of curiosity. This was produced somewhere in my place. This kind of wine relies on its age. If it is not kept long enough, the taste will be greatly reduced. This bottle of wine was from a collection, hence it tastes so good. The wine made by this person takes a long, long time to become this good. By that time, we would probably be old by then. Young Master Tai said, What is the name of this wine? Waft of fragrance. Young Master Tai said, Can you bring me to the person who made this wine? King Shui asked, Sure, but this person has a weird temper. She knows how to make good wine and she doesn't sell it to everybody. No matter how much money people offer, she won't sell a drop of it to them, young Master Tai said. Oh, this personality is great. King Shui said seriously. Young Master Tai always reckoned that he was abnormal, but he soon came to the realization that there were many people who were far more abnormal than himself. King Shui headed there straight after the conversation. After two hours, he rushed to the Pure Domain together with young Master Tai. The Pure Domain was further north to the Northern Emperor Domain and the Blazing Fireland. But, it was in the same layer as the Northern Emperor Domain. However, the further north the force is situated, the stronger and the larger its land covered. Now, King Shui was bold because of his great skills. Thus, he headed to the Pure Domain alone. With King Shui's and young Master Tai's speed, they managed to reach the Pure Domain in two days' time. That was owing to the Nine Continent Steps, otherwise, it would take at least one week. This trip made young Master Tai envious. 
He was able to save a lot of time when traveling with King Shui. On the extremely wide streets, ancient and tall buildings were built and spread throughout the land, endlessly. The crowd and beast vehicles were busy crossing and passing. There were people who wore the warrior and knight attires walking to and fro on the streets. Some people were riding on demonic beasts. Some were riding on the birds. Some were holding swords, while some were holding bows and arrows. Some walked alone, whereas some were in groups. There were young people wearing luxurious clothing and hugging ladies as they walked past. There were also the noble old men who went past in luxurious beast vehicles. King Shui got used to a world like this. But he still had a special feeling every time he saw it. This was a world ruled by strength. This was an interesting world, filled with beauties. You saw a beauty. Young Master Tai asked as he noticed King Shui stopping and looking at his surroundings. No. I don't like to see beauties, King Shui replied and smiled. I forgot to tell you something. The one who made the wine is a beauty herself. This wine is passed in the family. But this beauty is slightly older. She was married, but her man died before she could have any children. Her parents are also gone, leaving her alone to take care of the wine shop. Young Master Tai said, You like her? King Shui asked. You will like her too when you see her. Although she was married, frankly speaking, this woman is no weaker than your women. If it were not for her marital status and her title of being a disaster, she would definitely be considered as the prettiest woman in the pure domain, young Master Tai said seriously. All right, let's not talk about this. We are here to check the wine. We will talk about the rest next time. King Shui stopped the talk with this remark. He had some wine now, but there were not many types of them. This fragrance wine was not bad. After all, it was comparable to the tiger bone liquor. If he knew the recipe, with the ingredients in the realm of violet jade immortal, he should be able to bring it to the next level. It would not be weaker than the plum blossom wine and the precious dew wine. How do you address this winemaker? King Shui thought of that. Widow King. King Shui was surprised by this familiar sounding name. He had a brief thought and smiled. Still, he asked, could it be just, Widow King? Her name is Nalan King, young Master Tai replied. Without them knowing, they arrived at a rather remote place. It was not easy to find a quiet place in this city. It was only relatively more peaceful here. It was more peaceful in here than the most bustling places. It could also be said that the living status here was lower than the most bustling places. Fragrance Shack. This was the name of the wine shop. It was a very ordinary place. But, there was a little sentiment. Many people around here were selling wine and it was crowded in every shop, except for the fragrance shack. It was quiet there, as if there was nobody inside. The wine is so nice. Why aren't there any customers? King Shui asked. Because they only sell wine once a week. Moreover, they only sell 50 bottles. The wine shops around here borrowed the fame of the fragrance shack. When people can't get wine from here, they will surely buy from those shops. Thus, all the shops nearby take advantage of its fame, young Master Tai explained. You seem to know this quite well. You come here often. Yes. Otherwise, how could I get the two bottles? Young Master Tai did not deny and replied jokingly. The door of the fragrance shack was closed, but not locked. However, this was indicating that they were not selling wine at the moment. Moreover, people here knew about this strange wine shop. Nobody gave face to it. Plus, the beauty was a disaster. Many people wanted to get this woman, but apparently they failed. Some of them even ended up in a terrible way. Chapter 2209 Outstanding Beauty, Widow King, asked for wine recipe.
Young Master Tai led the way to this fragrance shack. The entrance was rather small, about three meters tall. Both doors were about three meters wide. It was considered a small entrance in the main continent. After entering, they realized that the place was fine looking. The buildings here did not have many floors. Most of them only had one story. However, it was still very spacious. If it was in the past life, King Shui would not dare to stay alone in such a spacious place. There were many things in the compound, including many ingredients used to make wine. There were also flower petals. King Shui also saw a garden far away. Just when King Shui was looking around, a woman walked over from afar. Although King Shui heard from young Master Tai that this woman was very pretty, he was still perplexed. She seemed to be a young married lady. This was the impression that she gave people from the first sight. It was not from the physical appearance, but her natural flirtatious aura. Her body was no different from a teenage girl. But she was still relatively adequate in the right areas, especially her round and perky chest which stretched her clothes out. The solid shape was so prominent, the tall and round bamboo shoots type of shape was extremely impactful. Her body was tall and lean, slightly taller than 1.7 meters. Her legs were straight and slim. There were no traces of her being a married woman at all. The most beautiful part was her face. Her dark eyes were like sparkling stars and moon. Yet, these eyes were very cold. It came from the indifference from within her soul. Her face was as pale as jade. Her nose was tall and straight. Her dark and long hair was tied up simply, giving out a learned and rational vibe. Miss King, this friend of mine wants to see the wine, young Master Tai said humbly. King Shui had bewildered feeling. He did not expect young Master Tai to be so low profile in front of a woman. Him, have a look then, the woman left right after talking. She did not even once look at King Shui. Her voice was magnetic and melodious. It was nice to hear but oppressing, making people feel unable to stand up straight while facing her. It had been ages since King Shui had been ignored like this. He was thinking about how to address her previously, but she did not even acknowledge him. King Shui did not get mad, but anyone else would not feel great being neglected. Young Master Tai smiled, looking at King Shui's face. Don't make such a face. You are not handsome so that is normal. I'm more handsome than you, at least, King Shui said. What? How could you say that? I don't mean to belittle you. But if we're speaking of looks, you are definitely two grades lower than me, Young Master Tai said while touching his own face. King Shui looked at this big guy before finally giving up. Young Master Tai was indeed handsome, but his good appearance was far behind his narcissism. Oh yeah, did you come here to just look around? Young Master Tai asked. I'm here to get the wine recipe, but I don't harbor any hope after seeing her, King Shui replied. Recipes. Usually, they won't give them to others, unless the offer is exceptionally good. I can offer something that she could be interested in, but she probably won't give me the chance. Did this woman suffer through something in her life? She seems to hate this world. The entire family of her husband was killed on her wedding night, leaving her alone. Not only that, it was said that someone had left a message, saying that if she marries anyone, his entire family will die. It's surprising that something like this happens. It seems like someone wants to marry her and doesn't want anyone else to get her. But no one showed up. No one got close to her so this woman has never been close to anyone up till now. Do you know the strength of this woman? Her, maybe Xianxian level. King Shui shook his head. She is very strong. Maybe even stronger than me. By the way, when was it that her in-laws were killed? Fifty years ago. This woman was still young. 
not much older than King Shui. She should be around Bei Wang Fan's age. However, what was her strength 50 years ago? Did she only improve her strength after all those years? Did she not fight and kill at that time? King Shui asked. She did, but the opponent was strong and she was weak. Yet, the opponent did not kill her or harm her, young Master Tai said. King Shui felt muddle-headed now, but he stopped thinking. Perhaps, Nalan King had obtained the ability to take revenge. Besides, it was none of his business to care. Both of them looked around casually. King Shui looked at the raw materials. Wine mainly depended on its recipe. Without the recipe, given all the ingredients, you could not produce the same wine. Let's go and find her and see if we can exchange for the wine recipe, King Shui thought and said. Young Master Tai smiled bitterly, but he still headed along with King Shui to meet the woman. At this moment, the woman was staring blankly at a flower bush. The person was more beautiful than the flowers, but she was cold. King Shui knew this was not simply that but the result of a tough and strong soul. It was as if a man saw a beautiful tiger, but dared not to step forward. That was a kind of fear from the bottom of the heart, but it was also kind of admiration. I want your wine recipe, King Shui directly told the woman. Young Master Tai rubbed his head. Could there really be someone as straightforward as him? Who would give it to you when spoken to like that, lest they were fools? Reason. The woman turned around. This was her first time meeting someone so straightforward. This person was either a fool or a wise man. He should not be a fool. Though he was with the young Master Tai, he should not be a fool. Young Master Tai would probably bang the wall if he found out about the woman's thoughts. I can exchange it for something. Maybe I can offer you some wine, King Shui thought for a bit and said. The woman frowned in return. No worries, my wine is not worse than yours. I just want to make several types of wine. Your wine takes time to age. I can increase the wine's age quickly. The duration can be shortened by several times. King Shui possessed the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. More importantly, he also had the treasure basin and the hundred treasure chest. With that, he could double it up twice. King Shui finished his lines and took out a small bottle of plum blossom wine. It was only a small bottle, about 250 milliliters. It was very delicate and plain. Then, he took out a white porcelain glass. He filled half of the glass and gave it to the woman saying, see if it is to your liking. Young Master Tai was intrigued the second the wine was opened. The aroma was one grade better than the fragrance wine. One would feel refreshed by just smelling it. Besides, this was the first time young Master Tai saw this woman accepting the wine glass from a man. She took a little sip. Though her expression seemed to have remained the same, there were slight changes. That surprise was spreading like a ripple. You made this wine. It has been kept for at least 10,000 years. If it is stored as usual, you would need at least 10,000 years to reach this quality. The woman still sounded oppressing, but it was charming. It was magnetic and knowledgeable. How about I exchange this wine recipe with yours? King Shui proposed with a smile. I can't make this wine even if you give me this recipe. You should be the only one who owns this plum blossom. The normal plum blossom doesn't have this kind of chilling and lofty nature. I can't reach this age as well. Nalan King seemed to have studied the wine well. She hardly spoke so much to a man like this. How can I exchange for your wine recipe then? King Shui looked at her and asked. You have such a nice thing and you're interested in my wine recipe. The woman was confused. Chapter 2210. Young Master Ties Women. You have such a nice thing and you're interested in my wine recipe. 
The woman was confused. Let me put it this way. I have at least three types of wine that can compare to your fragrance wine. However, I just want to expand my collection. Also, I can improve your recipe after getting it. I can add in some other things which should make it better than before. King Shui thought and said indirectly. The woman looked at the plum blossom wine in her hand. There was only less than half a glass of wine remaining. She held it close to her lips and drank it. King Shui felt wonderful watching the crystal clear liquid running down the moist and pretty lips. I can give you the recipe. Forget about your own. But, can you let me taste it when you make the fragrance wine later? Nalan King stared at King Shui and said. This is not a demand. I will give as many as you want by then. Ask for something else. I will fulfill your needs as long as they are within my limits, King Shui said seriously. I don't desire anything else. This is the recipe. Go away. I want to be alone. Nalan King said as she put the recipe in front of King Shui and left. King Shui had a look at the recipe. The ingredients stated could be easily found. Yet, there were some requisitions such as to be exposed under the sun for certain length of time, a measure of exposure to be air-dried, what the ratio was and so on. After obtaining the recipe, King Shui and young Master Tai left the fragrance shack. They were upset and wondered if they had just been chased away. Younger brother, since we are here, we shall visit my place no matter what. Young Master Tai said to King Shui at that moment and he walked out of Nalan King's. King Shui initially wanted to go back, but after listening to young Master Tai, he thought and nodded, all right, sorry for troubling you. What are you saying? Regardless of how you see me, whether as a foppish man or a useless son of a rich man, I will still treat you as my brother. I said it before. I will return the favor. Don't think that I'm unrealistic. There is no unconditional love or hate without reasons in this world anyway. Young Master Tai sounded serious. King Shui never thought that this fellow could say something factual like this. This statement was very true. Just like how a man likes a beautiful woman. A woman's beauty could be a valid reason even though it was superficial and brutal. This was just an excuse. All right, let's go then. I will have a friend in the pure domain next time, King Shui said with a smile. Ha ha, okay, I have a friend now too. You are my first friend, young Master Tai said seriously. King Shui gave young Master Tai a perplexed look. Don't give me that look. Disreputable friends, those who enjoy the good moments with you, there are many of them. After all, I'm just a young master without much power. Those friends don't actually treat me as a friend and we all know that very well. I don't have genuine friends. Although I have a good background, maybe because of my own ability, I can't get real friends. You are my first actual friend. King Shui understood. This fellow was the only son of the family after all. Great warriors would be protecting him. King Shui could sense that. Usually, without a real life threat, these people would not show up. As a warrior, one could not break through without experiencing dangers and obstacles. Tai Ching a mortal palace. It required a certain foundation to be able to bring the title of Tai Ching in the pure domain. Tai Ching Immortal Palace was one of them. In the pure domain, Tai Ching Immortal Palace was in the top 10. The top 10 knew each other personally despite being opponents or competitors. As for the name of a sect, if one could claim the name of Tai Ching, nobody would question it. Yet, without strength, they would not dare to carry the title even if it was given to them. In general, a force carrying the name of the domain indicated that it was able to represent the whole domain. It would face some external challenges such as the threats from the powerful forces around it. 
The Tai Ching Immortal Palace had been standing for ages. It was definitely an enormous thing in the pure domain. However, it was a great challenge for them in the young Master Tai's generation. It was difficult to get over this generation. Young Master Tai's children were growing up too. They needed the next few generations to compensate for it. The connection at young Master Tai's level was nearly broken. It required several subsequent generations to compensate for the loss. The main continent emphasized on inheritance. It could not be stopped. The biggest responsibility of young Master Tai in his life was to pass on the generations. King Shui felt amused whenever he thought about this issue. If it were in the past life, countless people would be envious of his life. Tai Ching Immortal Palace was extremely magnificent. It was King Shui's first time seeing such a big sect. Previously, King Shui had seen many big sects, but they were still different from the Tai Ching Immortal Palace. It occupied more than half a mountain range. It was the Tai Ching Mountain Range, and the Tai Ching Immortal Palace occupied more than half of it. The enormous mountains had their summits flattened out. Some only had a small part of it flattened, some had a large portion of it flattened. Mountains were generally in a conical shape. The bottom would be wider and the top would be narrower. If a smaller part of the summit was flattened, it would be taller, but there would be less land available for construction. If a bigger part of the summit was flattened, there would be more land for construction and activities. The higher up the mountain, the higher the status of the person who stays there, young Master Tai said casually. Then, he led King Shui flying towards the highest mountains. It was one of the highest mountains in that place, and it was the house of young Master Tai. Although it was very high above the ground, the floor space was wide. There were several hundreds of houses. Besides, there were gardens, river streams, bamboo forests, and so on. After entering the compound, many women were seen. To King Shui's surprise, these women were all young Master Tai's wives. All of them were beauties and there were several tens of them at once. There were some kids who were young in general, about five to six years old. There were also ones who were two to four years old. The eldest looked like eight to nine years old. These women were obviously stunned after seeing King Shui. After all, it was the first time young Master Tai brought someone to his house. Furthermore, it was a young and unfamiliar guy. This is my brother King Shui. They are all my women and these are my kids. Young Master Tai introduced. King Shui's women did not stay together. Plus, King Shui did not have so many women. They were several times less than his. King Shui greeted these women with a smile. He took out some beauty pellets to hand them as gifts. Women liked this the most. King Shui had many beauty pellets and he could not finish them all by himself anyway. These women were indeed happy. They greeted King Shui before leaving shortly after. However, one did not leave. This woman looked mature and decent. A little boy stood beside her, around eight to nine years old. He had a slim and lean body. He looked beautiful and had a fit body. This woman was quite the beauty. King Shui knew she was young Master Tai's legal wife without even thinking. At that moment, she made a pot of tea and served it to King Shui and young Master Tai. Don't be formal in your own house. Sister-in-law, let us help ourselves. King Shui took over the teapot in her hands. Since he became young Master Tai's friend, he had to treat people around young Master Tai better. Treating them well showed that King Shui respected him and looked highly upon him. This is your own house. No worries. Yijin, come and meet uncle, the woman smiled and said. She did not argue with King Shui and let him take the teapot. The teenage boy looked at King Shui curiously. Are you very great? Why do you ask so? 
King Shui asked in response. A person who can make my father bring him home cannot be an ordinary person. Do you have some special abilities? The teenage boy asked again. Yijin, don't be rude. The woman said softly at that time. She was very gentle even when she scolded her child. Chapter 2211. Got a godson, Tai Yijin. Yijin, don't be rude. The woman said softly at that time. She was very gentle even when she scolded her child. King Shui smiled and said it was all right. Then, he looked at Tai Dashao. You seem like a good father. Tai Dashao showed an awkward smile and replied, It's his mother that is good. King Shui recalled that he had collected some growth pills, aptitude pills, and potential pills. He took out some and handed him over to the young man, saying, This is my gift to you. Tai Yijin looked at King Shui. Then, he looked at Tai Dashao and his mother. Tai Dashao smiled, Quick! Say thanks to your uncle. He is the strongest alchemist your father has ever seen. Thank you, uncle. Tai Yijin said happily. Do you want to become a strong warrior? King Shui looked at the young man and asked. I want to. Very much. Tai Yijin said with a straight face. King Shui remembered the orphaned siblings as he saw this young man. They came and joined the king clan and now, they had become very strong as well. They treated King Shui like their own father. However, they had yet to figure out their own origin. You have a great aptitude. The Taiching Immortal Palace would not be short of ways to break through. The only thing that worries me is your foundation. Let me teach you some fist techniques. Every morning, you will spend two hours for training. Can you do that? King Shui asked. Yes. Tai Yijin was determined. King Shui then taught him the Tai Chi fist and the Yu Emperor fist. He did not forget about Tai Dashao and the woman. Sister-in-law, you shall know by now. This is a great thing. But it requires a solid understanding of it. You can teach this to anyone. In fact, there are some people who already knew about this technique, but there aren't many of them. However, there would probably be a lot of them in the future, King Shui said with a smile. Thank you. I got it, the woman said and nodded. Younger brother, I guess I'll only be at my current level for my entire life. I won't become a strong warrior. However, I do have a request. Can you promise me one thing? Tai Dashao thought and said in a serious tone. King Shui was surprised by Tai Dashao's straightforwardness, but he quickly nodded. Say it. I'll promise you if I can. King Shui remembered the Star God pendant. As long as it was not something too difficult, he would agree. I want you to take Janair as your godson. Tai Dashao sounded solemn. King Shui was perplexed. Even the woman was taken aback. The woman stared at King Shui intensely at this moment. She knew her man very well. Though he was foppish, he was very rational. Although his strength was just moderate, he had some perspectives. It seemed like this man was extraordinary, given that her husband held him in such high regard. You trust me that much? King Shui asked. Ha ha, I may have no other abilities, but my eyes are fine, Tai Dashao smirked. You won't have any regrets. Surely not, Tai Dashao replied in all seriousness. All right, I promise. I have more than five godchildren and a few students. It's true that people trust me. They will meet each other when they grow up later. King Shui smiled and said. Tai Dashao smiled. He said, it seems like there are many others who have eyes as bright as mine. Janair, meet your godfather. Next time you see him, treat him the same way you treat me. Tai Dashao turned around and said to Tai Yijin. Tai Yijin lived in a big clan and was experienced. At that time, he bowed to King Shui earnestly. After the kowtow session, 
King Shui carried him up. Janair, from now onwards, you are my godson. I don't care how you act in your clan, but I wish you will remember something in the future. Have a kind heart and don't do any unethical things that cross the line. I will, Tai Yijin said solemnly. His young face looked tensed up. King Shui patted his head. Don't be so tense. The rules are quite loose. This is for you. Take it as your welcome gift. However, remember not to rely on it, and only use it if you're in grave danger. The gift was the sacred jade divine stone ring. Previously, King Shui got a large piece of it. Now, King Shui made some rings from the stone and now, Tai Yijin owned one. King Shui also told him how to use it and advised him not to be dependent on it too much. Tai Yijin was very bright. He got used to the way of using it soon. Again, he told King Shui seriously, I won't rely on it. Tai Dashao appeared hopeful and full of aspirations. This item was very rare. Even the Taiching Immortal Palace did not have such a good item. Nevertheless, he said nothing despite his interest in the item. It was the most pleasant thing that his son could obtain one since Tai Yijin would rule the Taiching Immortal Palace in the future. If there were no accidents, he would become the head of the Tai clan. You don't have strength so take one to protect yourself. I don't have many. I can't give you any more than this. King Shui cordially said and gave one to Tai Dashao. Tai Dashao did not accept. It is too precious and you've said it yourself. You don't have many. You have already given one to Janair. I'm not taking this. Plus, since my strength is weak, nobody would bother to touch me. Stop the nonsense and take it when I give it to you. Remember to take every advantage possible. Otherwise, you won't get it next time. King Shui stuffed it into his hand. Tai Dashao looked at King Shui gratefully. I have nothing for you in return. I guess you won't even want the ones that I have. The pendant that you gave me last time is now with Bei Wang Fan. It is comparable to this ring. Now, you can be assured, King Shui said. Don't say that just to comfort me, Tai Dashao retorted. Fine, then I'm comforting you no more. Give it back to me. I'm not giving you any more. King Shui held out his hand and said. Forget it. It is already in my hands. If I return it to you, you will be upset. I'll keep it. Tai Dashao was delighted after getting it. King Shui gave some training items to Tai Yijin, including a pair of clothes and weapons for forging, and some books on the nine animals mimicry technique. King Shui told him to choose the one that he liked the most and try his best in a week's time. Then, Tai Dashao dragged King Shui to meet the rest of his family. Tai Dashao was the only son in his generation. However, there were many daughters, somewhere around a hundred or less of them. That was after many of them had died. In his father's generation, there were about thirty members. Besides, they were all strong warriors. Around thirty of them had managed to survive until now. In his grandfather's generation, there were more than ten members. On top of that, there were three more generations. Yet, only about ten members were still among the living. These members were the actual pillars of the Taiching Immortal Palace. Usually, they did not take part in the social affairs unless there was an unresolved issue in the Taiching Immortal Palace. Tai Dasha led King Shui to meet his father, a cultured and middle-aged man. He was very mature-looking. He somehow seemed to be younger than Tai Dasha. This situation was not a big deal. It was very normal in the main continents. Nice to meet you, uncle. As a junior, King Shui greeted him. Don't be too formal. Treat this place like your own house. It is Dashao's fortune to have a friend like you. The man was very hospitable as he gestured King Shui to have a seat. After a while, 
A beautiful lady entered the room. It was Tai Dashiro's mother. They greeted each other again. As for King Shui, Tai Dashiro's father seemed to know about him. The Taiching Immortal Palace should have known what kind of person Tai Dasha was in touch with. It is the fortune of both parties to be friends. There isn't anyone who is more advantageous. Otherwise, the friendship won't last long. King Shui smiled as he replied. You're right, but it is hard to make friends these days. It is a luxury to have one true friend in one's entire life. In fact, many people don't even have a true friend in their whole lives. When you are at your peak, you might have a bunch of friends. Once you fail, it is considered fortunate if they don't strike you while you're down, the man said emotionally. Chapter 2212, Nalan King, Tribulation Evasion Pill Done. You're right, but it is hard to make friends these days. It is a luxury to have one true friend in one's entire life. In fact, many people don't even have a true friend in their whole lives. When you are at your peak, you might have a bunch of friends. Once you fail, it would be considered as lucky if they don't strike you while you're down, the man said emotionally. After listening to the man, King Shui smiled and said, This is how the world works. It is profit-driven. Actually, everyone should have this realization. You can make yourself do it, but you can't make others do the same thing. Sometimes, if you do things right, other things might happen without an extra effort. That is true. You can't make others do it. You may force them using brute force, but it is not their own will. You may force them while you have the ability now but you will lose the advantage once you lose the ability. Besides, they might retaliate for what they had been forced to do. Thus, a man has to be kind, the man said happily. They spent some time chatting casually. This man's strength was not bad, but King Shui reckoned he would win easily if they were to have a fight. When it was about time, King Shui left the place. Tai Dashao accompanied King Shui out of the Taiching Immortal Palace and asked, Do you still want to visit Nalan King? King Shui was actually reluctant to go since he had obtained the recipe. However, he did not leave anything behind when he left previously. He was supposed to give something in return for the recipe. Thus, he said after a brief thought, Yeah, I still have to give some deposit after getting her recipe. They arrived at the fragrance shack again. It was as quiet as before. When they pushed the door open, the woman was seen staring blankly in the garden again. She quickly noticed someone was there. She turned around and looked at King Shui and Tai Dashao. She asked, Is there anything? She sounded as cold as before. Fortunately, King Shui was used to it now so he did not feel a thing. Tai Dashao seemed to have taken himself as a total guest, remaining quiet and watching King Shui and Nalan King with a smile. Apparently, he enjoyed watching both of them talk. I'm about to leave. I'm here to check you out before I do. King Shui sounded calm as he spoke. This statement did not only shock the woman but also Tai Dashao. It was unexpected that someone dared to talk to Widow King like that. Tai Dashao was ready to say some things, but Nalan King spoke before he did. Him. Safe journey then, Nalan King answered gently. No one had ever spoken to her this way before. Plus, he was so natural, without the slightest hesitation or motive. Many men had looked at her with different eyes. They appeared to be alert on the surface or looked at her skeptically. After all, she was known to be a disaster. Meanwhile, they judged her behind her back. King Shui took out some plum blossom wine, precious dew wine, tiger bone liquor, and envy air hong. Despite the small amount of wine, he knew the woman would not want any more of them. Take these as a deposit for the recipe you gave me. In the future, 
I will continue to supply if you want to drink more. King Shui placed an interspatial silk sachet in front of her. In the sachet, he had stored some wine before. There was not much, but it made a good amount in total. Nalan King accepted it and said, Thanks. Tai Dashao stayed perplexed and wondered if he was still asleep. He felt everything was a little strange and surreal. In the end, King Shui took some of the fragrance wine made by Nalan King and left. Tai Dashao then sent King Shui off from the Taiching Immortal Palace. When he returned to the Imperial Cuisine Hall, several days had passed. Bei Wang Fan saw King Shui and asked, You went to the Taiching Domain. It's not good for a woman to be too smart. Be a little clueless next time. Even if you know, you have to ask and make men feel like they know better than you. King Shui nodded and said. Why? When a woman is too smart, the man will feel pressured. Then, he will leak. Early, King Shui locked onto Bei Wang Fan's neck and said. Go to hell and leak until you die, Bei Wang Fan said angrily. King Shui was happy to see this woman getting more and more attractive. Bei Wang Fan blushed. This bastard could simply say anything. Since the massage previously, she felt a lot closer to him. It was a feeling. This man had taken so much advantage of her. But she had her plans. Otherwise, she would never allow this man to behave this way. That would be a lot of fun. While smiling, King Shui pulled her hand and walked away. What do you want to do? Let me go. Bei Wang Fan trembled. Could it be that this bastard wanted to force her to do something? Let's have a walk. Look, the sunset is wonderful. What do you want to do? Do you want me to leak until I die? King Shui looked at Bei Wang Fan with a cheeky smile. Bei Wang Fan stopped talking instantly. This guy would not stop until he embarrassed her. She could not do anything to him in return either. Bei Wang Fan did not talk so King Shui continued, I know you feel shy. I understand it. Understand my ass. Are you done yet? Bei Wang Fan could not keep quiet in the end. Looking at the pleased and embarrassed beauty, King Shui felt a sense of accomplishment. He carried her at once. Don't think too much. I'm only hugging you. Poor you. Never having been hugged by a man at this age. King Shui's words made Bei Wang Fan want to give him a big slap. I feel very weird now as well. I never expected to be able to interact with you, the great beauty, like this. Are you going to marry me or not? Give it a say. I'm a little confused now. King Shui lowered his head and looked at Bei Wang Fan. Would I allow you to be so frivolous if I'm not marrying you? I would have killed you the first time, Bei Wang Fan said softly. Let's consummate our marriage then. King Shui smiled and said. No, can you not always think of those things? Bei Wang Fan lowered her head. What kind of things did I think of? King Shui asked in surprise. Consummation. Bei Wang Fan got mad. Okay, if you said to consummate, let's consummate. King Shui smiled at her. If you dare to bully me, I am not marrying you. Bei Wang Fan was starting to be at her wit's end. King Shui hugged Bei Wang Fan while taking a walk in the backyard. The sunset glow was very beautiful. It was a common saying that a beauty under the moonlight was bright, pure, and flawless. The sunset glow painted a tinge of pink shade on everything. It was so spectacular that it was beyond description. Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. King Shui looked at the ripened lightning fruit and plucked it right away. Then, he placed it in the treasure basin to upgrade. At the same time, he placed other things into the treasure basin. They were some items used to refine the tribulation evasion pill. However, it was a bit troublesome to use the hundred treasure chest. He had to place the items one after another. Otherwise, they would eat up and merge with each other. 
It took some time to do all of that. Fortunately, the process did not take too long and the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal could afford it. Plus, most of the items were refined beforehand in the treasure basin and the hundred treasure chest except for the lightning fruit. When everything was ready, King Shui began the refinement. He was a little bit excited as he finally found all the ingredients of the tribulation evasion pill. He could almost ensure his success by adding in the golden snake grass. He had collected plenty of golden snake grass by now. After all, there were only rare occasions that required King Shui to add the golden snake grass. Seven days later, a loud cracking sound was heard. Success! It took seven days which was considered to be all right. It was definitely the most precious and valuable medicine. After taking a short break, King Shui opened the furnace and saw two light green-colored pills. They were thumb-sized with a circular lightning-like halo on top. They looked extremely great. Chapter 2213 By Yang Clan's Inheritance, Demon Hound Disease The Tribulation Evasion Pill was done. Although there were only two of them, one would be sufficient if the effects were strong. Feeling mostly curious, King Shui examined the Tribulation Evasion Pill. Tribulation Evasion Pill, used in False God Tribulation and Divine Tribulation. Able to lower the lightning in the air by 80%, while increasing the success rate of overcoming the tribulation by 80%. Eighth grade. King Shui got a little excited as he saw that. Initially, he thought it was to evade a tribulation, such as being able to skip the tribulation this time. In actuality, it was used to evade the power of lightning by 80%. With that, it could lessen the power of tribulation a lot. At once, King Shui thought of the treasure basin and hundred treasure chest as the eighth grade crossed his mind. He wondered if he could upgrade them. For example, upgrading to the ninth, or even tenth grade. Would that further lessen the power of tribulation? King Shui acted instantly. Unfortunately, he soon found out that it was not possible. Previously, the items were already improved, so he could not do it now. King Shui did not give up and refined another batch at once. This time, he did not upgrade them in the treasure basin and the hundred treasure chest before refinement. However, the two tribulation evasion pills produced were only at the sixth grade which meant they could only lessen the power of tribulation lightning in the air by 60%. Then, King Shui put them in the treasure basin and upgraded him to the 7th grade. Next, he put them in the 100 treasure chest and upgraded him again to the 8th grade. Feeling satisfied, King Shui kept the tribulation evasion pill. Though it was not 100%, if he was still unable to go through the tribulation after being reduced by 80%, it was a waste to use the tribulation evasion pill. All those red cloud fruits and tilted moon branch collected in the realm of violet jade immortal were turned into tribulation evasion pills. Besides, there were ninth grade tribulation evasion pills. For each refinement, King Shui added the water imbued with the great sacred Buddha stone, spring of life, and the extremely precious items. The cost of making the tribulation evasion pill was so great, it was intimidating. After all, the spring of life was too valuable and each refinement required one drop of it. There was still a little bit of time so King Shui prepared the ingredients of the fragrance wine. He had to make it only when he entered the realm of Violet Jade Immortal next time. King Shui roughly modified the recipe of fragrance wine based on its foundation. Essentially, he added some other items like spices. For example, the spring of life and some precious herbs which were aged more than 10,000 years. About noon, many people suddenly appeared in the Imperial Cuisine Hall. They carried a dead man and made a tearful scene. 
claiming that he had died after being treated by the imperial cuisine hall. These people were in a large group and almost surrounded the entire imperial cuisine hall. Quack! Come out! I want you to pay for my dad's death. Isn't the physician here very good and skilled? How would he cause someone's death? Someone said, even the miraculous physician would mistreat and kill someone. This isn't a big deal. Any clinic would lose several lives. Somebody continued. King Shui was in the backyard initially. Zhang Yu walked in with a hurried look. Master, I have mistreated and killed someone. King Shui surprised by Zhang Yu's words. Judging from Zhang Yu's art of healing, this should not have happened. He replied calmly, Tell me, what happened? Bai Yang clan's elder had caught the demon hand disease. I only made an examination and he passed away. Zhang Yu sounded upset. This is not your fault. They are purposely making trouble here. Let's check it out. King Shui led the way out as soon as he finished speaking. The Bai Yang clan. King Shui had heard about it. It was one of the several top clans in the Northern Emperor domain. However, it had not approached the Divine Palace nor the Taiyi Immortal Palace in all this while. It was a rather mysterious force. He wondered what tricks they were up to all of a sudden. It was already very crowded as King Shui came out. Many people were waiting to see how the Imperial Cuisine Hall would deal with it. The current Imperial Cuisine Hall was very popular. Extremely famous, one might say. Yet, someone had died here and the others could not make any comments even if they wanted to. In fact, many people wanted to speak out for the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Ask the person in charge of the Imperial Cuisine Hall to come out. If he doesn't, I will ruin this place. King Shui did not speak. When he came out, the place became much quieter. However, not long after that, someone said, the miraculous physician king from the Imperial Cuisine Hall came out. Quiet down. Let's see what the miraculous physician king has to say. King Shui had a look at the dead old man. It was indeed the demon hound disease. This kind of illness had a rapid course and would be deadly in a split second. This dead man had the inherited demon hound disease. Once activated, it was extremely agonizing as if the person were on fire. The blood would be boiled up and a virulent toxin would be produced instantly. There was a high fatality rate. This illness was inherited, but it was not an absolute trait. Yet, anyone from this bloodline would be infected by it. It could be passed down to the next generation or more up to several tens of future generations. The risk of activation was low, not even 1%. The dead old man was Bai Yang Tong who was a rather significant man in the Bai Yang clan. King Shui felt troubled to meet an incident like this. For the moment, it did not seem like a deliberate scenario. Yet, it was very hard to defend himself now. King Shui analyzed Bai Yang Tong for a while and looked at the infuriated man standing beside the old man. He said, there is an inheritance of the demon hound disease in your clan. You should have known the situation at that time. He died before Zhang Yu finished examining him. I can confidently say this. Due to the time constraint, the old man could never escape this disaster. You're still trying to make excuses after killing your patient. What kind of miraculous physician are you? How are you considered kind-hearted? The man said in rage. Correct. Everyone, look at him. This is his real face. Yay. Everybody, look at this big liar. But, we weren't cheated. Instead, we received something that we can't even pay back if we spend our entire fortune. Indeed, it could be different from what we see. Some people spoke out for King Shui's injustice. I knew it. He treated you guys like this for the sake of today's incident. Did you guys see that? The man made many people go silent. 
It could be true. After all, nobody could be sure of an individual's vicious mind. There were too many hypocrites. King Shui shook his head helplessly while looking at the surroundings. He flicked his finger and a stream of origin qi tapped on an acupoint of the Baiyang Tong's child. Then, the opponent spat out foam at once as if he was having an epileptic attack and tore his own clothing. King Shui noticed the dormant illness in this man and knew for sure that he could activate that. Thus, the man ended up this way in split seconds. Ah, the Baiyang elder was exactly like this just now. It really was the demon hound disease that was inherited in the family. This disease doesn't have a high risk of attack. So how come two cases happened today? Plus, they are father and son. Indeed, it is so confusing. It is really unfortunate when things go the wrong way. King Shui stepped forward and took out the gold needles. He spent a tremendous effort to cure the man. Of course, he made an effort to show the whole process to the others. The man was muddle-headed as he woke up. He looked at King Shui and the elder. Immediately, he felt lost, not knowing what to do. This miraculous physician had saved his life just now. If he kept clinging on to this issue, he would be regarded as unappreciative. Furthermore, if he suffered an attack like that next time, he would probably die. However, if he didn't pressure the Imperial Cuisine Hall, his entire clan would be doomed. He wondered what he should do. The man was perplexed and looked stagnant. Chapter 2214. Nine Continents Names, Nine Continents Food Residence. King Shui was not an ignorant child. He had some experience. He definitely noticed the different expressions of this guy. Yet, King Shui did not force him, but waited to see if the guy deserved his help. King Shui did not mind to be doubted. It was not his first time being in this situation. A wise man is aware that he knows nothing. So King Shui watched the man and waited for his next move. Look, guys. The miraculous physician King cured him. If Bai Yang came earlier, he might have been fine. This was fated. Indeed, miraculous physician King has saved so many people. If he cared about money, why would he insist on treating the poor and even suffer a loss from the medical fees? Ya yeah, ya, yeah, it is not hard for a person to do something good, but it is hard to be persistent. Miraculous Physician King helped so many people after all these days. If he really did it in order to gain fame, he would not need to help so many people. To gain popularity, why would Miraculous Physician King do that? Does he still need to gain popularity with his strength and the dishes of the Imperial Cuisine Hall? Miraculous Physician King, I'm sorry, and thank you for saving me. My father came here, but failed to hold on till you came, the man said in a depressed tone. I hope you're consoled. After all, your father died after the pulse taking here. Regardless, the Imperial Cuisine Hall is responsible. How about this? In the future, I can see 10 patients from your Baiyang clan at any time and make them healthy, King Shui proposed. Perhaps, there is no chance anymore. I have a guilty conscience, Mr. King. You have to be careful. Someone is targeting you. My Baiyang clan is only a little pawn at the front line. If the pawn can't advance, it will be sacrificed next. The man said bitterly. King Shui was not surprised as he knew this situation would appear. If the man from the Baiyang clan still wanted to go against the Imperial Cuisine Hall, King Shui would not bother. For sure, King Shui would not get blackmailed either. For instance, he could activate the demonic dog disease in his body and refuse to treat him. However, this man was very kind and did not persist. He even told King Shui that somebody was going against the Imperial Cuisine Hall. So King Shui decided to help him. If you trust me, I can help you. I will deal with those people. 
I can definitely keep your Baiyang clan safe. King Shui smiled and said. The man hesitated. Now that it has been done, what are you hesitating for? Just settle today's issue like this. You've just said that your Baiyang clan is going to be finished. In that case, what is there to be undecided? Perhaps, I can help you. Is there anything worse than seeing your clan crumbling? King Shui continued. At once, the man exhaled a long breath. He nodded and said, let's talk somewhere else. King Shui led the man back to the imperial cuisine hall. The crowd dispersed since there was nothing to watch anymore. In the backyard, King Shui and Bai Yang Dian sat by the stone desk. King Shui poured a cup of tea, but Bai Yang Dian had no interest in drinking it. Slowly, he spilled the beans. Mr. King, have you heard of the Nine Continents Food Residence? Bai Yang Dian said, Nine Continents Food Residence? No. King Shui had never heard of it. Neither did I initially, but now I know that besides the Nine Continents Food Residence, there are also the Nine Continents Restaurant, Nine Continents Bank, Nine Continents Clinic. King Shui did nothing but listened quietly. This is a force which has achieved the top in a certain field, such as the Nine Continents Food Residence. They own strong warriors and these warriors are protecting the food residence. Their food residence is the Nine Continents Food Residence. That is the name of their headquarters. Yet, I don't know what the names of the food residences under them are. The Nine Continents Food Residence liked the dishes of the Imperial Cuisine Hall, leading to an event like this. King Shui recalled that there was a very huge food residence in the Northern Emperor Domain, it was called Northern Emperor Food Residence. They sent someone here before and they seemed to have offered a price to buy the recipes. Naturally, King Shui did not sell it to them. Then, the issue was settled. King Shui couldn't help but ask, does the Northern Emperor food residence belong to the Nine Continents food residence? Bai Yang Dian nodded, yes. In fact, I only approached the Northern Emperor food residence. As for the Nine Continents food residence, I can never reach them. King Shui only discovered such a big network in the Nine Continents now. That was the core of the Nine Continents world. As for now, he felt it was an entry point today. Perhaps, he was really going to enter the main core of this world. How is the strength of the Northern Emperor food residence? How well do you know about it? King Shui thought and asked. The Northern Emperor food residence is not any weaker than the Divine Palace. Yet, I heard there are a few strong warriors here now. They came for the Imperial Cuisine Hall's matter. Mr. King, they are really very powerful. You have to think properly. These people are all the best. They have huge family backgrounds and forces that you can't imagine. Bai Yang Dian sighed. No worries. I said I won't allow anything to happen to the Bai Yang clan and I will surely do it. I will check out the Northern Emperor food residence and solve this issue. I will try my best not to involve too many people. King Shui stood up. If he decided to do it, he would do it as fast as possible. He reckoned the opponent was watching his actions carefully. If he was not mistaken, the opponent should have known that King Shui was aware of their existence. Bai Yang Dian did not know how to convince King Shui. He heaved a sigh and left the Imperial Cuisine Hall. His heart was struggling. He was a kind man. He wished that the Bai Yang clan would be safe and he also wished that the Imperial Cuisine Hall would be safe. If any accidents were to happen to the Imperial Cuisine Hall because of his clan, he would be very upset. Previously, he was forced. All they wanted were just some recipes. Thus, he could only do so out of desperation. King Shui saw Bei Wang Fan as he went outside. She seemed to be waiting for him. What are you going to do? Bei Wang Fan asked. 
You are already trying to control your husband even before marriage. King Shui looked at Bei Wang Fan. Be serious. Bei Wang Fan did not smile. I'm going to the Northern Emperor food residence, King Shui replied. I'm going with you. What are you going for? King Shui asked. I could ask you the same thing. Bei Wang Fan looked at King Shui. Even though she did not know why, she knew there must be something on his mind. She knew that the Northern Emperor food residence was very strong. Apparently, they were stronger than the Divine Palace and the Taiyi Immortal Palace. Because of that reason, Bei Wang Fan wanted to go together with King Shui. All right, let's go then. King Shui led the way out. King Shui knew where the Northern Emperor food residence was. The Northern Emperor food residence was popular in the Northern Emperor domain. There was only one Northern Emperor food residence in the Northern Emperor city. It was similar to the chain stores in his past life, but there was usually only one in each city here. Yet, there was also an exception. There was only one Northern Emperor food residence in the Northern Emperor city, so there would be no mistake. Using the nine continent steps, they arrived at a place near the Northern Emperor food residence. Soon, they saw the Northern Emperor food residence. It was a huge compound of pavilions. This was a vast land with many buildings and courtyards. Many people went in and out of this place. Above the main entrance, four big words were stamped in gold. Northern Emperor Food Residence. Many luxurious beast vehicles were at the entrance. People came in and out continuously. There was a rich aroma of dishes wafting about. From the entrance, there was a wide and straight path which was very, very long. Many beast vehicles entered using this access point. Those who made the entrance should have some sort of status. This was the most high-class food residence and restaurant in the Northern Emperor City. Chapter 2215, Northern Emperor Food Residence, Bei Tengyun. There were guards at the entrance, totaling ten of them, five on each side. This was just a formality. If something happened, these few people would not be able to handle it. They could only deliver a message, or simply act as sentries. It had been a while since King Shui and Bei Wang Fan stood at the entrance. King Shui knew the Northern Emperor food residence, but it was his first time here. He did not expect a food residence to be so huge. Many of his perceptions came from the past life, so he was shocked to see the scale here. He operated the Imperial Cuisine Hall and felt that it was successful. Moreover, he had opened many branches. However, he never thought that a food residence could be operated in this way. Bei Wang Fan stood beside King Shui without a word. King Shui came back to reality and said with a smile, Come, let's go and try the dishes here. Bei Wang Fan nodded. Then, both of them walked in. Bei Wang Fan was no ordinary person. Many people knew her. Even for those who did not, they would be stunned by her beauty. After all, those who came here had status. Thus, they were all arrogant. They had the guts to leer at beautiful women, since it was not illegal to do so. Northern Emperor Residence Park Northern Emperor Residence Park was the most classy part of the Northern Emperor Food Residence. The dishes here were the most delicious and expensive. It was a symbol of status to be there. The chefs working there were the best of the best. The chefs who made the dishes here were very famous. In this world, there were more female chefs than male chefs. Unlike the past life, the women could not even move a cooking pot. It was different here. The women had more strengths than most men in the past life. This was the genuine difference in body constitutions. The women who had a little cultivation here were far ahead compared to the martial art practitioners in the past life. Along the journey, they gained a lot of attention because Bei Wang Fan's beauty was attracting everyone. King Shui expected it. 
Besides, King Shui knew that the person in charge of the Northern Emperor food residence was aware of their presence. That was King Shui's intention, to let them search for him. They would probably do so as everybody acknowledged everything now anyway. From the moment King Shui stepped into this place, it was obvious that both sides had already known about the situation well. Sir, please show us your VIP card. They were blocked as they were entering the main hall at Northern Emperor Residence Park. King Shui did not expect that he would need a VIP card. King Shui was just about to ask this guy to call upon the manager of Northern Emperor Food Residence, before Bei Wang Fan took out a card and waved. Then, they made their way in. King Shui was surprised to see that Bei Wang Fan had a VIP card. That was great, as they saved themselves some trouble. Otherwise, if King Shui had beaten up the guards, the rest would come out afterward. Thankfully, it had yet to reach that stage and he did not want things to escalate to that level now. Once he initiated the fight, he would lose some reputation. There was a main hall and reserved rooms here. The biggest specialty was the huge space. It appeared very pleasing to the eyes. Many people were eating. The dishes on the tables gave out an enticing fragrance. Besides being aromatic, they looked very appetizing as well. The dishes were extremely delicate, equally good in color, aroma, and taste. King Shui and Bei Wang Fan found a rather quiet place and sat down. As soon as they were seated, the staff approached them instantly. What would you like to order? She handed over a menu to King Shui and Bei Wang Fan. King Shui was not here to eat, so he ordered some signature dishes right away. Please wait for a moment, the beautiful waitress said while bending over. Then, she left. It was the main hall, but it was neither the cheapest spot in the main hall, nor the more classy places like the reserved rooms. There was some distance between each table. Martial arts were highly regarded in this world. People were more bold and frank. Thus, many people were used to sitting in the main hall. They could probably make some friends here. From time to time, somebody would look at King Shui. Those who knew him would look at him. Those who did not know him would do the same. After a while, a man walked over. Hi. Miraculous Physician King, I'm here to thank you. You cured my son's white smoke disease. King Shui smiled. You're welcome. Unfortunately, there were too many patients so I really can't remember your son specifically. The man thanked him again and called upon the waitress on his way back. He said something to the waitress. Soon, the dishes were served on King Shui's table. King Shui and Bei Wang Fan dug in. The dishes were really not bad. Though it was not comparable to King Shui's dishes, they were very good. Bei Wang Fan took one bite and said, It is so much different from those you make. If you want to catch a woman's heart, you have to catch her stomach. Our forefathers didn't lie. King Shui smiled and said. At that exact moment, the waitress came and served the most pricey dish available. It was a treat from that previous man, she said. As King Shui turned to look back at where the man was, he had already left. Miss Bei Wang, long time no see. A voice was heard at that time. King Shui was a bit pissed off after hearing that voice. It was rather frivolous. King Shui raised his head to look at the person who spoke. This was a young man wearing a white robe and holding a folded fan. He was handsome. His eyes were as bright as stars. His face was as clear as jade. He was indeed a pretty boy, much better looking than the pretty boys in the past life. Judging from his tone, this man knew Bei Wang Fan. Bei Wang Fan showed no response upon seeing this man. She raised her head and took a glance at him and asked, Yes. This is. Are you not going to introduce him to me? The man was very good looking, but his attitude made people uneasy. 
that kind of superiority was slightly annoying. However, it depended on who he was dealing with. If it was someone who was greater, King Shui was willing to accept that. King Shui would not feel anything different regardless of the opponent's status. Hence, it was amusing to see this narcissistic and cocky man. At least, it was amusing in King Shui's view. No, Bei Wang Fan replied emotionlessly. The man seemed not surprised to hear that from Bei Wang Fan. He smiled and looked at King Shui. I'm Bei Tengyun. How do I address you, sir? Bei Tengyun, apparently this northern emperor food residence belongs to your family. King Shui looked at this man. He was quite certain. Plus, this man's surname was Bei. He should be one of the Bei clan. The northern emperor food residence was founded by the Bei clan. Indeed, Bei Tengyun replied in an authoritative tone. Then, you will know who I am when you call your dad here. King Shui replied with a smile. Bei Tengyun's expression changed after listening to King Shui. That was looking down on him. How dared he? Moreover, it was a young man. Not only that, this wasn't the first person to look down on him. The first one was Bei Wang Fan, but she was a woman. Plus, she was an extremely beautiful woman. Thus, he ignored it and did not feel much. Yet, this time, the person who looked down at him was a young man. Furthermore, he stood beside Bei Wang Fan. Bei Tengyun was hostile to King Shui initially. His hostility grew more now. His face uncontrollably turned ugly as he said, A young man shouldn't be too arrogant even if he is capable. You have to know that your abilities are insignificant to others. King Shui smiled, It seems like you know me. Bei Tengyun knew him for sure. He did not expect to touch on this issue himself now. If he admitted, he would appear to have been hypocritical previously. How are my dishes here? Do they suit your taste? Bei Tengyun said something irrelevant. Chapter 2216. A fierce fight. A dog should bite. How are my dishes here? Do they suit your taste? Bei Tengyun said something irrelevant. King Shui knew he was reluctant to elaborate on the previous matter. Yet, it showed that he knew about King Shui. If you can't make the decision, ask the one who can. How dare you mess with me? I'm already here and he is not coming out. Would he only come out after I take action? King Shui talked to Bei Tengyun. Bei Tengyun looked at King Shui in return. This was his first time meeting someone as arrogant as King Shui in the Northern Emperor food residence. Initially, he felt uneasy since King Shui was close to Bei Wang Fan. Now, he felt more uncomfortable in seeing King Shui. The Northern Emperor food residence needs to remind you who you're dealing with. Who do you think you are? Bei Tengyun squinted his eyes and stared at King Shui. All right, I'll wait a bit longer. If the person in charge doesn't come out, I'll start with you. You don't seem like a good man either way, King Shui answered indifferently. Bei Tengyun was infuriated. He had never been humiliated like this before. If it were not for the crowd here, Bei Tengyun would have acted earlier on. However, he could not get bullied without doing anything in response. At least for now, he reckoned he was being bullied. He stared at King Shui with sharp eyes. I put up with you again and again not because I'm afraid of you. King Shui smirked and said, I look down on you even more now. Do you know why? Just like a prostitute, it is fine since she is working hard for a living. I look down on the prostitute who expects a monument to her chastity. Bei Tengyun appeared to feel very awkward, but there were people around him. Thus, he had no choice but to be pretentious. He was aware that many people knew he was hypocritical. In fact, he was all right with it. There was no man who did not pretend. As long as he did not admit it, 
It was none of his business what others might think. I'll give you one more chance. Get out. We do not welcome you here, Bei Tengyun said with good tolerance. Pitiful. Really pitiful. Look at you. You are like a clown. You are making fun of yourself and still being loud. Little did you know that people's laughter is actually in disdain toward you, King Shui continued. Go to hell. At last, Bei Tengyun couldn't hold it in any more. His figure rushed towards King Shui abruptly. The folded fan in his hand aimed to tap on King Shui's head directly. If his attempt was successful, King Shui would have exploded. Roar! King Shui held out his hand and used the dragon capturing hands. Immediately, he choked the opponent from afar. His hand was like a metal plier, making Bei Tengyun's face flush red instantly. King Shui squeezed on his neck so tight that it was almost broken. It would only take the slightest effort to break his neck directly. At that time, Bei Tengyun could not do anything but twitch endlessly. Stop. At that moment, a stern voice was heard. King Shui saw a group of men approaching. The leading one was an elder with grizzled hair and a straight body. He had short hair which was standing like iron thorns. He walked over in a majestic gait. King Shui threw Bei Tengyun away immediately. Bei Tengyun, who nearly fainted, was extremely frightened now. At that moment, he was so close to death. Now, his mind was still blank and unclear of directions. Looks like someone finally came out. King Shui smirked. The people in the main hall were evacuated. The Bei clan had something to deal with so they were all exempted from their bills. Thus, all of them left. Some wanted to watch the scene, but they could only leave since the Bei clan forced him to. Say it. Why are you here? The elder asked right away. King Shui was not surprised by the elder's words. Looking at more than ten men besides the elder, they were all great warriors. King Shui smiled and replied, Why are they all cowards? You have to bear the consequences of what you did. Since everyone knows about it and there is no outsider, what are you pretending for? All right, straightforward. In that case, let's be frank. I tasted Mr. King's dishes. They were great. Thus, I would like to invite you, my friend, to my northern emperor food residence. What do you think? The elder said with a smile. Not interested, King Shui replied directly. You don't have to reject me so quickly. You can request for anything as a reward. The elder said confidently. We are all very understanding so you can skip that. Say it if there is anything you want. It is even more disgusting to beat around the bush. King Shui looked at the elder and smiled. I'm interested in your recipe. The elder said. You're interested in a lot of things in this world. Wouldn't you be getting all of them? King Shui was still very calm. I only fight for those I can get. If I can make some effort to get it, I will try to get it. As for those I can't see and can't reach, I won't dream of them. It is only adding to my troubles, the elder sounded open-minded. Just because of this, you forced the Baiyang clan to do that. King Shui said in an unfriendly tone. We just wanted to deal with it sooner. The elder was cool and calm. Is it very enjoyable to bully others? King Shui continued asking. It should be better than being bullied. The elder was humorous. I don't like to fight and I'm not interested in giving my recipe to you. As for you troubling the Baiyang clan, I can forget about it. I hope you simply stop bullying others. How does that sound to you? Why don't we stay in peace? King Shui could hardly believe the words he said himself. It's still the same statement. If you can agree to my terms, I can promise not to trouble the Baiyang clan. Shit. What do I have to do with the Baiyang clan? They fucked me up even for this time. Do you really think I'm related to the Baiyang clan? Fine. If that's the case, 
Let's settle this with another way. King Shui could not help but curse. Regardless of which way it is, I hope you get wiser and agree to our terms. We are the food residents under the nine continents food residents. You have to think properly. Don't do something that we can't even help you with. The elder squinted. It was about time as he lost patience to keep trash talking. Since the northern emperor food residence is just a dog, ask the owner to come out. If you want to get my recipe, don't be a coward. King Shui looked at the elder with a cynical smile. You are really asking for death. Our desire to get your recipe means we look highly upon you. You are insensible to good words. Get ready to be beaten then. The elder's face turned ugly. After all, it was very infuriating to be called a dog, although the northern emperor food residence was only a dog to the nine continents food residence. King Shui laughed even more happily. So this is your real face. A dog should bite and not just shake its tail. Let's see how much you guys want to take my recipe today. Beat him. Smash him till he breaks. Keep his last breath. The elder ordered his men. Three men came out behind him and dashed toward King Shui in three different directions. They were very fast. It was the food residents here, so they probably wanted to take him down quickly. Otherwise, the other food residences would be screwed. King Shui seemed to be deliberate. He made a stomp and dragged Bei Wang Fan along. In a flash, they appeared outside the main hall. Meanwhile, the previous place they were at collapsed entirely. Not only that, but King Shui also stomped abruptly in the surroundings. At once, the neat and clean buildings around the food residence became a heap of ruin. The elder looked extremely upset. His men fled one by one. Though they looked very shabby, many people outside could sense that something had happened. The Northern Emperor food residence was torn down. Chapter 2217 The Three People from the Nine Continents Food Residence Berserk Dragon Fist the three of them continued to charge out toward King Shui. With a single movement, the Windwisk Willow, stacked with the Nine Palace Steps, was activated. King Shui moved freely between the three of them, repeatedly unleashing Tai Chi fists and continuous combos. King Shui's attacking force had currently reached 6 billion Dao force, and with the additional damage dealt, it was considered to be quite decent. However, the three of them coordinated well and King Shui was contemplating if he should be harsh and take their lives. If he wanted, the battle would have been over a long time ago. After all, King Shui was still hesitant in opposing an existence like the Nine Continents food residence. Kill them. At this moment, Bei Wang Fan's voice rang out in King Shui's ears. King Shui increased his speed, unleashing a gouging strike onto the chest of one of them and then a drill fist onto the person's Shanjung acupoint. He then turned abruptly to attack another person, stomping on the chest of the first person in the process. Tiger tail whip kick. The person was injured to the brink of death. King Shui then turned to clash with another person. King Shui's current defense wasn't something they could break through. Therefore, he struck out a stellar transposition without any signs of dodging. A snow-white glow smashed out and the person disappeared completely. The last person remaining hesitated, unsure if he should charge forward again. At this time, King Shui flicked his hand and a willow dart shot right at that person's throat. King Shui's skill in utilizing hidden weapons was terrifying. It was already so in the past, and with the addition of the Lu clan's hidden weapons method, it evolved even further. At this moment, Bei Wang Fan stood next to King Shui. King Shui didn't ask why Bei Wang Fan wanted to kill the three of them. But since she had spoken, she should have her own reasons for doing so. Young man, I can only tell you that you're doomed. You aren't the only one that's doomed. 
Even the Divine Palace and the Taiyi Immortal Palace are doomed as well. The old man looked at King Shui and Bei Wang Fan and said, There's no need to scare me. If the Nine Continents food residence was so powerful, you wouldn't be snatching other people's recipes. You guys are probably just using the name of the Nine Continents food residence, am I right? King Shui smiled and looked at the old man. The old man appeared very calm. Since that is your guess, what do you think is the probability of that? Regardless, you can forget about leaving this place today. You won't be able to restrain me here. The Bei clan isn't an undefeatable legend in the Northern Emperor domain. Don't push it and end up losing the entire clan. Otherwise, how would you be able to face your ancestors? What arrogance. I'll test you out. If you were to defeat me, you won't have to fight anymore. But if you can't defeat me, you'll have to hand over the recipe. What do you think? An awe-inspiring middle-aged man walked out and said. The man appeared very valiant and had a strong build. He wore black robes that were made with very exquisite workmanship. It had a scent of an unknown plant, giving off a luxurious feeling to the black robes and making the man appear very dignified. The man had a pair of eagle eyes that gleamed and were sharp like blades. He stood a short distance away from the king clan and there were two other people with him when he appeared. They were dressed similarly and when the Bay clan saw these few people, they treated them with great respect. Therefore, King Shui guessed that they should be from the Nine Continents food residence. The reason King Shui believed that they came from the Nine Continents food residence was because of their strength. The man in the lead, especially, probably had a strength of over 120 billion Dao force. King Shui could only sense his strength faintly. This strength made King Shui a little nervous and he subtly used a few abilities on Bei Wang Fan and himself. Thankfully, Bei Wang Fan now also had a parry Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda. With that, her defense would already far surpass that of her own attacking abilities. King Shui silently took a step forward, shielding Bei Wang Fan behind him. King Shui's defense was still considered very terrifying and if both parties were to battle, King Shui could quickly decrease his opponent's strength by half. Even if they were to have unique abilities, King Shui would still be able to reduce their strength by one-third or more. Currently, with King Shui's defense in addition to the battle god Halo, the Emperor's Key, and the art of pursuing, he would be able to turn this expert before him into a good for nothing. This was possible in theory, but the other party should have his own unique abilities as well. Regardless, King Shui still had the confidence in bringing down the opponent. After all, he had the divine weapon flying sword and the stellar transposition. When his condition is at its peak, the stellar transposition could launch a terrifying attack. With the reinforcements from the battle god Halo, the Buddha Diamond Seal and the formation, King Shui's defense could double to reach around 160 billion Dao force. King Shui didn't back off after knowing that these people were from the Nine Continents food residence, because of his defense and his stellar transpositions attack. After being weakened by him, the opponent's strength of around 12 million Dao force would be halved. Even if he were to have some kind of unique abilities, King Shui's stellar transposition could cripple the opponent easily. Are you guys the ones who are interested in my recipe? Or is the Nine Continents food residence interested in my recipe? King Shui smiled and asked. My interest in your recipe means that the Nine Continents food residence is interested in your recipe, the man smiled and replied. May I know your standing in the Nine Continents food residence? King Shui asked curiously. My standing is very ordinary. The man replied casually. May I know if the Nine Continents food residence would be alarmed if the three of you were to die here? King Shui asked very seriously. 
The man was clearly stunned. You're saying that you'll be able to kill me? King Shui nodded. I should be able to, but I don't like trouble. So please do answer me truthfully. The man beamed. My standing in the Nine Continents food residence is really very ordinary. Even if I were to disappear, it wouldn't be a cause for alarm in the Nine Continents food residence. If you can really kill us, then you won't have to worry about the Nine Continents food residence. Someone will step forth to protect you, like the Nine Continents Divine Palace. Nine Continents Divine Palace. King Shui was surprised to think there was a Nine Continents Divine Palace. Then it would mean that there would also be a Nine Continents Demon Gate. King Shui wondered if the old golden battle god knew of the Nine Continents Divine Palace. He felt that he would need to find a chance to ask him. All right, since that's the case, let's start. King Shui nodded and struck a Buddha diamond seal onto himself. The man clenched both his fists and his body seemed to swell up, doubling in size and he suddenly seemed like a lump of steel. Area Dominance Emperor's Key King Shui rapidly struck out two abilities and by this time, the opponent's fist was already approaching. It was a very straightforward punch and its trajectory seemed very clumsy, similar to that of the hill-moving battle gods. However, his attack was on a higher level than the hill-moving battle god. This power was very strong. His speed wasn't very fast, but he was very agile, which allowed him to make up for his disadvantage. Boom! King Shui retreated explosively. But the solid feeling made King Shui feel as if the spot where he was struck in the chest was very painful, but there was no damage. He instantly recovered. King Shui felt confident, but the man had an amused expression. To think that this young man could take his berserk dragon fist. Chapter 2218, Life and Pride. That man was still very confident in his berserk dragon fist. His fist technique might not be fast, but its power was nothing to be taken lightly. Moreover, it came along with a heavy strike ability, with each fist having a crushing force and a powerful aura. However, he hadn't expected that this young man would be able to receive this. He had basically gone all out. He was a careful person and no matter what kind of opponent he encountered, he would display his full powers. Even if he could crush the opponent into smithereens with a single move, he wouldn't hold back. Otherwise, if his opponent were given a chance to turn the tables around, it'd be too late to regret. Buddha Wisdom Seal King Shui performed another ultimate Buddha technique. Although the Buddha Wisdom Seal couldn't reduce the opponent's attacking force, it would increase his own defense without the opponent noticing it. It would reduce the damage caused by the opponent by 20% as a result. In a sense, he could reduce the opponent's attacks by 20%, but the opponent wouldn't know about it. King Shui smiled and clenched both his fists as he charged out toward the man, using the Windwisk Willow. His movement was extremely elusive. This was what the opponent was the weakest in. The man was one who used force to push through everything. Boom! This man's fist technique was very skillful. Even with King Shui's great movement technique, he was still hit by the man's attack. However, King Shui moved together with the force, negating a large amount and then dodging the rest. He then once again landed a punch on this man. The man was unable to dodge King Shui's punch. However, his defense was comparable to his attacking abilities. That heavy strike had made even King Shui back off from the tremor. The man clearly didn't receive any damage at all. It's useless. Your attacks won't be able to break through my flesh, and it's also useless to hit me at my acupuncture points. When one reaches a certain level of cultivation, the defense at their acupuncture points would become stronger. Moreover, 
You won't even be able to reach my acupuncture points with your current power, the man said, as he realized that the spots that King Shui had struck were all on his acupuncture points. It really seems to be the case. King Shui then struck out with this dragon capturing hands, followed by a mountain push stance. Although the man was very careful, he was unable to dodge King Shui's attacks. Therefore, he guarded some of his crucial points and tried to dodge. However, he soon discovered that King Shui's attack could cause dizziness. The dizziness disappeared very quickly and then he felt a majestic power gushing toward him. What had astonished him was that he was able to fend it off and ended up retreating endlessly. This was an invisible force and it was only at this moment that King Shui charged over with his elusive movements. Then, he punched out with the impact from the mountain push stance. Inch explosive punch. The prowess of the explosive punch was the strongest amongst his fist techniques while the inch's gentle force could greatly increase his own explosive force to break through defenses and short distances. This punch fiercely struck against the man's chest, making a stifled sound. The man staggered but quickly recovered, appearing as if he wasn't affected at all. I told you that it's useless. Your attacking prowess is too weak. If your attacking force is the same as mine, that attack would have certainly taken my life. The man was also in admiration for this young man's battle techniques. If he had this young man's battle techniques and speed, then it would be unimaginable. His battle prowess could increase by many folds. I know. I'm just training my actual combat abilities and tempering some of my battle techniques. Since you wanted to know so much if I have the attacking prowess to inflict damage to you, I'll satisfy you. King Shui smiled and struck out a hand seal. Buddha Bright Seal. A dignified Buddha statue that seemed to have divine power appeared and the hand seal encompassed that man. At almost the same time, King Shui struck out with a snow-white light that was like blade shadows, and yet, also like a whip that lashed out. Pa! The Buddha bright seal rendered the man dizzy and under that state. Many of his body's functions plunged by a lot. King Shui's strike was lashed out with quite a powerful force and the man was sent flying back while spurting blood. This attack was too vicious and even though the man's body was extremely sturdy, King Shui's attack could overcome any defense. Moreover, the man was still in a dizzy state. King Shui felt a strong sense of achievement. One move was all he needed. This stellar transposition was too vicious. Under peak conditions, if King Shui was lucky, he could strike with an attacking force of 16 billion Dao force that could negate defense. As it could negate the opponent's defense, there wasn't a need to consider it, only his strength and vitality. If the other party's strength could reach 200 billion Dao force, then it would mean that his body would have the capability of this level. Even if King Shui's attack was at full power, it wouldn't be able to take his life. This man was quite strong and didn't die on the spot from King Shui's attack. However, he was pretty much on the verge of death. Even if he didn't die from this, he would end up not being able to recover to his prime condition unless he took at least 8 to 10 years. It might even be possible that he would never recover to that point. Bei Wang Fan was also shocked. When did this guy become so powerful? At this level, his strength had already surpassed that of the old golden battle god and her father. It seemed that the major players in the northern emperor domain would have to change. However, she was actually feeling very happy inside, knowing that he had become so strong. The people from the northern emperor food residence turned pale, not knowing what they had just witnessed. The two remaining men in black robes helped up the man who had gone into a deep coma from King Shui's bashing and rapidly fed him a medicinal pill. One of them then walked to King Shui, 
We admit our loss this time. State your condition and let us off. King Shui looked at him. I'm already certain that you guys are acting on your own. If the news of this were to spread out, what kind of punishment would you people receive? The man whom King Shui had beaten up earlier claimed that if King Shui were to kill them, there'd definitely be people stepping out to protect him, such as the Nine Continents Divine Palace. Things were definitely like what King Shui had said. This time around, the group had tasted King Shui's food and wanted to have the recipe to themselves. The Nine Continents food residents wouldn't allow for this to happen, and if they were to find out, the consequences would definitely be dire. When the man heard King Shui's words, he shuddered. This reaffirmed King Shui's theory even further. We admit our loss. Learn to show mercy. What would you do to let us off? In the end, you didn't suffer anything and one of us has been beaten up by you. We don't even know if he'll survive. The man frowned, as if a little enraged, displeased, and impatient at the same time as he said this. Pa! King Shui gave him a slap in the face. Rein in that filthy pride of yours, sacrificing people for your own goals. If I didn't defeat you people, wouldn't I be the one to be on the verge of death, forced to give up my recipe? King Shui looked coldly at the man who was speechless after being slapped in the face. The man hadn't been slapped like this before. He also had high status and hadn't been humiliated like this in the past, let alone by a young man like King Shui. Moreover, it was in the presence of so many insignificant characters who were obsequious toward him. Did you honestly believe that I wouldn't kill you? Bathump. The man dropped to his knees, please spare my life. Without me, it'll be over for my clan. The men would all be killed and the women would suffer even worse fates. I have sons and daughters to take care of. I know that you're a good person. Please give me a second chance. King Shui looked at the other man who now had his head lowered slightly. King Shui knew that he was having an intense struggle within himself having to choose between his pride or his life. Pa! Enough time had passed for him to use the stellar transposition once again and King Shui struck out again. Since you've chosen your pride, pay with your life. One must take responsibility for one's own mistakes. King Shui had just finished saying this when the man had completely disappeared from the lash. This person wasn't as strong as the man from earlier. At the very least, his vitality was weaker. Chapter 2219. Something has happened to King Xu. One of them ended up dead and another injured. King Shui had killed someone from the Nine Continents food residence. The man kneeling on the ground shivered, but King Shui didn't kill him. He didn't like to get rid of others to their roots, nor did he like to be too ruthless. It was like what he said earlier. They were given a choice between their lives or their pride. If they were to choose to hang on to their pride, they would lose their lives. If they were to choose their lives, they would be forfeiting their pride. If they were to forfeit their pride, it would also be the end for them. They would find it very hard to progress their cultivation any further, and thus there was no need for him to be too ruthless and wipe them out. It was at this moment that King Shui looked toward the Bei clan. The few people in charge were now ghastly pale. Even the person from the Nine Continents food residence had knelt down. Who else could they rely on? Even those from the Nine Continents food residence could only choose between keeping their lives or their pride. How could the two of them choose? Did they still have a right to choose? I said before that everyone has to be responsible for their own actions. Each of you shall break one of your arms. If you can't bear to do it, I can do it on your behalf. King Shui said outrightly. The faces of the people from the Bay clan turned pale, but they did as they were told. Some of them who couldn't bear to do it had others assist them. 
between their lives and an arm. Their lives were more important. Remember, the next time I see any of you, I'll kill you directly. Those who do bad deeds will eventually have to pay for their actions. You have brought it onto yourselves. King Shui looked at that man who had knelt down. The man gritted his teeth and broke one of his arms. King Shui no longer looked at him, but said to Bei Wang Fan, Let's go. After King Shui and Bei Wang Fan left, Bei Wang Fan remained silent the entire time. Currently, they were both on a flying beast, flying toward the Imperial Cuisine Hall after King Shui had performed the Nine Continents Steps. Go on, speak your mind. King Shui looked at Bei Wang Fan, knowing that she had something to say. I never expected that you were so powerful, but I'm still worried that the people from the Nine Continents food residence would find out. Although those three people would be punished by the Nine Continents food residence, the Nine Continents food residence has lost face because of them. Do you think that they'll seek vengeance from you? Bei Wang Fan asked feeling a little worried. We'll take things as they come. Don't worry about this before anything happens. It'll just add on to your troubles. King Shui laughed and said, a person who doesn't plan for the future will definitely face troubles very soon. It's better to plan ahead of time. Bei Wang Fan was still worried. We better pray that the people from the Nine Continents food residence won't come. If they were to come, there's nothing we can do either. We'll just have to fight. But if we can't defeat them, if we can't defeat them, what should we do? King Shui looked at Bei Wang Fan. Bei Wang Fan felt the urge to beat him up. I'm asking you to think about it. Aren't I discussing this with you? You're my helpful wife. King Shui smiled and said, Blair, you and your wishful thinking. Be more serious. Bei Wang Fan's face became a little flushed. This guy would never forget to take advantage of her. To think that he was still in the mood to joke at a time like this. I'm being very serious. You must marry me. Otherwise, I'll make whoever dares to marry you impotent or be plagued with premature ejaculation. I'll make you a living widow. King Shui blabbered on. Bei Wang Fan looked speechlessly at King Shui. Are you done? All right, we'll stop for today. We'll continue tomorrow. King Shui nodded seriously. They returned to the Imperial Cuisine Hall and a few days later, Ye Jiang came. Miyun Chingge came along with her as well. However, when King Shui saw King Xu appearing as if he was on the verge of death, while in Ye Jiang's arms, he trembled. Ye Jiang appeared very frail and the first thing she said when he saw King Shui was, Shu Er. King Shui quickly took King Xu and was shocked greatly the moment he did. It was because two of King Xu's bones were gone. These two pieces of bone were very important. One of them was located at the spine, and the other at the ribs. This made King Xu's vitality increasingly weaker. King Shui's eyes turned red. King Xu was still so young. Who would do something so horrible? King Shui used the life and death needles to stimulate King Xu's potential. With his bones removed, ordinary regenerating medicine were useless unless they could allow one to regrow their flesh and bones. King Shui had yet to refine the reborn pellet and the golden Buddha aura lotus was used to safeguard one's life. Therefore, there was only one solution at the moment was to get back the lost bones. With King Shui's ability, he would be able to heal King Xu to his original state. Therefore, after King Xu was out of danger, King Shui spoke. What happened? Miyun Chingge replied, this was done by the Golden Yakshas. They said that since you killed a member of their Yi clan, they'll lay their hands on yours. This is just the beginning. King Shui unknowingly clenched his fist. He didn't seek out the Golden Yakshas and yet they made the first move. 
the child from the golden yakshas was killed by Kong Yunlong. But no matter who was the one who had killed the child back then, since the golden yakshas dared to make a move on his child, they better be prepared to receive his fury. Where are Shua's two pieces of bone? King Shui asked. The golden yakshas has a very eerie physician. He said that these two pieces of Shua's bones were very powerful and he inserted them into a member of the Yi clan. Mayun Chinge said furiously, Jiang, don't worry, Shua will be fine. Come, let's return to the Sea King Palace first. They'll come again. King Shui held back his rage. It was useless no matter how furious he was. We've already activated a formation in the Sea King Palace. There's no need to worry about its safety. Mayun Chinge looked at King Shui a little anxiously and said. King Shui settled things here and they left, with Bei Wang Fan following along once again. King Shui didn't stop her either. Furthermore, quite a number of people from the Taiyi Immortal Palace and Divine Palace came along with him. When they heard that the Golden Yakshas had made a move on King Shui's child, they were all enraged. Back then, King Shui had left behind the Nine-Headed Snake tribe in the North Sea. However, they were still a far cry from the Golden Yakshas. King Shui didn't let the people from the Divine Palace and the Taiyi Immortal Palace to join him, but with Bei Wang Fan coming along, there was a representative from the Taiyi Immortal Palace. As for the Divine Palace, the Hill Moving Battle God, the Diamond Battle God, as well as Yin Tong, Lan Lingfeng and the others all wanted to come along. They were friends who were as close as brothers. King Shui knew that there was no stopping them and thus he didn't attempt to do so. The group rushed over to the Sea King Palace. Father, when King Xu woke up and saw King Shui, he was very happy. King Shui smiled and pat him on the head. Most people who saw King Xu would think that he was a girl, being too delicate and pretty. He had silky long hair and was so handsome that most people would feel moved. Does it hurt? King Shui appeared as if he was smiling, but he was actually aching inside. It doesn't. I'm a man. This bit of pain isn't much. King Xu smiled happily and said. Father will avenge you. I'll take apart the bones of the people who dared to lay their hands on you. At this moment, an elderly man from the nine-headed mystic snakes came. When he saw King Shui, he appeared to feel very guilty. I'm sorry, we let you down. King Shui was a little angry, but he knew that they weren't to blame. After all, the ladies were slightly stronger than the nine-headed mystic snakes and given that the ladies couldn't even do anything, they wouldn't be able to do anything either. Therefore, he waved his hand, you guys aren't to be blamed for this. Even if all of you were mobilized, you wouldn't be able to fend them off. Not long later, Kong Yunlong's group came as well. They had brought along two people one being a strange man and another being a child who was about the same age as King Xu. Kong Yunlong said to King Shui, Brother, my nephew's bones had been removed by this man. They're now in this child. The child's gaze was very cold. Although he was being held hostage right now, he didn't appear to be scared. It's as if this matter had nothing to do with him at all. King Shui looked at the man and noticed that both his legs suffered comminuted fractures. However, his arms and hands were intact. His face was also swollen, just like that of a pig's head. Chapter 2220 King Shui's Fury, Flaunting the Flying Sword's Prowess Please spare my life. Mr. Yi was the one who made me do these. The man's body was limp and he was in so much pain that his body was completely drenched in cold sweat. Currently, he was simply begging for mercy. King Shui looked at this man. He was middle-aged with narrow long eyes. King Shui said, Where are the bones? 
Don't tell me they are in him. His bones are still his. What kind of person was King Shui? He naturally saw through everything by using his heavenly vision technique. Moreover, this person didn't have the ability to change one's bones either. The man shivered and King Shui's heart shivered as well. He was really scared that his son's bones were gone for good. Speak up. Where are the bones? King Shui's voice was ice cold and piercing. They have been fed. King Shui kicked out, sending the man flying. What kind of force did this kick contain? The man died immediately. King Shui's hair was raised, fluttering despite the absence of wind. The thing he feared the most had happened and an indescribably fury emerged within him. Brother, let's head to the Yi clan to take a look. Kong Yunlong was also extremely furious. King Shui looked at that kid. Despite being of such a young age, his gaze was very vicious and he appeared so cold that he didn't have the bearing of a child. King Shui didn't think of killing him. This had nothing to do with the child and King Shui was in no mood to take this kid into consideration. He just got someone to take the kid away and take care of him, and told them that they were not to beat him up or do any sort of bullying. This child was a descendant of the Golden Yakshas and it seemed that he wasn't any different from humans. Brother, tell me where the Yi clan is. I'll go by myself. King Shui gave it some thought and said. No way. I'll go with you. The Yi clan isn't as simple as you think they are. After all, they are an influence in the Nine Continents Star Ocean Domain. Moreover, the Huang clan, the Jin clan, and the Cha clan are all on their side as well. If the Yi clan were to be in danger, they won't let things slide. Of course Kong Yunlong wouldn't agree to King Shui going alone. There's no need to look for us. We've come. You're not staying at the Northern Emperor Domain and have decided to come to the North Sea. Do you think that you'll still be able to continue living? A bright voice rang out from the distance. King Shui walked out and saw a lot of people in the distance. This was the Ocean Domain and the tall golden yakshas flickered in golden light, emitting violent energy. They exuded a mysterious force and were staring at King Shui as if they were looking at a dead man. Which of you laid your hands on my child? King Shui walked over and said. The golden yakshas would have some reservations if they were on land, but things were different now that they were in water. In the ocean, their strength would receive a boost while a human's strength would drop. However, King Shui was proficient in the water element and also had the water flight ability. Therefore, his strength wasn't impeded the slightest. Kong Yunlong, you're here as well. This is good. Kong Yunlong killed my child, but you protected him and even killed countless of our Yi clan's experts. Today, I'm going to settle our debts. I had merely dug out two bones from your child. That was to lure you over. The bones are here. Are you able to retrieve them? A tall golden yakshas held two boxes and even opened them to show King Shui. The two snow white bones in the boxes were the pieces which had been dug out from King Shu. Seeing the bones made King Shui inwardly heave a sigh of relief. He stared at the tall golden yaksha and said, You're really courting death. After saying that, King Shui charged out like a gust of wind. Windwisk Willow. The Windwisk Willow was extremely eerie. It didn't seem very quick, but was actually astonishingly fast. Moreover, King Shui had already integrated the Windwisk Willow into his nine palace steps. In the blink of an eye, he appeared before the opponent and reached out with his hand. Gouging Strike. After he snatched the bones from the other party's hands, a gleam of light shone. Everyone saw a massive head flying into the sky. That glimmer of light then returned to King Shui. Divine Weapon Flying Sword. This was the first time King Shui had used the flying sword in front of others. Moreover, 
It was a grade 16 flying sword of terrifying prowess. Not many people were able to see that it was a flying sword. King Shui was thoroughly enraged. If he didn't kill this person, he would feel horrible. Therefore, he used the flying sword directly. This was actually one of his killing moves and he hadn't planned on revealing it so early. King Shui stood before the tall golden yakshas. His figure was a lot smaller compared to the golden yakshas, but he gave off the illusion that his presence was tall and mighty, even more so than the golden yakshas. Everything happened too quickly and they didn't even manage to react at all. He killed third brother. He actually killed third brother. Father, the other party was in a mess. They looked at King Shui as if they were spewing flames, but no one dared to charge out. King Shui's earlier attack was too terrifying. The few older golden yakshas in the front also had to reassess the situation. While they were still reassessing the situation, King Shui's fury raged on. He said to an old golden yaksha, We'll have to settle this sooner or later. Let's just get this over with right now. King Shui held the golden battle halberd and charged forward. Mighty elephant stomp. Five elements divine refining technique. King Shui unleashed his techniques casually and charged out. His actions took many people by surprise. Bei Wang Fan was worried about King Shui since the opponents were many golden yakshas. It was too dangerous for him to charge out alone. The golden yakshas were also astonished. What was this young man trying to do? Was he going to kill everyone by himself? Kill him. Kill him. Everyone attack together. Kill him. Many golden yakshas emitted sharp auras and charged toward King Shui. In an instant, intersecting shadows covered the area, appearing as if a huge net had been weaved from interlocking origin cheese. The surrounding rocks all shattered and the water currents were cut off. They were at the bottom of the ocean, but the surrounding water currents had been completely cut off. Buddha Bright Seal Stellar transposition. The old golden yakshas whom King Shui had set his eyes on earlier was struck by the stellar transposition and exploded from its enormous power. Divine weapon flying sword. King Shui charged out once again, unleashing continuous strikes with the golden battle halberd. Each time the flying sword flew out, it would take the life of a golden yaksha. King Shui also called out his demonic beasts. Long Zhu's great spider web entangled a large number of them and the dragon-slaying beast shuttled about, launching sneak attacks. Every attack was lethal as it flashed around like a ghost in the battlefield, catching opponents by surprise. King Shui called back the divine weapon flying sword. After making several hundred kills, King Shui felt a little tired. The depletion from this grade 16 divine weapon flying sword was tremendous. With the help of his demonic beasts, he no longer needed to use his divine weapon. It was because the golden yakshas were already retreating. After all, King Shui's attacks were too terrifying, whether it was the flying sword or the stellar transposition. The stellar transposition in particular, had been able to kill the Yi clan's Doyen in a single move. However, he was only able to use the stellar transposition once every several minutes. The dragon slaying beasts and Long Zhu's teamwork made him seem like a massacre machine. Both of them used the heavenly magic stars and the dragon slaying beast speeds surged exponentially while Long Zhu's spider threads became even more strong and sturdy. The spider net covered a huge area and a single strand of spider thread could entangle those that wished to flee. The spider thread would rapidly entangle the targets and the dragon slaying beast would go for the kill. While the dragon slaying beast was the primary attacker, the dark phoenix had both control and attacking abilities. It could reduce the opponent's speed substantially before attacking violently with a combination of fire and ice. 
King Shui's golden battle halberd was also effective in attacking. After all, the golden yakshas weren't as powerful as the people from the Nine Continents food residence. If King Shui's golden battle halberd struck the opponent's weakness, even if they weren't killed, they would be gravely injured. Chapter 2221. Things weren't over yet. King Shui was able to kill many people with the Nine Continents Mountain's collision strength of 30 billion Dao force coupled with the shield attack after weakening them. This time around, King Shui had brought out most of his means. His prowess was very terrifying. Many of the powerful golden yakshas were killed and the remainder thrown into a disarray. Bei Wang Fan and the others also joined in, taking the lives of many golden yakshas. King Shui had no idea how many golden yakshas had come. Some of them fled, but there were over 1,000 of them who were killed. The golden yakshas they were up against were the strongest, especially the few older golden yakshas at the front. They were the brothers of the Yi clan's head. Everyone were very excited and shocked as they swept through the battlefield. Earlier on, King Shui had entered his peak condition and increased the strength of the people around him tremendously. Moreover, they also gained a great defense, which felt awesome. The opponents were greatly weakened. King Shui's emperor's key applied the weakening effect onto a small area and didn't have to weaken them one at a time. The same went for the art of pursuing. Although the emperor's key could do this from a long time ago, the art of pursuing could be applied to an area more recently. King Shui let the others clean up the battlefield while he returned to reinsert King Xu's bones. King Shui currently felt as if he was like a surgeon. However, the people in his previous life wouldn't have been able to reach such a level. King Xu's wounds were cut open once again, but King Shui had applied anesthesia using the gold needles. Yi e Jiang watched by the side, her eyes red and her heart aching. At the thought of the pain her son felt when he had his bones removed, she couldn't hold back her tears. The other party wouldn't have applied anesthesia like King Shui had done. The more she thought about it, the more upset she felt. Of course King Shui felt upset as well, but he was a man. Moreover, King Xu was doing very well and didn't make a sound. The kid was still young, but he knew he had to stay silent. If he were to make any sounds, his parents would feel worse. King Shui completed the treatment very quickly and then used the force of rebirth and the life and death needles, hastening the recovery. He also used the spring of life. After all these were done, King Xu wouldn't feel any pain even after the gold needles which were used to apply anesthesia were removed. Moreover, he would be able to recover within a week. King Xu fell asleep. King Shui pulled out the needles and turned to look at the tear-stricken Yi e Jiang. This woman hadn't cried before but was now crying because of her son. King Shui hugged her gently, all right, don't cry anymore. Although the kid has endured rough situations, it's also a means of tempering him. Misfortunes could turn out to be blessings in disguise. I'd rather he not have such blessings, Yi e Jiang said softly. It's been hard on you. You've always been the one to take care of him. I'm too irresponsible as a father, King Shui said bitterly. You aren't allowed to say this. You're a great hero in his heart and he has always viewed you as his goal. I'm very happy that he's our child. Yi e Jiang hugged King Shui tightly. It's all fine now. The kid is very strong and both his aptitude and talent are top notch. Moreover, he's very sensible, King Shui smiled and said. Yi e Jiang looked at their son who was deep asleep and heaved a sigh of relief inwardly. Earlier on, her heart was torn at the thought of her son having two pieces of bones removed from him. 
A lot of those people have been killed. This matter won't just end like this. I'll make the Yi clan disappear. King Shui said calmly. Yi Zhang sighed softly and said, Don't kill the innocent. King Shui liked her kindness. He didn't wish to kill anyone innocent either. But he couldn't calm down the fury in his heart. After King Shui came out, he noticed that the rest had gathered around. When Mayun Chinge saw King Shui appearing, she quickly asked, How's Shui? He's fine. He'll be back to normal in a few days' time, King Shui said softly. Mayun Chinge nodded happily, I'll go take a look at Jiang. Brother, what's your plan? Kong Yunlong asked, concerned. Right now, they knew that King Xu was fine and all of them heaved a sigh of relief. If anything were to happen to King Xu, they had no idea how crazy King Shui would become. The Golden Yakshas are in an alliance with the Demon Gate and the Five Tiger Immortal Palace. We'll have a life or death battle eventually. Since the people from the Yi clan are unable to control themselves, then I'll start with Yi clan first. King Shui had decided to wipe out the Yi clan. He wasn't sure if the other three clans in the Golden Yakshas would take action, but chances were high that they would. When he headed out to wipe out the Yi clan, he might face all the Golden Yakshas. The Golden Yakshas population was too great, reaching several billions in number. They were also considered a great clan in the Nine Continents Star Ocean Domain, with strong reproduction abilities. Therefore, there would be many decent experts amongst them. It was a little impractical for King Shui to be facing so many of them by himself. Brother, there are too many experts amongst the Golden Yakshas. It's fine if it's on land, but there aren't many people who are able to wipe them out within a short period of time. Moreover, the Golden Yakshas have their powerful guardian beast. That creature is very strong and we're unable to enter the Golden Yakshas core area, Kong Yunlong said seriously. How could King Shui possibly not know about this? However, he was unable to calm down if some people in the Yi clan weren't killed. Forget it, King Shui. We've already killed so many people. Shu Er is now fine. We mustn't be headstrong either. We'll see how it goes in the future. At this moment, Yi A Jiang walked out and said softly. King Shui rubbed his head. The Yi clan will probably not take this lying down. Therefore I'll stay here and await for their arrival. No matter how many of them come, I'll kill all of them. They'll definitely come. Yi A Jiang didn't say any more. She knew that what King Shui said was right. King Shui saw that the surrounding formation was fine and told everyone that everything was fine and they could go back. It would be fine with just him around. However, no one left. Seeing that they didn't leave, King Shui didn't urge them further. He felt that he was quite strong now, but it was a pity that the flying sword depleted too much power. Moreover, there was a restriction on the stellar transposition and he could only use it once every five minutes. The Nine Continents Mountain wasn't bad, but when encountering opponents that were too strong, it would still be stopped. The people around him were quite strong and had the ability to kill as well. This was especially the case for Bei Wang Fan, Kong Yunlong and the Hill Moving Battle God. Yi A Jiang could manage as well, but it was harder for the other ladies. After King Shui applied his formations on them and weakened the opponents, they would be able to kill, but not crush their opponents. This made King Shui feel that he didn't have enough strength backing him up. He only had powerful weakening abilities and had good controlling skills as well, but lacked a killer move to unleash a massacre. The dragon slaying beast was still decent, but it was harder to say this for the dark phoenix and the golden scaled dragon elephant. After all, they weren't strong enough. The opponents that King Shui had encountered recently were too strong. 
Long Xu's abilities were still terrifying. Although they were control-based techniques, when she worked with King Shui and the dragon-slaying beast, a massacre could be achieved. The golden-scaled dragon elephant's strength had been growing rapidly in recent times. King Shui didn't know if it was due to the primordial boar's blood lineage that its strength was growing at an astonishing rate. King Shui was also feeding it with aptitude pills, growth pills, and other things. King Shui planned to wait a little longer. Maybe he should let the golden-scaled dragon elephant use the last heavenly magic star. At the thought of this, King Shui increasingly felt that this could be done. He decided to go ahead with his decision and found time to enter the realm of the violet jade immortal. Half a year outside was a lot longer in the realm of the violet jade immortal. The golden-scaled dragon elephant's strength had increased tremendously and upon entering, King Shui let the golden-scaled dragon elephant use the heavenly magic star. Chapter 2222 Ninth Grade Grand Perfection Spirit Gathering Lamp The golden-scaled dragon elephant's strength achieved 12.5 billion Dao Force. After using the heavenly magic star, its attacking power and defense would increase by 30% and could go further as its base strength improved. Primordial blood only made up 18% of the golden-scaled dragon elephant's body, but this 18% was incomparably fierce, causing the golden-scaled dragon elephant to be much stronger than it appeared in actual battle. After completing these tasks, King Shui was deep in thought. If one couldn't oppose the whole world, he would need the people or demonic beasts around him to become stronger. King Shui's controlling abilities were strong. If he had people around him, who could match up to his enemies, he had the ability to enable them to crush opponents. When it was about time, King Shui began hustling in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal again, refining his treasures. Ding! King Shui was startled, since the spirit gathering lamp had unexpectedly broken through. King Shui then excitedly gazed at the spirit gathering lamp. Spirit gathering lamp, treasure, ninth grade, grand perfection stage. Doubles the spiritual strength and ranged attack power of all demonic beasts, effective on any demonic beasts. Permanent, passive ability, zero consumption. King Shui was startled. This was truly a timely assistance. Finally, there was a treasure that had achieved the grand perfection stage. That meant the treasure had reached its peak and no longer required any further refinement. With this improvement, the firepower of King Shui's dragon spider and dark phoenix would be doubled. The thunderous beast would double its attacking power too, but it wasn't really significant. The golden-scaled dragon elephant's long-ranged attacks, such as the mighty dragon elephant stomp, would double in strength as well. However, there wasn't any change to its close combat abilities. Looking at the current spirit gathering lamp, it looked ancient and unadorned. The vintage aura had an oppressive feeling. King Shui didn't expect the spirit gathering lamp to change its appearance after enhancing. Anybody would feel that this treasure was extraordinary at first glance, unlike before where King Shui would not have kept it if not for the heavenly vision technique. Since the spirit gathering lamp had broken through, it shouldn't be long for the heaven-shaking drum to break through as well. King Shui refined the heaven-shaking drum but it did not break through. However, King Shui felt that it would break through soon and his demonic beasts would be greatly empowered again. King Shui also refined his other treasures, such as the Formation Ice Stone, hoping they would be upgraded. Usually, King Shui's attacking power played the most vital role. However, his attack was not good enough. His demonic beasts were barely strong enough. Yet, things were different now. The dragon spider and the dark phoenix were already very terrifying, 
able to reach 60 billion Dao force with the various boosts and the battle god Halo. The spirit gathering lamp could double up their attacking power to almost 40 billion Dao force. The dark phoenix was stronger, able to reach 50 billion Dao force. Under King Shui's boosts and the effect of the heavenly magic stars, they could exceed 80 billion Dao force. King Shui smiled. Previously, he had only around 40 billion Dao force in total. That was barely sufficient in a battle and kill enemies. After all, the other battle gods and Bei Wang Fan all surpassed this level. Currently, with more than 80 billion Dao attacking power and the ability to reduce the damage received, the Dark Phoenix was able to stand in the battleground steadily. It could even slaughter mercilessly with nearly 90 billion Dao force. The Dark Phoenix could achieve its maximum output power in a short while. The Dragon Spider had half of its strength, but the Spider Silk was daunting, basically destroying any enemy who gets entangled. 40 billion Dao was already terrifying, and it could call upon troops of demonic spiders. The strongest ones were half of the Dragon Spider's strength, reaching 20 billion Dao and there were lots of them. Of course, this was only achievable with King Shui's help. Originally, he wanted to improve the strength of golden-scaled dragon elephant so that the chances of winning would be higher when the Yi clan arrived. He did not expect the Spirit Gathering Lamp to upgrade to the Grand Perfection stage. That was great. King Shui felt his overall strength increased more than one-fold. The Dragon Spider alone could trap many opponents and then the Dark Phoenix could bombard them with attacks when their powers were reduced, easily slaughtering opponents. Time passed by without noticing. It had been ages since King Shui last felt that time passed so fast in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. When he came out, King Xu was still asleep. Yi e Jiang was sitting in the room and watched without blinking. Miyun Chingge spent some time to accompany her before she left to talk with others on the outside. King Shui approached Yi e Jiang and sat next to her. It's best that the kid is safe. Him, I know, Yi e Jiang replied and smiled gently. King Shui held her shoulder. You've been too exhausted lately. Go sleep for a while. I can't fall asleep. Yi E Jiang shook her head. Listen to me. We might still battle again. Get some sleep. It'll be all right with me here. King Shui carried her and laid her beside King Xu. Yi E Jiang did not resist, closing her eyes slowly. Just like that, King Shui kept watch over both Yi E Jiang and King Xu. Yi e Jiang had a peaceful sleep and it was already bright outside when she woke up, only to see King Xu blinking while looking at her, yelling happily as she woke up, Mother. Xu e, how are you feeling? Is it still hurting? Yi e Jiang sat up and said caringly, It doesn't hurt at all. I'm fully recovered. King Xu smiled as he hugged Yi e Jiang's neck. Father went to prepare breakfast. King Xu said. In fact, the aroma of dishes was already spreading across the room. Mother, let's go and eat together, King Xu said happily. They stepped out just as King Shui finished arranging the dishes. He had prepared a lot and the others had already started eating. King Xu sniffed the dishes and took another breath to say, Dad's cooking is the best. Yi e Jiang stared at King Xu with extremely soft and gentle eyes. King Shui rubbed his nose and whispered, Master, I'm jealous of him. You have to compensate me tonight. I want you to be my rider. Yi e Jiang blushed instantly and made a noise. Her heart was racing. Although she did it before, she was persuaded and forced to do so. Her heart pounded as she recalled that scene. Her pretty face was flushed as red as the beautiful dusk. It was exceptionally alluring. King Shui swallowed. The loud gulp made Yi E Jiang even more embarrassed. 
She lowered her head as she scooped some soup for King Xu. The meal was very enjoyable. King Xu asked King Shui to accompany him for a few more days to train him. King Shui naturally agreed. He had to stabilize his foundation and strengthen his body. Besides, he really needed to teach King Xu some battle skills. The Sea King Palace was currently bustling, the Silver Dragon Palace had already sent their men over. There weren't many of them, around 200 men. They belonged to the Silver Dragons and were all capable warriors. King Shui knew a little information about the Silver Dragon Palace now. They were quite renowned in the Nine Continents Star Ocean Domain. These 200 men had the strength of 40 billion Dao force on average, about 10 of them reached 50 billion Dao force, while 3 of them achieved 60 billion Dao force. With the addition of King Shui's buffs and the use of formations, these people could kill the ordinary golden yakshas. Chapter 2223 Strong Warrior of the Golden Yaksha, Must Die King Shui was no longer as worried as before. Even though there were not many good warriors in the Sea King Palace who could participate in the battle. There were slightly more than ten warriors excluding the women. Several men from the Battle God Palace joined, together with Bei Wang Fan and Bei Wang Yu, Yunlong and his wife, plus two hundred men from the Silver Dragon Palace. That number was only a small fraction from the Golden Yakshas, but King Shui and the women had some demonic beasts to compensate. With that, their battle strength increased greatly. The opponent had a huge group. It was redundant to use the demonic beasts. King Shui was naturally irreplaceable, as he was able to go up against a hundred or even a thousand men by himself. Everyone knew the magical ability of King Shui now, including the Yunlong couple. Hence, they were not as anxious. The recovery of the divine weapon and the area dominance could substantially reduce their consumption. Moreover, King Shui's formation had abilities which helped reduce consumption and increased recovery. Unknowingly, three days had passed. On the fourth day, the Golden Yakshas came again with more people this time. There were roughly a hundred thousand of them, all of which were definitely a lot stronger than last time. Especially the front line, where it was obvious that the three other clans besides the Yi clan had also sent their men here. Previously, about a thousand Golden Yakshas were killed and that had infuriated the entire tribe of Golden Yakshas. Hence, they decided to go against their common enemies and wipe out the Sea King Palace altogether. It was the Northern Ocean. It was underwater there and the Golden Yakshas were absolutely ruling the Northern Ocean. King Shui's formation defended the Sea King Palace and provided a backup plan. With the formation Eye Stone, King Shui was assured that the opponent would never be able to break the formation quickly even if they tried hard or hired a capable warrior. King Shui aimed at the leading Golden Yakshas and those standing on the row behind. Those Golden Yakshas were tall and big, about six meters tall. Their hardened bodies appeared strong and shining like gold, giving out a terrifying aura. Wearing a violet golden armor and a violet cape, even the brutal fork looked great and daunting. They stared at King Shui with their huge eyes at once. There was a cold killing intention in their ugly faces. A golden yaksha was fine without looking at his face. That is because, his face was extremely ugly and unappealing. However, at this level, the golden yakshas would look more powerful and people would ignore their appearances as long as they were strong. Older brother, do you think this will bring more and stronger golden yakshas if all these people die here? King Shui asked Yunlong. Younger brother, these people are not that easy. It is not so simple to kill them. You should worry if we can handle them first, Yunlong said and smiled bitterly. King Shui was not very worried. 
The strongest among these golden yakshas was comparable to the man of the nine continents food residence. This level of strength was alarming enough. Except for King Shui, nobody could fight against him and even Bei Wang Fan could hardly do that. Bei Wang Fan was just barely qualified to fight in the battle with her current defense and so were the Yunlong couple. Over these years, they had improved tremendously and rapidly. It was the inheritance and the decision made by their old men after the previous injuries. King Shui used the battle god hall straight away and covered the region with 40% of defense and attacking power. The battle god hall could enhance two abilities now with the limit of 40% at maximum, whereas previously, only one ability was possible. It was a great improvement for King Shui's side. People around him improved greatly in strength and defense. A sense of profound, violent, and heavy feeling was added to their bodies. The great formation of thousand kills. Once the formation was activated, King Shui and his men felt their strength rising. The formation was originally of a normal kind, with a moderate increment. However, King Shui had the formation Eye Stone which could increase the power of formations by seven folds. Initially, this formation was very weak with only 10% increment of all abilities, including recovery and consumption reduction. With the formation Eye Stone, the increment became 70%. This was the power of this stone. The others could only increase 10% of all abilities. King Shui used this formation since it was simple and required no learning whatsoever. He only had to activate it. It was unlike the other formations which required strict cooperation. Once it was disrupted, it would end up miserably. The bigger the formation, the stronger its power of increment, but the harder it was to maintain. In fact, it was not greater with more men in a formation. It was the contrary. For example, in a formation like the Thousand Kills, the power would be smaller if there were more people. The actual large formations were trap and killing formations which required powerful materials. King Shui used the Thousand Kills formation since he possessed the formation Eye Stone. In other formations, the formation Eye Stone would not be able to get a seven-fold increment. Hence, this formation was functional when there was a big group of people. Immediately, most of them doubled their strengths. Bei Wang Fan and the Yunlong couple no longer feared their opponents. Young man, it has been ages since anyone had dared to murder our men like this. An elder golden yaksha sounded as loud as a bell, making a lot of people's ears hurt. Do you mean that you can only kill others while others can only wait for you to kill them? King Shui smiled and replied. Don't play with words. It is pointless. I know that you have killed many men of ours, and you shall pay for it today. The elder's sharp and fierce eyes were as bright as two little suns. His entire body was sparkling in gold. As soon as he stopped speaking, he dashed towards King Shui. Along the way, the surroundings were lit up with golden lights and flames as if a boiling golden vapor had appeared. King Shui maximized his power and rushed over. Emperor's Key. Art of Pursuing. The elder paused in golden steam and expanded abruptly. His skeleton made a crackling sound and he became one-third taller than his previous height, about ten meters tall now. The huge golden fork slashed with a shadow of an enormous dragon. Roar! A nearby hill was broken in half by the golden fork. The elder made a great step forward and stomped suddenly. A deep and boundless hole appeared. King Shui was astounded by this old man's hidden but terrifying strength. The stomp was like a reorganization. Realm. This was a great realm. King Shui could not deny that this old man had a much higher realm. When the realm was high, the strength was terrifying. Previously, King Shui had already reduced the opponent's ability. 
The remaining strength should not be so great that it would surprise King Shui. However, he was really dumbfounded by this incredible attacking power. Young man, you must die today. You are indeed an evil and rare genius who is hardly found in a thousand years. The elder was impressed after a brief encounter. At that moment, he was even more determined to kill this young man. Chapter 2224, The Golden Yaksha's Tribal Characters There were too many who wanted to kill me. But I'm still alive and kicking while they've turned into dust. King Shui said as he voided the old man's attack and used the Buddha Wisdom Seal. King Shui's current defense was overwhelming. It exceeded 160 billion Dao and was definitely exceptional. That was King Shui's greatest skill. Buddha Bright Seal. King Shui used the Buddha Seal and a golden light filled up the air on the opposite side. In a split second, an identical golden yaksha appeared and clashed with the Buddha seal. The figure was frozen but did not disappear. Next, two golden yakshas dashed towards King Shui. King Shui was startled. That was a great battle skill. It was even greater than the one used by the Demon Gate Junior Sect Master. The real shadow. King Shui was extremely cautious. He sealed his hands quickly and used the wind whisk willow to pass through. Buddha Diamond Seal. King Shui used the Nine Palace Laws gravity technique subsequently. In the Nine Palaces, King Shui was the king. Once entered, anyone would get distracted unless he broke the Nine Palaces. The elder golden yaksha was slowed down to the maximum. If it were not for his selection of abilities, he would have been killed by King Shui. The real shadow lasted for around one minute before it finally vanished. King Shui used the dragon capturing hands at once. Roar. A violent dragon roar was followed by a stunning enormous dragon which dashed towards the elder. King Shui wanted to see if the real shadow could be used again. Bang! He did not use it this time which caused King Shui to wonder if he could not or chose not to. At that moment, King Shui used the stellar transposition. A soft, white beam struck at the right timing on the golden yaksha, who was still dizzy. Snap! A distinct and clear voice was heard as blood oozed out from the golden yaksha's mouth corner, while he was thrown back far away. King Shui was surprised by the power of this old man that he somehow did not kill. He was only badly injured and would recover within a week if he was put under rehabilitation. King Shui regretted his action and was perplexed by the opponent's strength. However, little did he know that the golden yaksha was even more taken aback. It was a world-shaking moment for him. He had never experienced something like that before. The Golden Yakshas were renowned for their strong bodies, and many warriors of the same level could not break their defenses. This elder was a great man among the Golden Yakshas. However, he was severely hurt by a young man just a moment ago. The Golden Yaksha had to battle with a lower battle strength if he continued, but he would regret immensely for the rest of his life if he stopped there. His cultivation would also be halted. Thus, he had to kill King Shui. He wiped the blood stain on his face. The golden fork gave out a striking golden beam in his hands, especially for the first two forks. They were shining brightly like a little sun. God's blessing. A golden beam lit up on his body again and violent energy arose. King Shui frowned, acknowledging that this old man was extraordinarily strong. Since he had already tasted King Shui's attack and dared to continue, he must be capable to withstand the stellar transposition now. Next, the golden yaksha shrunk one-third, returning to his original size. Yet, the golden beam was shining even brighter. Some mysterious symbols and characters hid in the golden beam. They were lingering around his body, giving out a powerful and ancient mystical energy. 
Tribal characters. King Shui looked depressed. No wonder the Golden Yaksha swore to kill him today. The Golden Yaksha had found the tribal characters. Not every tribe had tribal characters. Only the ancient and powerful forces owned them. Plus, not every one of the tribe could find the characters. Only the genius could do it. The power of characters was related to their own strength as well. The stronger a person was, the stronger the power of characters. Mysterious characters were displayed on the Golden Fork. King Shui was stunned by the Golden Yaksha's strength. How could he get through this alive? Go to hell. The Golden Yaksha rushed to King Shui suddenly. His strength and speed increased tremendously in the process. Heavenly Vision Technique King Shui used the Heavenly Vision Technique and was perplexed. There were characters everywhere under the golden sky, except for two places. King Shui did not think twice and jumped to one of the places. It was surprising to the outsiders, seeing King Shui evading the Golden Yaksha's attack. Even the Golden Yaksha was stunned. The energy consumption for the activation of characters was great. He would use up all his origin key within a quarter hour. Hence, he had to finish the battle as soon as possible. Otherwise, he would have to give in to others. The heavenly vision technique was magical. Besides seeing through the real and fake, it could also recognize this kind of shadow. King Shui was confident now. He recognized that the golden yaksha was only quick initially and now appeared ordinary. King Shui saw a spot using the heavenly vision technique when he evaded. He used the divine weapon flying sword at once. Piffed. Then, the golden yaksha's left shoulder was penetrated directly. What's that? Many people doubted their own eyes. Younger brother, it's a surprise that you have such a great sword, a flying sword. Yunlong sounded a bit perplexed. It is not about the realm. It's an actual weapon, Bei Wang Yu said in astonishment. The golden yakshas were shocked too. They wondered what was the thing that had penetrated the shoulder of a strong Yi clan warrior. If it had penetrated the brain instead, he would be instantly killed. Gouging strike. King Shui made his strike once again. Returning sword. Piffed. The big head of the golden yaksha was chopped off by the flying sword. As it entered the neck of the golden yaksha, King Shui made the flying sword wider and larger. Dong! The huge head fell onto the ground and made a dull noise. Everything was in complete silence now. It was so quiet that it made people anxious. King Shui had killed the leader among the four and the other golden yakshas were frightened. That sword was deadly. It could slash and kill a super capable warrior of the Yi clan easily. Let's go. Kill him. The remaining three leading men exchanged looks. Though they were frightened, they understood that they could not let this young man live. They had to go all out in order to kill him. Otherwise, it would be disastrous for the golden yakshas in the future. Besides them, the rest of the golden yakshas behind made their moves as well. The three of them were as good as the golden yaksha which was killed by King Shui. If they combined their strengths, King Shui could hardly win. Furthermore, people around him could never withstand that. King Shui used the emperor's key and the art of pursuing instantly. He enclosed the whole region with area dominance. Chapter 2225. Bei Wang Fan could help King Shui to break through. King Shui sensed a chill when he saw all of them coming together. After a moment of thinking, he reckoned it would be better to step back for the moment. He had already killed one of them so they were worried and angry. Hence, he brought his men and returned to the formation. The opponents were surprised to see King Shui retreating, but they would not back off right now. If they did not kill King Shui now, the Golden Yakshas would lose their dignity. Plus, 
they had burning hatred within him now. Their realm is too high, probably at the cave realm now, Bei Wang Fan said softly beside King Shui. Cave realm. King Shui was confused. When you reach a certain level and achieve the divine connection realm, the cave realm is the next level, Bei Wang Fan elaborated. King Shui was only at the half-step divine connection currently while Bei Wang Fan was at the peak divine connection. King Shui was her key to breaking through and attaining the cave realm. The moment she falls in love with this guy, she would instantly break through to the cave realm. King Shui did not realize the huge discrepancy of realms between them until now. He would never break the defense without the flying sword and the stellar transposition. Fortunately, he had a strong soul. The nine yang body and nine yang dragon soul prevented him from being crushed. Strength was essential but the realm was even more vital. The realm could improve the strength greatly up to several folds. The higher the realm, the greater the improvement and the bigger the discrepancy. The man that King Shui had killed previously was only at the peak divine connection realm with strong raw strength. King Shui was at the half-step divine connection, so he could hold his own to fight in general. However, King Shui had a strange feeling of the remaining three men. He reckoned he would be at a disadvantage even if he went one-on-one. -on -one. Thus, he backed off. Against the cave realm, King Shui felt that his flying sword and the stellar transposition would be ineffective. He reckoned the stellar transposition could hardly harm them and the flying sword would be evaded and neutralized. King Shui realized the actual gap between some strong warriors and himself now. The difference in realms was like the ranking system in the past life. Unless the raw strength was much greater than the opponent's, many techniques would seem weak and pale. The violent body of the ancient pure breed desolate beast could probably break through the realm. For example, if King Shui achieved the level of the ancient pure breed desolate beast, he could murder all the opponents with a lower realm. It was difficult to upgrade the realm because it relied on fortune. King Shui was satisfied with his realm before this. But now he realized that the actual geniuses were much greater. For instance, Bei Wang Fan had surpassed his strength substantially. Yi e Jiang and Tan Tai Lingdian were at the divine connection realm as well, but they had not attained the peak divine connection. Bei Wang Yu and the Demon Gate Junior Sect Master were at the Divine Connection while Bei Wang Yu was at the middle stage of the Divine Connection realm. Previously, he was at the beginner stage. After a Divine Tribulation, his realm had been upgraded. King Shui was sometimes envious about others experiencing many tribulations while he had not. When you gained some, you lost some. The others might be avoiding the tribulations, but he was longing for them. King Shui was lost in his thoughts. Bei Wang Fan saw King Shui and touched him. She asked, What are you thinking? Nah, the fellows want to break the formation. King Shui noticed the three golden yakshas attacking the great formation together. Mighty waves beat the shore. The water splashed as if a huge dragon was there. The violent energy almost overturned the underwater ground. However, the formation remained still. King Shui was confident in the sevenfold increase by the formation eye stone. If it was broken by force, King Shui would have thrown away the formation eye stone. Little bastard, come out if you can. It's not good for a man to hide. After a long while, the opponent tried to provoke King Shui when their attempts to break the formation failed. Such a shameless group, and you still have the audacity to criticize me. You are physically big but mentally slow. You can't even break a formation when there are so many of you, King Shui replied slowly and calmly. Come and fight with me if you're a real man, the golden yakshas were frustrated and one elder said. 
I'm still young. My weapon is sharp and bright. Although you still have yours, unfortunately, it's useless now. I heard you have found a few young women recently but couldn't satisfy them. I wonder if it's true. King Shui was talking nonsense. Bei Wang Fan was speechless. This guy would really say anything. You, you crap. I can satisfy them just fine. King Shui was stunned. It seemed like this old guy actually had a few women. The golden yakshas were highly reproductive. So King Shui simply made a statement. After all, it was normal to have a few women for a man with power and status. A man could accept having a not-so-powerful cultivation, but could never accept being criticized for his sexual ability. Men would never succumb to the aging process. This also went for the golden yakshas, especially for the men's pride. He was an excellent leader who was experienced and consistently great. He could not help but answer to King Shui. He was irritated by King Shui and lost his mind. Not only did King Shui's men laugh, but also several golden yakshas could not hold back their laughter as well. I will kill you. The elder was enraged. Break my formation first. Let's go back and have some tea in the meantime. King Shui led his men back to the Sea King Palace. Everybody, enjoy your meal. Leave them be for two days. King Shui headed to the backyard. He wanted to be alone. Realm. He needed a higher realm. Only via breakthrough and achieving the divine connection could he be confident in cleaning the mess outside. Or else, the old golden yakshas out there would be able to kill all of them. King Shui had one of his feet in the realm now. After all, he was at the half-step divine connection at the present. There was only a little bit of improvement left before the actual divine connection realm. The difference of this half-step was great. After making the improvement, a lot of King Shui's abilities would be enhanced and he would not get oppressed. King Shui had a strong output power but some stronger warriors could still control him. For example, his stellar transposition at the Divine Connection realm of 150 billion Dao would be reduced to half or more. Contrarily, the opponent would have vital energy increased up to several times. Hence, the ability to cancel attacks would be lost. Besides, the strength would not increase without the realm upgrade. A frog at the bottom of a well was destined to be limited for life. It felt like it traveled the entire world, but it had only walked around the bottom of a well. The divine connection realm was divided into beginner, middle, late stage, peak, and the half-step cave realm. Beiwang Fan was almost at the half-step cave realm. At that moment, Beiwang Fan came forward and asked, are you thinking about the realm? King Shui looked at this overwhelming beauty and said, It is difficult for a smart woman to get married. I have ways to help you break through to the divine connection. However, I can't help you in breaking through to the cave realm, Bei Wang Fan continued. King Shui's eyes brightened. She could help him break through to the divine connection. As soon as he attained the realm, he could handle the people outside and he would not get oppressed himself. In the warrior's world, it was a natural law for the higher realm to oppress the lower realm. It was a fixed and unchanged rule. Chapter 2226 Ancient Drawing of Divine Realm A Good Item King Shui looked at this wonderful woman. Her eyes were like gems and the prettiest stars in the sky. Her skin was fair and alluring that tempted him to have a bite. Her silky black hair was tied up casually with a red hair tie. Her neck was slim and her breasts were full and rounded. They were so captivating and perfectly shaped, making people thirst for a touch. I haven't touched them for so long. I've missed them so much. King Shui moistened his lips while staring at her without blinking. He almost made his move. If you're not interested in the breakthrough then I'll leave. 
Bei Wang Fan turned around and walked away. King Shui grabbed her hand quickly and tightly. I want to. How do I do that? Truthfully, you could have achieved the breakthrough in realm much earlier. You just haven't had the opportunity to. I have a painting here. You can have a look. Perhaps you can break through. Bei Wang Fan gave a drawing to King Shui. King Shui opened the scroll. It was an ancient painting with mountains and a lake on it. There were woods and flowers, birds and fish, beasts and insects. The drawing was lively. There was a vaguely human figure on the distant mountain. The figure had a distinct charm but a blurry shadow, unable to identify the gender. King Shui rested his eyes. He sensed a magical rhythm just now. This painting was magical which gave him a strange feeling and stirred his emotions. This painting might really help for his breakthrough. What painting is this? King Shui asked curiously. This is the ancient drawing of Divine Realm. It is only helpful to those below the Divine Connection Realm. Bei Wang Fan smiled and said. Most people are below the Divine Connection Realm. This is really a good item then. King Shui looked at the drawing. It was full of spiritual energy. The ancient drawing of Divine Realm has different grades too. There is a better one which is effective for the Cave Realm warriors. That item is invaluable, Bei Wang Fan explained. Even this one is invaluable. Aren't you afraid that I would not return it to you? King Shui smiled. You have already given me too much. I'll give it to you if you like it. Bei Wang Fan knew King Shui was joking, but she still thought it was a bit low. Yeah, right, you belong to me. So this belongs to me as well, King Shui said happily. Anyway, take a look at the drawing. I have to leave first. Bei Wang Fan filtered some of King Shui's words. She skipped the argument since this guy would not stop and she would lose eventually. King Shui entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal and studied the drawing diligently. There was strange invisible energy on the drawing. It was neither spiritual energy nor spiritual key. It was a bitter sense as if one was staring down from the peak of a mountain. Looking at the people below from a higher ground, it was a feeling beyond description. The realm could only be experienced, but could never be put into words. The realm was a journey, just like comparing a great and established event host with someone who had never been on stage. The difference of realm was an understatement. King Shui gazed deeply at the drawing. Suddenly, the scene changed and he saw his previous battle. He saw the golden yaksha performing and the thoughts during the battle. The scene changed again. This time it was about two people in the battle. The entire ground was shaking and the mountains were breaking. Soon, the scene changed again. Two demonic beasts were fighting now. A gigantic vicious monkey which was dark and hairy appeared. Its black hair was more than a meter long and very thick. Its opponent was a big demonic beast with an elephant's head and a lion's body. Dong dong dong. The vicious monkey pounded on its chest crazily and the dull and loud noise seemed to come from the ground. It sounded like battle horses galloping. Next, an insane roar was heard, as if it was going to pierce through the heaven. The gigantic elephant lion beast let out a terrifying roar. The roar turned physical and brought a huge cyclone, dashing to the vicious monkey. It was as fast as a tornado. The elephant lion beast pressed on the vicious monkey with its mountain-like body. Bang bang! The loud crashing sound was ringing like a big drum. Dust flew around, stones and sand were brought up in a whirl. Both of the strength-driven demonic beasts kept on running into each other. The elephant lion beast had two 10 meters long tusks which were the most imposing and threatening killing body parts. In a blinking light, a golden beam shone 10 meters away. It dashed to the vicious monkey. 
The vicious monkey dared not go against the scary long tusks despite its strength. It made a huge leap and evaded the attack. Bang! The elephant lion beast destroyed a small hill behind the vicious monkey. The vicious monkey fell from the sky. A muscular leg stepped on the huge elephant lion beast's body. Roar! The elephant lion beast arched its back, letting out a great and loud roar. Bang! The lingering origin key could be seen dispersing and a jungle nearby was flattened as a result. The vicious monkey was extremely agile. It was suddenly holding a huge stick, seeming like a fire plow but much bigger. It was as thick as the waist of an adult man and 10 meters long. It fitted just nice in the vicious monkey's hand. The elephant lion beast swiftly raised its forelimbs. It bent its huge head back, piercing its sharp tusks at the vicious monkey. The vicious monkey did not go hard on the elephant lion beast but drifted swiftly. The black stick was smashed abruptly with a heavy force. It was not over just yet. A strong wind blew out all of a sudden. A dragon horn lion which was several hundred meters tall emerged and dashed over. Its huge claw blew off a summit easily. It was stunningly strong. Next, it pressed down the elephant lion beast. Piffed. A big elephant head was spit out of its mouth, and the elephant lion beast was killed instantly. Opening its mouth again, shining lights were flashing all over. That was a shiny and attractive sword which was thrown at the vicious monkey. The vicious monkey was in turn glowing with black light. While swaying its black colored stick, it was backing off simultaneously, showing that it was afraid of this enormous demonic beast. Sharp fangs were blinking in the dragon horn lion's huge mouth. A whirlpool was formed and King Shui watched as the elephant lion beast and the vicious monkey were flying towards its mouth. Heavenly Technique This was the terrific heavenly technique of the dragon horn lion. It simply swallowed them. King Shui finally regained his consciousness. The scenes replayed in his mind and made him feel as if there was mystical energy gushing in his body. King Shui knew his stagnant realm was progressing now, and it only took him half a day. After taking a rest, King Shui watched it again. King Shui understood now. This was increasing his battle experience. The drawing enabled the spectator to have actual battle experience of the Divine Connection realm. That was indirectly increasing his battle experience and knowledge. The realm was stabilized in real battles as it was especially easy to break through in a life or death battle. King Shui benefited greatly, but it was exhausting to watch. It seemed like he actually participated in the battle himself, so it should not be watched daily. It was considered frequent to watch once in several days. Naturally, nobody should experience a life or death battle in a short period. The advantage of watching this was that it did not cause harm to one's own life. Therefore, the effect was much weaker than an actual battle. However, this was meant for upgrading realms, especially for when one reached a bottleneck. On other days, it could enhance the battle experience and was very beneficial. One had to be clear between reality and the drawing, knowing how to differentiate between them. Otherwise, if one mistook an actual battle as the drawing, you wouldn't have the leisure to be in great remorse after dying. Fortunately, it was uncommon for one to do so because reality was easy to be identified. Chapter 2227 Five Colored Formation Breaking Stone. Piffed. After one month in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, a clear cracking sound was heard. He felt like floating as if something in his body was cleared off. A great refreshing feeling flowed throughout his entire body. It was cozy and was a whole new feeling. Soon, he realized his abilities were enhanced. King Shui was surprised, but he got used to it shortly. Previously when he achieved a breakthrough, his strength increased as well. Besides, 
The main increment was the external resistance like oppressing the lower realms, resisting the same realm and resisting being oppressed. That was an indirect increase of strength instead of a true strength increment. As long as his realm was higher, he would be able to oppress his opponent and his strength would be enhanced. That was an intangible power. It was fair to be declared as a strength increment. It mainly depended on the realm of both parties. King Shui was taken aback as he found out that his attacking power had breached 11 billion Dao after this breakthrough. His strength almost doubled as a result. King Shui was at the late divine connection realm. Perhaps that was accumulated from earlier days. His realm also skipped a few small stages. King Shui was pleased, but not overly surprised by the 50 billion Dao increase in attacking power. At the late divine connection realm, he would still be oppressed by the cave realm. At least, the extent of oppression would not be so great as it was recently. With the strength enhancement now, his defense would increase immensely. The stellar transposition was catching up as well. Before this, he was more than a realm behind and he was being oppressed by someone who was double his strength. It was extremely difficult before this. However, things were different now. King Shui was confident in fighting against the old men outside. King Shui had experienced a great transformation in his strength. King Shui's defense was almost 140 billion Dao under the effects of the Defense Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda, the Paragon Golden Armor, and Foolish Loyalty. The attack of the Nine Continents Mountain was about 55 billion Dao with the power of shield attack. Apart from that, King Shui noticed minor changes on the Divine Weapon Flying Sword. It became heavier and sharper. The flying sword was based on the owner's body. As King Shui's strength increased, the power of the flying sword would increase alongside. King Shui was satisfied with the breakthrough at this moment. He was looking forward to attaining the cave realm. If he achieved the cave realm, he could probably kill the old men within seconds. Although the breakthrough was over, King Shui spent the remaining time observing the ancient drawing of Divine Realm. However, he no longer felt the deep stir inside. It was as if he had lost the previous mutual connection. That was to be expected as King Shui was now in the same realm as this ancient drawing. Though he had yet to reach the peak Divine Connection and Half-Step Cave Realm, it was not that impactful to watch the battle at this realm anymore. King Shui reckoned he could do the same in a battle like this. It was still bright when he came out. Walking to the front yard, the others seemed to be in a discussion. They haven't left yet. After trying for half a day and failing to break the formation, they are resting in the tents nearby. They said to kill any of our men who walk outside. They don't believe that we would stay here forever, Bei Wang Yu said. Ha ha. Of course we will go out. Why would we stay? Still, ignore them for two days first, King Shui nodded before walking out after saying that. He noticed the golden yakshas who were resting in their camps nearby. There were many creatures and living humans in the Sea King Palace. Several of them were really killed as they went out, including the normal aquatics. King Shui knew they wanted to provoke him and force him into a battle. King Shui surveyed the surroundings. The terrain was too simple and the opponents were widely distributed. He gave up the plan of trapping them in a formation. It was impossible when the opponents had their guards up. Coward! Get out! Are you not coming out? Stay in there forever then. I will kill every one of you who comes out. Let's see how long you can stay inside. Yunlong, you are a coward. Isn't the Silver Dragon Palace powerful? Why are you hiding in there? A middle-aged golden yaksha screamed. King Shui looked at them while standing in the formation with Yunlong and others. The golden yaksha yelled after seeing Yunlong. He must have shouted as he saw Yunlong. 
His age was probably similar to Yunlong and they should have been opponents on other days. Yunlong calmly responded with a smile. You're more fertile than pigs. Such a cheap life. I won't fight with you guys and lower myself. The golden yaksha was so angry that his face turned red. Pointing at Yunlong, he said, Get out and fight with me. Only good at words. Are you a man? I am a man and I know it. You, on the other hand, are not married yet. I would ask myself whether you are one. Yunlong was not irritated. King Shui smirked, seeing that this elder brother was good at bickering. You, you, besides being unable to fight, he also lost in the argument. Thus, he panted angrily and left. At that moment, the old men stepped forward and looked at King Shui. They knew this young man was in charge of the Sea King Palace, so the elder who led the previous attack approached him. You can't be always hiding inside. We'll sort this out one day. No rush. I have ample food supplies here, King Shui said. I actually have something that can break the formation, but I've been thinking if I should use it. Behold, the elder took out a five-colored sparkling stone. Formation breaking stone. King Shui sounded surprised. This old man owned various items and this particular item could break many great formations. The formation breaking stone was graded with colors. For example, this five colored formation breaking stone was good enough to break the formation of the Sea King Palace. The seven colored formation breaking stone could break any kind of formations, but it was very rare. Do you want me to use this formation breaking stone or will you come out and have a proper battle with me? The elder looked at King Shui. King Shui heaved a sigh. He knew the elder was reluctant in giving up the formation breaking stone. Otherwise, he would have used it much earlier. The formation breaking stone was extremely precious. Still, King Shui knew that the elder would use this formation breaking stone under desperation. There were a hundred thousand golden yakshas across. An amount that the Sea King Palace could never handle. Luckily, King Shui's strength had been improved. The opponent proposed for a fight which was exactly what King Shui was wishing for now. If he killed this elder, the Sea King Palace would have a greater chance of victory. We go one on one or all three of you together. King Shui asked with a smile. Don't try to provoke me. I will finish you myself, the elder said confidently. The opponent was at the cave realm so he definitely deserved the confidence. However, King Shui wondered which stage of the cave realm he was at now. One would only achieve the cave realm by opening the caves in his body. A cave could be upgraded to the next realm and it was better when the number increased. Eight cave realm was the limit, something that only absolute geniuses could achieve. Only those with special bloodlines or the ancient pure breed desolate beast could attain the nine cave realm while reaching the ten cave realms solely depended on chances. Chapter 2228 the incomparably sturdy diamond white tiger king. Just as King Shui was about to step out, Bei Wang Fan called out to him. Be careful. You can summon your white tiger. Its abilities are comparable to that of the golden yakshas. Why didn't you say so earlier, woman? King Shui responded without cheer. While he realized the diamond white tiger king's strength, he still felt that something was off. Its greatest strength was in its defense, but its attack abilities were not as dangerous. However, if they were incomparable in state, then it would be hard to exploit these traits, placing it on the same level as the Dark Phoenix. After all, the Spirit Gathering Lamp would not increase the strength of the Diamond White Tiger King. Not unless the Heaven Shaking Drum attained the Grand Perfection stage of nine grades. However, with Bei Wang Fan's words, he had a change of opinion. 
if the diamond white tiger king could be matched in strength with that of the old man's, its attack abilities should definitely surpass the dark phoenixes with the help of King Shui's amplification. It wouldn't lose to that experienced fighter even when fighting solo. King Shui was dejected as well. If only the Diamond White Tiger King was an attack type instead. With the Spirit Gathering Lamp and King Shui's amplification, along with the deduction of their opponent's stats, it would definitely be able to eliminate the majority of the Golden Yakshas. It was too bad that there was nothing much to the Diamond White Tiger King, apart from its defense, might, sharp claws, and teeth. I thought you already knew. Bei Wang Fan muttered. King Shui summoned the Diamond White Tiger King the moment he stepped out. Their opponent didn't react much to King Shui's summoning. After all, they couldn't possibly prohibit the other party from using demonic beasts. All they would gain from it would be a round of reprimanding. Raw. The Diamond White Tiger King used the Buddha Diamond Seal right away. The physical attack of the Dragon White Tiger King was terrifying. After all, it was the Mount of Buddha. Even without any enhancements, it was on par with the Dark Phoenix. If King Shui had used his halo formations, its physical attack could reach up to 150 billion Dao, and this was without the effect of the heaven-shaking drum. If the heaven-shaking drum could reach the ninth grade, King Shui was confident that the Diamond White Tiger King could annihilate every single one of their opponents. If only it was the Heaven Shaking Drum that had broken through into the Grand Perfection stage instead of Spirit Gathering Lamp. How great would that be? Even so, these were mere fleeting thoughts. King Shui had invested much effort in training the Diamond White Tiger King as well, even to the extent of using Heavenly Magic Stars. It was too bad that it only enhanced its defense. While King Shui couldn't tell the level of defense it had now, his instincts told him that these golden yakshas wouldn't able to deal much damage to it. It was most definitely categorized under the invincible type. King Shui conveyed his intentions telepathically to the Diamond White Tiger King, and it rushed towards the golden yakshas. Meanwhile, King Shui initiated the Buddha Wisdom Seal. Thereafter, King Shui increased his own status as well as the Diamond White Tiger King's as he swam away. Roar! Roar! The tiger's roar spanned across the entire battleground. The Diamond White Tiger King's deafening roars seemed to have chained up into one. There was a saying that a lion's roar was horrifying, but the fact remained that any cries from creatures of a certain might would be just as scary. Rings of sound waves began to spiral outwards, visible to the naked eye, and the air around them seemed to have been struck by a clash of thunder. The enormous golden yaksha waved a bulky golden trident, pushing it towards the diamond white tiger king. Its golden trident was sparkling in the same color, emitting faint scripture-looking words and an aura that it was seeking souls to be devoured. At the bottom of the sea, smoke billowed in the air, and gusts of wind sliced through it like knives. The sky seemed much darker than before as a layer of fogginess akin to dark clouds obstructed the view of anything above. The diamond white tiger king's body was glowing in bright light, looking divine beyond comparison. Bang! When the giant trident landed its attack on the diamond white tiger king, King Shui couldn't help the quiver in his heart. Much as he had faith in the Diamond White Tiger King, he couldn't help his reflex. It didn't take long before the circle of bright light combusted. What followed was a sound that made the people present cringe and clench their jaws, and the golden trident was deflected by the force. The Diamond White Tiger King was certainly a tough creature. King Shui was exhilarated by the display. The Mount of Buddha had been a worthy title. If King Shui had known about it earlier, he would have summoned it sooner. Though, on second thought, 
it would have served no real purpose being summoned any sooner. Even if it was only summoned now, it seemed as though not even the Diamond White Tiger King would be able to counter its opponent. Raw, sustaining the impact from its opponent's attack, the Diamond White Tiger King let out a howl and leaped without warning, seemingly having jumped right out of the dimension where his realm was. Its sharpened claws were near two meters long, shimmering in a pale glow with the thickness of an adult's arm. It pierced towards the golden yaksha's chest. Whimper, whimper, a hair-raising sound rang out, and a gaping hole of approximately three meters in size appeared at the back of golden yaksha. Inside the hole was unclear but it seemed deep. From it, a strange, gigantic python lunged forth. The python had three heads with the one in the middle acting as its commander with a dragon head. The other two were made up of snake heads. A pair of horns decorated the commanding dragon head. This wasn't a true demonic beast. This was what King Shui deemed similar to those under the Nine Yang Dragon Soul category. At this moment, it directed its attacks towards the Diamond White Tiger King. The dragon head sprayed a pale gold vortex, wishing to suck the Diamond White Tiger King in. Cave Realm. This was the first time King Shui had seen the vortex of the Cave Realm and he was curious. He realized the might of those who had attained divine cultivation and beyond once again. Roar. The Diamond White Tiger King let out a roar as its body enlarged in size. A mouthful of halo spilled from its mouth and collided against the three-headed python's golden vortex. The collision made the Diamond White Tiger King fly back on impact. While it wasn't injured, the force of impact was still enough to destabilize it. Right at this moment, King Shui struck. Stellar transposition. As if during the split second of the Diamond White Tiger King's withdrawal, King Shui's stellar transposition landed its attack on the three-headed python. Bang! The three-legged snake disappeared. With a sway of the golden yaksha's body, the three-headed snake was disabled temporarily. King Shui didn't understand why the Diamond White Tiger King didn't use its vortex, as it would have brought up a beast soul or a magic treasure upon exploitation. The vortex was basically an improved danshan. Raw. Just as King Shui was pondering, he noticed a vortex appearing behind the Diamond White Tiger King. Before he could even see what was inside, a sharp claw emerged from it. King Shui was startled before realizing it was the leg of a white tiger. It emitted a limitless pressure. This was a magic treasure, an inheritance treasure from the Mount of Buddha the Diamond White Tiger King. This was the White Tiger Divine Feet spiritual seal left by its ancestors. The Golden Yaksha's expression changed at the sight of this and retreated in haste. The White Tiger Divine Feet seemed to be a terrifying weapon, piercing right through the Golden Yaksha's body and disappearing right after. As King Shui had subdued the Diamond White Tiger King, he got to know the reason. While the White Tiger Divine Feet was incredible in attack power, it was a pity that effectively, it could only be used once a day. It was a defiance to the natural order indeed. In that short instant, King Shui had felt that it had gotten even stronger than his flying sword. Its claws were too sharp and terrifying, slashing through the body of the Golden Yaksha as if it were made of butter. Still, no matter how obnoxious and terrifying it was, it exhausted just as much energy. With the display, the Diamond White Tiger King's origin key was depleted by a third. Even without restrictions, it could be used three times with much difficulty. The stronger it was, the more restrictions there would be, and the higher price needed to be paid. Chapter 2229 horrifying white tiger divine feet, awakening the guardian. With remaining grievance leading up to his death, 
The golden yaksha looked towards the diamond white tiger king and muttered, Diamond white tiger king. It was apparent that they didn't recognize the diamond white tiger king from before. If they had, it would be hard to tell whether they would have still accepted the fight. Still, it was too late by now. King Shui kept the golden yaksha's five-colored formation breaking stone and the others without sparing another glance. After all, at their level, the items they carried must be decent regardless. The diamond white tiger king had displayed the powerful white tiger divine feet and killed the senior warrior from the golden yakshas, leaving the latter's counterparts apprehensive about their situation. They were now stuck in a dilemma. It would be impossible to fight against the white tiger alone. After all, who would be able to deal with that attack? On the other hand, King Shui was elated. He didn't expect the Diamond White Tiger King to carry such an element of surprise. In fact, his initial plan was to use the Diamond White Tiger King as a disruption while he searched for a way to defeat their opponents on his own. As long as the Stellar Transposition and the Flying Swords were incorporated properly, they would be enough to draw his opponent's final breath. He was currently in his later part of the Divine Connection after all. King Shui had made his preparations to attack in a few moments' time, leveraging on their unpreparedness. Now that King Shui had the five-colored formation breaking stone, in addition to their wariness of the white tiger, he doubted they would dare to attack. Rather, they would likely retreat back to the safety of the guardian beast. The bigger sects and aristocrats of immortal palaces all had their own guardian beasts. It was the mightiest existence of the sect, with power to protect them and the offering in exchange for the authority they wielded. The Sea King Palace didn't have a guardian beast. King Shui was aware that they were not at that level of power yet. The Divine Palace had one, but King Shui had never seen it before. Many of the less mighty groups had their own guardian beast, but they were simply weak. At that thought, King Shui wondered if it was time to get the Sea King Palace a guardian beast as well. Not just any demonic beast could be a guardian beast. Guardian beasts didn't belong to any particular person, but protected an entire clan of people instead. Hence, to find a guardian beast, he would have to look for it nearby. It would be best if it had grown strong from the clan's power. With a shake of his head, he cast those thoughts aside. King Shui was ready. His mind set on killing one more of them. In any case, they had already killed two of them, and the others would not pose a threat to the Sea King Palace. However, there were still dozens of gifted members situated behind the Golden Yaksha's seniors in the front row. They would be the ones to support their clan's survival in the future. The remaining two seniors of the Golden Yakshas exchanged looks before one of them abruptly held out a seal type of item and moved it around in haste. What followed left King Shui stunned. The entire fleet of Golden Yakshas had disappeared without a trace, not a single one left behind. Fled. They fled just like that. They hadn't simply fled. They had used a precious type of one-time use, transportation seal to do so. It was one which required them to place a designated location beforehand. It was something used to save their lives at the most critical moment. After a while, King Shui snapped back to reality. Wasn't that too exaggerated? They would have a 50% chance of fleeing successfully if they had just turned and walked. I was still hoping they would leave at least one person behind. In that case, I suppose they were right in choosing that method, Bei Wang Fei replied and laughed. Even though their troubles with the Golden Yakshas had been dealt with for now, there was still a possibility that they would return, perhaps even with the Guardian Beast. That was an issue they might have to face in the future, but at least for now, they would be fine. After a few days of stay, 
The Yunlong couple left when everything had calmed down. Yin Tong, Bei Wang Fan, Bei Wang Yu, and the others followed suit while King Shui stayed behind without plans of leaving just yet, despite not being in any critical danger. His opponents could only tolerate their rage towards King Shui if they didn't want to risk clashing against him again. Besides, it would only incur mockery from the main continent, causing others to gang up against them. It was true that King Shui had annihilated two of their stronger warriors, but it was done without secrecy. King Shui didn't have much on his agenda in any case. Besides playing with King Shu, King Shi, and the other children, as well as helping them train. Thereafter, his mind drifted back to the topic of guardian beasts. In truth, guardians weren't limited to just creatures like the demonic beasts. For example, there were bloodthirsty demonic vines which were terrifying species despite the fact that they were simply plants. The main continent had a lot of species of plants which were similar to that of the demonic vines, and they had much more to be feared about in comparison to demonic beasts. Even if they looked like they were just tiny trees, they might not be as innocent as they seemed. King Shui's thoughts shifted. There was a stalk of bloodthirsty demonic vines within the realm of the violet jade immortal, and had been there for quite some time. It had plenty of time to absorb the spiritual key within the realm of the violet jade immortal, as well as being watered by the spring of life. While it didn't appear to have changed much in size, its appearance had taken a complete turn from when it was first placed there. That said, King Shui couldn't know the status of the bloodthirsty demonic vines. In order to turn it into a guardian tree, or a guardian vine, it would require an awakening. It would then guard wherever it was awakened and there would be a huge price to pay for it. Besides, those awakened weren't usually all that powerful either, which was why guardians usually awakened on their own and guarded wherever it was out of gratefulness. King Shui was a man of his words. Within the Sea King Palace, he looked for an area with a dense amount of spiritual key. Even though he was under the sea, there were still mountains and lakes here, as they were within an enchantment. Migrating the bloodthirsty demonic vines out, a few women came over, all of whom were startled beyond words when they found out about King Shui's intentions of awakening it to become the Sea King Palace's guardian. King Shui had the utmost faith towards the bloodthirsty demonic vines. After all, they had absorbed so much spiritual key in the realm of the violet jade immortal and had survived for so long. Hence, he thought the bloodthirsty demonic vines must have had intellect by now. The process of awakening couldn't be done alone. King Shui sent someone around the Sea King Palace to collect their members' blood essence, drip by drip, refining it and adding into the spring of life. What was collected before was already in the treasure basin to increase its abilities. As for the hundred treasure chest, King Shui left it out lest it became an entirely different creation. Of course, King Shui and the other women's blood essence were included as well, as those were the more crucial components. Even so, within such a vast Sea King palace, its blood essence wasn't something to laugh at either. They refined the blood essence into a drip that was the size and density of a human's head. With his mind, King Shui urged the bloodthirsty demonic vines to absorb this drop of blood. Everything was smooth sailing. The bloodthirsty demonic vine was the strongest and scariest existence among the vines indeed. It sucked up the enormous blood essence greedily. The very essence which contained countless of other blood essences, including King Shui's and from the other women. For normal people, a drop of blood essence was enough to shave off half their lives, and they weren't normal people. Each drop of their blood essence was packed with great energy. Bang! The bloodthirsty demonic vines rose abruptly, growing tenfold of their initial size, 
the entire body covered in crimson red. The enchantment above was broken and innumerable blood-red demonic vines extended outwards and into the sea of people. A few of the giant demonic beasts weren't in time to dodge it, and were bound and sucked dry of their blood essence. King Shui could tell that it was a success just by watching as the drop of blood shrunk bit by bit. With the rate it was going, it would likely require a month's worth of time to complete. The Sea King Palace will have a guardian in the future. I wonder if the bloodthirsty demonic vines would be strong. Miyun Chinge spoke up hopefully. Plant-type guardians would usually have a designated area, unless their abilities were beyond nature's order. Otherwise, most would only be able to move within the area. However, there are sure to be losses where there are gains. Even though mobility is inconvenient, their might will be far stronger than that of demonic beasts. Chapter 2230. Beautiful Rider, the Almighty Guardian Vine. There were some unique cases of plants which could move around naturally, and others which gained some sort of heavenly technique that allowed them to do so. Those that were mightier could likewise gain mobility. For example, guardians moved when the sect moved, as would plants. This was a natural ability, though many could only use it once in a long time. Many were looking forward to the almighty-looking bloodthirsty demonic vines, hoping that the awakening would strengthen it even further. At its current state, they could already tell that the awakening would be a success. The bloodthirsty demonic vines that King Shui retrieved from Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal could be considered a mystical item belonging to an ancient type of demonic vines. Moreover, it was bloodthirsty, making it the strongest type among the demonic vine variation. Everything was going along on the right track and all it required was some more time. Hence, King Shui created a formation there and left a few people to guard while everyone else went back to rest. This was a troubling time for them. King Shui couldn't be sure if the golden yakshas would return. If they did come back, stronger than before, there would be a chance that the formation could be destroyed. He wasn't sure if they would be able to stop it. The diamond white tiger king could take a beating, but it'd be hard to get the same result with the opponents they had dealt with before. The guardian of a sect held the utmost importance. Many large sects relied on their guardians. A strong guardian would be able to protect the sect for thousands of years. As long as they were around, the sect would be well protected and left unscathed. However, it was difficult to find any guardians, much less the mighty ones. They would not protect an area without any rhyme or reason, unless there was something they wanted from the place, or if they owed them gratitude and such. King Shui embraced Ye Jiang the minute he stepped into the room. King Xu was sleeping in their own room now and had already gone to rest after the days of tough training. With a kiss to her sweet lips, his hands began its climb on her magnificent, yet delicate body. Ye Jiang's eyes fluttered as she held tightly onto King Shui, submitting to his actions. They were apart for a long time and absences made the heart fonder than newlyweds. Even a docile lady like Ye Jiang would be swayed by King Shui's teasing. Master, you've always been a goddess without temptations. Who knows if you have desires too? King Shui teased as he whispered in her ear jerk. I'm not your master. Ye Jiang's face flushed at that. After all, they had been married for many years now. She was no longer as embarrassed as she used to be. These parts have grown bigger again. King Shui palmed the perky peaks as they stood proud. They were surprisingly bouncy and warm. King Shui was drunk by their scent and with a light tug, Ye Jiang's clothes were torn apart. How boorish! Ye Jiang's heart skipped a beat. King Shui left kiss marks from her neck down to her chest. 
His hands were nimble as he made full use of them while she fell limp in ecstasy. Ye Jiang laid on the soft mattress. There was an inexplicable beauty to the contrast of her fair skin against the pale blankets. Pure and untainted, her back was smooth and delicate, not forgetting the perfect combination of her bouncy rear and slender waist. They were all astonishing and King Shui's hands couldn't help but touch him over again before succumbing to his temptation of taking a bite. After almost four hours, King Shui had not only witnessed a beautiful rider, but had also managed to get Ye Jiang into different positions which she would not have done in the past. It left him utterly satisfied. Thereafter, he visited King Hanye's room. Though King Shi had already gone to rest for the night, King Hanye was still awake, lunging towards King Shui's embrace the moment she saw him. King Hanye was the most daring in front of King Shui and was likewise a lot more proactive. She provided him with much entertainment all the way until the break of dawn. It was fortunate that King Shui had a nine yang body, or it wouldn't be enough to satisfy King Hanye's nine ying body. The days went by peacefully and King Shui was hard at work in his training as well. He would spend some time admiring Bei Wang Fan's gift to him, the ancient drawing of Divine Realm, whenever he had time to spare. King Shui had reached the Divine Connection peak during this time as well. Once he surpassed this state, he would be able to catch up to Bei Wang Fan and attain the half-step cave realm. The increment in his ability was simply too small of a margin. It would only increase by a significant amount if he had broken through to the greater part of the realm. Such a breakthrough in sub-realms wouldn't contribute much to increase in might, but it would still be able to resist against suppression from opponents or help in suppressing them. King Shui and the other women were waiting for the bloodthirsty demonic vines today as it finished up the last bit of the blood drop and became Sea King Palace's guardian vine. Its level of ability was still something to speculate about. Time ticked on as the morning sun rose. Rays of pale gold shimmer penetrated the domain, illuminating the deep blue sea. The blood drop shrunk further until it was barely visible anymore. Tisk, tisk. Suddenly, a crisp sound rang out. The spectators witnessed a red ray of light originating from the gigantic bloodthirsty demonic vines, soaring towards the sky, filtering the area in red. The light reached out hundreds of miles out, painting the northern sea in red as its aura followed suit. King Shui was anxious, strong, without verbal confirmation, he knew that the bloodthirsty demonic vine was strong. I will be the guardian of this place from here on out. A voice of a middle-aged man rang out. It sounded neutral, unable to distinguish its gender, and it was calm but strong. King Shui realized that he couldn't sense the actual strength of his bloodthirsty demonic vines, but it felt stronger than the golden yakshas. King Shui and the other inhabitants of the Sea King Palace paid respects to the bloodthirsty demonic vine. By age, the bloodthirsty demonic vine was a lot older than him, and by strength, it was stronger as well. With it as their guardian vine, the Sea King Palace would be able to enter the Nine Continents Star Ocean Domain. You have given me my life and awakened me. Everything I have is because of you. I should be the one paying my respects instead. At this moment, the bloodthirsty demonic vines extended one of its vines towards King Shui, preventing him from bowing. Even so, I owe you my gratitude for being the guardian vine of this area. We'll have to rely on you to protect their well-being from now on. King Shui smiled but didn't insist. This is the exact role for my awakening. Don't worry. As long as I live, I'll protect this place and I am confident in doing so, calmly, the bloodthirsty demonic vine replied. King Shui felt at ease now that the Sea King Palace had obtained its own guardian vine. 
In the future, this bloodthirsty demonic vine might become his own clan's guardian vine instead. Or perhaps, he would awaken another guardian at the king clan when he finds the chance. That said, King Shui knew that it'd be a difficult task. Awakening a bloodthirsty demonic vine was coincidental. It was an ancient species which King Shui knew the awakening technique to, a great amount of blood essence. King Shui had no clue about the awakening of other species, and the failure rate would be much higher due to this. Guardian beasts were vastly different from taming one. Guardian beasts were respected and revered, a distinction from tamed beasts. Maybe he'd have to awaken other bloodthirsty demonic vines in the future. There was still one more stalk left in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal which King Shui couldn't bear to use. Neither did he think the King Clan would need it. They didn't have many members, and likewise, their blood essence wouldn't amount to much. Chapter 2231. Luo Qingcheng's Evil Finger. The creation of the Guardian Vine had greatly increased the cohesion within the Sea King Palace. A guardian was far too important to a sect. The reason why it could be named a guardian was because it was as strong as a god. From the aura it had when it was awakened, they knew that the strength of the bloodthirsty demonic vine was far from normal. Any worries about the future would be solved with the existence of a guardian. Most importantly, the guardian was young and would be able to protect the area for a long time. The inhabitants were the first generation for the Sea King Palace, and the Guardian had each of their blood essences. Only King Shui and a few others knew about the terror of the bloodthirsty demonic vine. He wouldn't have to worry even if he left at this moment. Anyone around the area who wished to bring harm to the Sea King Palace and its inhabitants would incur the bloodthirsty demonic vine's wrath. King Shui had no plans of leaving just yet. The conflict with the Golden Yakshas hadn't been resolved just yet and there was a possibility of their return. King Shui decided to stay back, and perhaps settle the score with the Golden Yakshas once and for all. Spiritual key around the Sea King Palace was growing denser. This was the ability of the bloodthirsty demonic vine. Being a plant-type guardian, it could rely on strength and converge spiritual key to their area. King Shui was itching for time to fly by faster. This way, he would be able to unlock the next level for the hundred treasure chest and in turn, allow his own abilities to progress even further. King Shui's greatest desire at this moment was to move up the ranks of his cultivation. When the realm of his heavenly Tao rises, that would be the time when he is finally able to unleash his full potential. At that point, the stellar transposition and his divine weapon, flying swords would be deadly weapons. King Shui had a great time during these peaceful days with his wives and children. Even though they weren't in full attendance, it was still better than spending time alone at the Imperial Cuisine Hall or during travels. However, Luo Qingcheng held on to every chance to devour King Shui. The relationship between King Shui and Luo Qingcheng used to be clear. While they didn't clearly define it, she had long considered herself to be his woman and the others had likewise thought so. Sometimes, even King Shui regarded her as his woman. Luo Qingcheng had said it herself. She could remain single all her life. But if she were to marry, then King Shui would be the only one she would consider. King Shui didn't dare to reject as that would be a huge blow to a woman. This woman had once been willing to abandon her own status for him. Besides, she was charming and alluring. She was a mermaid, someone many men could only dream of having to themselves. King Shui, are you avoiding me? She finally got the opportunity to spend time with King Shui alone. How is that possible? You're a beauty. Why would I avoid you? King Shui laughed and replied. I wouldn't force you into anything. 
Do you have to be that fearful of me? You were so courageous in the past, even to the point of taking advantage of me. And yet, you're avoiding me now. How infuriating. Luo Qingcheng advanced towards King Shui, hooking her hands behind his neck. Her beautiful eyes stared unblinkingly at King Shui. King Shui wrapped his arms around Luo Qingcheng's slender and soft waist. The woman in front of him was a mature, dignified, enchanting, intelligent, and elegant woman. King Shui found that she was packed with all sorts of charm. What an extraordinary woman. She would be top of the tier wherever she went. She was great in the kitchen, graceful in the guest hall, and glamorous on the bed. Why are you yearning for love? King Shui laughed. I'm just a regular woman. Isn't it normal for me to feel so? With her attention still on King Shui, her lips curved into a beautiful arc. King Shui found that there would always be teasing involved with this woman. Sometimes, he couldn't even gain any advantages. It's normal, of course. I do wonder how you resolved it by yourself. Do you use your hands, or some other tools? King Shui nodded and asked seriously. Luo Qingcheng licked her lips. I used this finger. With that, she stuffed the finger inside King Shui's mouth. King Shui was startled. He watched the sly smile on Luo Qingcheng's face, noting the slender finger in his mouth, and most importantly, what the finger had been doing. King Shui didn't contemplate further about the truth behind her claims and neither did he feel disgusted. Her finger teased King Shui's tongue and he thought, get ready to be teased. King Shui kept his eye on Luo Qingcheng's smile then stuffed his own finger into her mouth. Luo Qingcheng flushed red and retracted her finger, spitting out King Shui's urn before throwing him a charming glance. Let's consummate our marriage today. King Shui hugged her tightly. No, once I'm ready, I'll give you everything. At that time, I'll make you feel like you're in the seventh heaven. Luo Qingcheng rested a hand on his chest, her tongue swiping across her lips. King Shui lowered his head till his lips were beside her ear and whispered. In reflex, her face reddened even further and said, Disgusting. Why would it be disgusting? It's something that all married couples do. King Shui responded seriously. Wait until I'm your woman then, Luo Qingcheng spoke softly. As much as he was agitated, he didn't want to force her into anything she didn't want to. After all, it would be hard to let go after guarding her own body for so long. However, with her in his arms, he exhibited his nimble fingers once more as she whined in his embrace, weak in her limbs and bones. She watched King Shui with undisguised satisfaction. I was on cloud nine, Luo Qingcheng whispered into King Shui's ears. The real thing would have been even more comfortable, King Shui said with a laugh. In all honesty, it might not have felt better than King Shui's techniques, but at least it would feel different. The collision between the visual and the sensation would naturally be stronger during the real deal. Luo Qingcheng bit her lip and said, just a while more. My training during this period is critical. I don't want to be distracted. She leaned forth and deeply kissed King Shui right after, leaving him stunned and feeling as if he had just been stolen a kiss. The golden yakshas returned after another week. There weren't many this time, just about a dozen. They were big in stature, about 10 meters in height with two of whom were slightly shorter. They were the ones who had fled previously. Apart from the golden yakshas, there was a demonic beast. A golden wolf, only about a meter in size but it was glowing in gold. Its eyes were like miniature suns exuding a substantial radiance. Its aura seemed to be able to tear apart the atmosphere. King Shui's heart shook at the sight of the wolf. The golden wolf's aura was petrifying. At this level, 
the size could no longer be used as an accurate measurement. Creatures at this level came in all sizes. Young man, there hasn't been anyone who dared to bully the golden yakshas. Did you really think we wouldn't be able to handle you? An old man leading the golden yakshas came forward. The old man shone in gold and he looked dignified, standing there like a mountain. King Shui was shocked. The old man's cultivation was greater than every one of those he had met before, but he must have been within the cave realm still. I didn't bully them. On the contrary, they weren't doing what humans should. If you could come here and spout these words, then you must not have been anywhere near decent either. Without seeking the truth, you just want to pressurize others with your power, King Shui said as he fixed his attention onto the old man. You've killed so many of my people and yet, I'm the one pressurizing others with my power. The old man glared furiously at King Shui. Chapter 2232, The Powerful Guardian Beast and the Golden Wolf. You've killed so many of my people and yet, I'm the one pressurizing others with my power. The old man said as he glared furiously at King Shui. They deserve to die. They only have themselves to blame, King Shui retorted. Ha! They deserve to die. To put it plainly, it was the survival of the fittest. In that case, let's speak with our fists instead. I'll let you see what it means to be deserving of death. Your friends and family are humans, and so are mine. I'd love to see how you'd counter me. The old man's body glowed in gold, and aura swept across like a hurricane. Guardian, I'll leave the formation to you. With a bow towards the golden wolf, the old man spoke up. The golden wolf nodded before charging towards King Shui. A lone horn atop its head was like a screw, sharp and reflective like a sword, as though it was emanating a golden shimmer. As expected, this wolf was the guardian beast of the golden yakshas. King Shui watched as it charged towards him, nervous about the fact that it was planning to break his formation by force. It must have been quite confident in its own abilities to dare to attempt such an act. King Shui was nervous. As much as he had faith in his formation, his opponent's strength wasn't something to scoff about either. Bang! Just once and King Shui could already see cracks decorating the formation. His expression changed and hastily shifted his strength to the peak. Size was deceiving when it came to the golden wolf. While it was small, it had the power to break the formation. Once it succeeded, it would surely proceed to annihilate them. Roar! King Shui summoned Diamond White Tiger King, the battle god Halo Formation, and even the Buddha Diamond Seal. At the same time, he summoned the Dragon Spider, the Dark Phoenix, and the Golden Scaled Dragon Elephant as well. Bang! The formation was completely broken by the third hit, and like a meteor, the golden wolf sprinted towards King Shui, leaving a trail of golden halo surging behind it. Roar! The diamond white tiger king let out a roar, enhancing its body with the Buddha diamond seal before charging towards its enemy. Bang! The sound of collision reverberated throughout the field as King Shui witnessed the Diamond White Tiger King being flung aside. While its strength was decent, there was still a drastic difference between the Golden Wolf and the Diamond White Tiger King. There was no doubt that the Golden Wolf was an ancient species with cultivation even higher than the Diamond White Tiger King. The almighty Diamond White Tiger King incurred internal injuries in that short amount of time, even with the fact that its forte was its defense. King Shui hastily applied Emperor's Key, Art of Pursuing, and other tools that could combat his opponent. Nine Palace Laws. King Shui had just used it when the Golden Wolf charged towards him with the speed of light. A mystical force enveloped him and King Shui could feel how the hair all over his body stood at attention and leaped away in a flash. However, 
He was still swiped at his left shoulder, bursting into a muddle of flesh and blood. How terrifying! King Shui felt the terror of its powers at that moment. The Golden Wolf was simply too dangerous. Even after the reduction in its stats, it still remained this powerful. Following its successful strike, the Golden Wolf charged towards King Shui once again. Stellar transposition. A flash of silver. Thump. A crisp sound rang out as the attack landed atop of the Golden Wolf's head. King Shui's strike contained 140 billion Dao of power which bypassed any defense abilities. However, all it did was cause the Golden Wolf to let out a howl. Its abilities far exceeded the number of Dao that were used, and besides that, the difference in cultivation between King Shui and the Golden Wolf was too drastic. Hence, it was resilient to the attack. Stellar transposition negated defense, but King Shui hadn't gained the ability for it to overcome Heavenly Dao. The Golden Wolf seemed to grow furious at the attack. The use of stellar transposition had left King Shui feeling disheartened. The process of Heavenly Dao wasn't something he could just change, and so there weren't any other ways to make progress. He could only aim to enhance the cultivation of his heavenly Tao to combat his opponent. This way, even stellar transposition would grow more terrifying in power. Divine Weapon Flying Sword King Shui felt a wave of helplessness at the fast approaching Golden Wolf, and for the lack of better options, he summoned the Divine Weapon, Flying Swords. King Shui was confident in his Flying Sword. With its abrupt appearance, and speed as it flew towards the golden wolf, it seemed to suck in the surrounding air into its halo as it surged forward. Roar! Its speed was too fast to be dodged completely. Even as the golden wolf moved out of the way, the flying sword managed to take a stab at it, shredding some of its fur. Drops of golden blood made their appearance in its place. Ancient golden blood. Roar! Just as King Shui's flying sword made its return, the golden wolf let out a roar and a whirlwind of gold surrounded it. The air around them seemed to shift before the divine weapon. Flying swords dropped abruptly. The golden wolf then lunged towards the flying sword, the horn on its head clashing against the weapon. Ding! A golden ray appeared, so bright that it seemed to pierce into your eyes. The flying sword was cast aside from impact despite King Shui's control over it. His face changed at that. Who would have expected that the golden wolf would have such a heavenly technique? This was too scary. The golden wolf was like a tiger which had grown wings. It could make everything around it fall in speed, much like King Shui's heavenly vision technique. Speaking of the heavenly vision technique, King Shui had also used it in haste, affecting the Golden Wolf's speed drastically as well. The Golden Wolf was too sharp. Not only was it unbeatable in strength, its speed was highly threatening as well. The old man on the opposing side didn't move an inch. He had the utmost confidence in the Golden Wolf. It'd be disrespectful to the Golden Wolf if he decided to interfere now. Spider Thread Bind. The dragon spider shot its web towards the golden wolf. Without sparing a single glance, the golden wolf lunged towards King Shui. The binding of the spider web didn't seem to influence the creature as it dragged the dragon spider along. Its strength was simply much higher than the dragon spider's. Bang! A countless number of spider webs appeared on the dragon spider's body as it shot towards the golden wolf. Snow white cobwebs made their way towards the golden wolf. It halted in its steps this time around, as though it was afraid of the webs. The golden glow on its body intensified suddenly and a whirlpool appeared around its horn, drilling its way into the webs. The webs near it were torn apart by the action and it crossed through the hole. The dragon spider let out a whine before shooting its webs towards the golden wolf again. 
roar. As though angered, it let out a roar and its body grew as big as a gigantic mountain. It was still shimmering in gold, and there was a murderous aura emitting from its enormous stature. The webs wrapped their way around the body, and just as it wanted to bind the golden wolf, a blast of golden flame escaped between the wolf's sharp teeth. The sharp claws tore apart the webs while it was at it. As much as the web from the dragon spider wasn't your normal cobweb, it was unable to withstand the golden wolf. Its golden flame reduced the webs to ashes, and its claws were able to pierce it apart. Whimper! The dragon spider let out a soft whine. In that instant, the golden wolf had already lunged towards it, its huge claws ready to tear the dragon spider apart. King Shui's eyes reddened at the side and with a mental shift, the Nine Continents mountain appeared. The mountain had about six billion Dao worth of attack power now and a chance of striking with its shield. It was too bad that this level of power wouldn't be something that was a concern to the Golden Wolf. Its body collided against the Nine Continents mountain and sent the mountain flying aside. Thereafter, without any reduction in speed, it charged towards Dragon Spider one more time. King Shui's eyes widened with rage. At this moment, when any help seemed too late, he shouted unconsciously, Guardian Vine, save her. Chapter 2233, The Guardian Vine Ended the Golden Wolf. King Shui hadn't felt so helpless in a long time. His opponent was too overwhelming, having complete control over the battle. This was the first time King Shui had felt the discrepancy in abilities. He didn't know which realm the Golden Wolf belonged in, but it must have been a strong one. It was such a menacing existence. Many guardian beasts had existed since ancient times. This Golden Wolf was one of these mystical existences, protecting golden yakshas and allowing them to exist this long. If it wasn't for the Golden Wolf, they would not have obtained what they had today. King Shui had always felt that his abilities were decent and that there weren't many who would be able to injure him. However, he had severely underestimated the Heavenly Tao. Before Divine Connection, Heavenly Tao did not have much effect, but after that realm, the potential and effects it had were apparent. Even so, a person's strength was still the foundation. Without it, the Heavenly Tao wouldn't be able to help much. Besides, when the Heavenly Tao became superior, it would naturally allow his abilities to improve tremendously. The Dragon Spider's life was hanging by a thread and King Shui could do nothing but look at it happen helplessly. Their last hope in saving the Dragon Spider was the mysterious Guardian Vine. Although King Shui was the one who grew it, it didn't mean that he could order it around. This was the Guardian Vine's pride in question. Even though King Shui had shouted for help, he didn't bear much hope. He was out of ideas. The formation had been broken and he wasn't strong enough to counter their opponent. The Divine Weapon, Flying Swords, the Nine Continents Mountain, and the Stellar Transposition were all ineffective in countering its attack. He had thought of using the Thunderous Beast's Violet Lightning Strike to block it. However, against such a huge demonic beast, disabling it temporarily wouldn't help much. They might be able to block it once, but there would be another attack. Besides, it was too late to summon the Thunderous Beast. The Diamond White Tiger King may be able to sustain a few more attacks from the Golden Wolf, albeit barely but it was also too late for that now. If King Shui couldn't trap their opponent, it went without saying that the dragon slaying beast wouldn't be able to either. It wasn't fast enough and would only end up being knocked away by the golden wolf. Hence, King Shui could only helplessly call for the guardian vine to save the dragon spider. Just as King Shui was giving up hope and accepting that it was too late, a reverberating boom shook the ground. 
A stalk of blood-red demonic vines spiraled towards the sky and trapped the golden wolf, the metallic smell of blood filling the air. Roar. Whimper. There was no way of differentiating between a howl or a roar, but it sounded miserable. The enormous golden wolf struggled fiercely against the vines, its sharp claws clawing at the bloodthirsty demonic vines ceaselessly. Both the golden wolf's fangs and claws were honed, to the extent where the almighty bloodthirsty demonic vine was injured as well, spewing blood from its wounds. It then used its bloody thorn and pierced into the golden wolf's sturdy skin in retaliation. Thereafter, its branches continued renewing and wrapping themselves around the golden wolf, unforgiving in binding itself around the creature. Layers after layers, it was as if it could go on forever. Its growth was fast and even the almighty golden wolf couldn't break through those sharp thorns. The golden wolf had been invincible before, but at this moment, King Shui thought it looked helpless. This left King Shui speechless. What kind of existence had he just awoken? What abilities did it have? What realm did it belong to? In his moment of shock, the question about its realm resurfaced. In the end, it was down to the bloodthirsty demonic vine's years. King Shui didn't know how long it had been alive. It had been around for a long time within the realm of the violet jade immortal, absorbing spiritual ki, as well as heavenly and earthly treasures. During the finishing touches, it had furthermore absorbed a countless amount of blood essence, awakening successfully. This outburst of power startled King Shui beyond words. Some existences couldn't be categorized within the five elements. Could it be that this was exactly what the guardian vine was? After pondering for some time, King Shui still couldn't comprehend it and gave up altogether. All he knew was that the bloodthirsty demonic vine was powerful and terrifyingly so. The enormous golden wolf let out a horrible cry, the blood essence in his body was flowing by the minute. It was already surrounded by a countless number of demonic vines and bounded tightly by them. Everyone at the Sea King Palace was on the edge. The guardian vine was too strong. It was so strong that it could end the golden Yaksha's guardian beast, the golden wolf at any second. Not to mention, the golden wolf was a superior existence in the nine continents star ocean domain. The old man at the golden Yaksha's side paled at the sight. He could tell that their guardian was facing its demise. It would be impossible to plea for the golden wolf's survival from his enemies. They would be next to be annihilated when the golden wolf was killed. With the intention of fleeing while they could, they began to retreat slowly. However, just as they turned, the bloodthirsty demonic vines emerged from the ground just like before, rushing upwards towards the sky and trapping the golden yakshas. They were the strongest men of the clan, the garrison. Yet, they didn't have any strength to retaliate. The combination of screams and howls continued for an hour before disappearing altogether. The demonic vines disappeared along with him, leaving only the bloodthirsty demonic vines that weren't magnificent in size at the Sea King Palace. Our sincerest gratitude to the guardian vine. King Shui and the women bowed. Thereafter, everyone else at the Sea King Palace offered their gratitude as well unable to calm down from the exhilaration and pride. This was their shelter, the safest place for them to be in this dangerous way of life in the main continent. There was never any guarantee for their lives. Now, though, the Sea King Palace would be a pure land. Its rise was destined. The bloodthirsty demonic vines didn't respond, remaining quiet as though it had fallen into slumber. It was a vine type hence it wouldn't feel lonely. Its consciousness could float a great distance away in this ocean domain. The Golden Yaksha's clan was finished. Since the death of the Golden Wolf, the fate of the Golden Yaksha's had long been decided. However, 
There wasn't just a branch of golden yakshas within nine continents star ocean domain, so they wouldn't be reduced to extinction. However, among the four great clans, they might be exterminated. Without the golden wolf, the golden yakshas wouldn't even be able to protect themselves against the silver dragon palace as the latter also had a great guardian beast. Guardians were paramount to a clan. It was their insurance. The reason why great clans could survive for long was because of the existence of their guardians. Even if their generation of descendants waned out, having a guardian would enable them to live peacefully. Once their guardian was gone, enemies would attack them without restraint. King Shui felt assured here. After this, they would expand and strengthen their own might before entering the Nine Continents Star Ocean Domain. The Sea King Palace's strength was increasing at an exceptional rate, but they still needed time. The formation of a great power required the hard work from generations of descendants and would require at least a few hundred years to achieve it. King Shui bid the Guardian Vine farewell and returned to the Imperial Cuisine Hall with the other women. As the news of the Sea King Palace's elimination of the Golden Yaksha's Guardian Beast spread, many others gathered soon after his return. Even the story of his awakening of the Guardian Vine became widely known. Awakening a Guardian Vine was akin to planting it. In the future, its terror would reflect upon King Shui as a figure to be feared. To be able to awaken such a grade of Guardian could only mean that their blood essence was extraordinarily strong as well. After all, it was the most crucial element to awakening a Guardian. Nothing else needed to be said about King Shui's blood essence in this case. Chapter 2234. Trouble arose from a bite, Bei Wang Fan's cave realm. The Imperial Cuisine Hall had grown larger now with the influx of new people. There were some who came over from the Taiyi Immortal Palace, and even Bei Wang Lifeng was there. The Golden Yakshas were allied with the Demon Gate. King Shui's victory was equivalent to breaking a limb off of the Demon Gate. It didn't matter whether the Demon Gate or the Golden Yakshas were the limb to the main body. Either way, it was a great loss to the Demon Gate and the Five Tiger Immortal Palace. The Divine Palace and the Taiyi Immortal Palace were more than pleased to hear the news. The opponents had been old nemeses of theirs, and it was only natural for them to be happy when these enemies were weakened. The Golden Battle God suggested King Shui to take over the Divine Palace once more but King Shui declined. Instead, he asked, Elder, is there something called the Nine Continents Divine Palace? Golden Battle God grew silent. King Shui had posed the question when there wasn't anyone else around. Yes, it's a superior existence. If you ever meet them one day, you must think of a way to join the Nine Continents Divine Palace, Golden Battle God gave a straight answer. Doesn't the Divine Palace surpass the Nine Continents Divine Palace? Is it that crucial to join the Nine Continents Divine Palace? King Shui asked curiously. The Golden Battle God let a bitter laugh slip and said, The Nine Continents Divine Palace is the mightiest existence among all divine palaces. While that doesn't provide much affirmation, any divine palace would feel a sense of belonging with the Nine Continents Divine Palace. It is the headquarters of all divine palaces. A holy place. It is the mightiest existence which surpasses my years in multiples. It has been passed down for countless years. It is near impossible to ever surpass the Nine Continents Divine Palace. King Shui understood now. The existence of the Nine Continents Divine Palace was real and it was the peak of the Golden Pyramid. Besides the Nine Continents Divine Palace, there were many others with the Nine Continents as part of their label. There would surely be a chance for him to meet them. Pushing the thoughts about the palace aside, 
King Shui focused his energy on strengthening himself again as well as the Divine Palace. Bei Wang Fan smiled at King Shui and said, Not bad. King Shui chuckled and asked, Did you miss me that much after just a few days? Bei Wang Li Fend watched as his daughter's smile was laced with a tint of embarrassment and annoyance. The sight made his heart swell with relief and happiness. After all, he had been worried about his daughter for all these years. Bei Wang Fan's face flushed a deeper red when she noticed her dad's smile. Father-in-law, this is a little gift from your son-in-law. I hope you'd find it to your liking. King Shui presented a variety of items, of which some were of the alcohol variety. You jerk. Bei Wang Fan wanted to strangle King Shui. Ha ha ha. All right. I'll accept it. You must take good care of Fan Air. Bei Wang Li Feng responded gleefully. Father. Bei Wang Fan retorted with a mixture of annoyance and anxiousness. Others smiled as they watched her, before turning to King Shui. You just barely met the mark for the goddess of the northern emperor. Bei Wang Fan was the most beautiful woman, the goddess of the northern emperor domain. I didn't accept anything, so it doesn't matter what you said. Bei Wang Fan snapped angrily before turning on her heel and walking away. King Shui couldn't tell if she was truly angry or just embarrassed. At this moment, Bei Wang Li Feng chuckled and said, Imp, stop standing there and go coax her. King Shui scratched his head and replied, All right, I'll go right now. Bei Wang Fan was alone in the backyard, venting to no one about King Shui being a jerk. Little Fan Fan, you're becoming more and more like a delicate lady. Here, let your husband coax you. King Shui spoke up shamelessly. Disgusting. Get away. Bei Wang Fan glared at King Shui. An abundant spirit and a jade structure with infinite grace. Shoulders fine like knives and a slender waist. Your skin is fair and smooth. How soft and perky. How I wish I could touch. King Shui rubbed his hands together as he watched Bei Wang Fan. Ah, go to hell. I'll bite you to death. Bei Wang Fan lunged forward and grabbed King Shui's arm before biting down harshly. She was enraged by King Shui, but couldn't win against him in the end. Even her personality was turning increasingly submissive in front of him. Ah, King Shui let out a yell, but didn't move in fear of hurting Bei Wang Fan's teeth. His arm was being pulled in front of Bei Wang Fan to be bitten, and now they were closer to each other than before. Naturally, his eyes were exposed to the bouncy area thanks to the close distance. King Shui smacked his lips. Then I'll bite you too. He lunged forward and bit Bei Wang Fan's chest after his words. King Shui wasn't forceful in the act. It was just a little nibble, leaving Bei Wang Fan stunned. As though struck by lightning, she leaped aside with her shaking body. She didn't have that big of a reaction when King Shui touched her before, but she was staring motionless at King Shui this time around. Tears began to well up in her beautiful eyes before streaming down. She turned on her heels and walked away. King Shui panicked, rushing forward to hold her in his arms, quickly saying, I'm sorry. What relationship do you have with me? What do you take me for? Bei Wang Fan's voice was cold, just like the first time they met. King Shui knew that he had gone overboard this time. He could feel the distance increasing between them. Even with her in his arms, he didn't feel like he could get her back. She had never been overly agitated by King Shui's teasing. She had even seen King Shui as her future husband. But even as a future husband, he had no right to be this frivolous with her. Even if they were married, he would have to consider her feelings. He was being downright disrespectful to her. What did he take her for? Bei Wang Fan felt cold, as though something had been broken. She was upset and sad, 
not because King Shui had neglected her feelings but the attitude she had towards King Shui. King Shui, I need to be alone. Her emotionless voice left him helpless. He grew vexed all of a sudden, as though he had just lost something important. Tan Tai Lingyan had left. This was a fact that he had never truly forgotten. Now it seemed like he was going to lose Bei Wang Fan as well. He was going to lose the woman he hadn't had the chance to call his. Snap! A crisp sound rang out. As if something in his body had been broken, a stream of fresh blood flowed from the corner of King Shui's lips. The world in front of him seemed so clear suddenly, like an epiphany. Feelings, relationships, and everything else, he realized, were just troubles that people brought upon themselves. Bei Wang Fan watched the man in front of her, the one whom she wasn't sure about her feelings for. She watched motionlessly as he stood there with fresh blood flowing down his lips and her heart ached. In that instant, she realized that she loved this man. At that thought, a cave opened up behind her. A breakthrough. She had really broken through. It was true that she realized this love wasn't as great as she expected and felt it slipping past her fingers. Whether it would be lost in the end, she had still experienced love and broken through her current realm, attaining the cave realm. She was at half-step of the cave realm before, and now she had finally attained the cave realm. The opening to the cave was evidence of that. The mouth to the cave grew clearer even though the inside was still a blur. After the formation, another cave appeared behind her, on the other side of Bei Wang Fan. Bei Wang Fan stood there as she stared at King Shui, as though she gained an epiphany as well. Memories of their time together flooded her mind and she realized what beautiful memories they were. It was too bad that she didn't feel the same way she had before. At that moment, her heart felt as though it had just lost something. Chapter 2235 King Shui's Gold Cave strength growing rapidly. Double caves. To reach two caves the moment she attained a breakthrough. This was a talent blessed by the heavens. However, thereafter, another cave appeared behind Bei Wang Fan. To be reaching triple caves on the first breakthrough. There were no further breakthroughs. It stopped at triple caves. Bei Wang Fan looked at King Shui, her gaze filled with struggles and then she turned to leave. As Bei Wang Fan slowly left and her beautiful figure went into the distance, fresh blood once again flowed out from the corners of King Shui's lips. However, at this moment, a vortex appeared behind him. King Shui's brows furrowed as if he was trying to bear with this intense pain. Dark clouds suddenly filled up the sky. There were even some purple clouds amongst them, covering up the entire sky. Boom! A bolt of lightning struck out toward King Shui. King Shui hadn't thought that comprehending this relationship would bring him a tribulation. Was this a gain from one's experience? Why did he have the feeling that the price he paid for this experience was too great? A bolt of lightning struck King Shui. He didn't move but the vortex behind him grew increasingly stronger, as if wanting to suck in the world around it. Boom boom. The densely packed lightning bolts kept landing, and only the snow-white lightning bolts could be seen in the sky. Zizi. A bolt of violent lightning struck down. King Shui shivered, but it was his heart that ached. It was as if he had seen Tan Tai Lingyan when she had left. He wondered how she was doing. To think that he hadn't been able to suppress the powerful demon king's blood in her body. His body ached and several huge violet lightning bolts landed on King Shui's body. Ah! King Shui was in so much pain that it felt as if his body were going to break. It was as if his body was no longer his own. He let out a loud bellow into the skies as if wanting to unleash the suppressed and irritating feelings in his body completely. As he bellowed out, 
the vortex behind him slowly became a cave. Most importantly, it was in a faint gold color, but it was a cave. Boom boom. Lightning once again appeared in the sky. At this moment, a huge vortex appeared in the gold cave, sucking in all the wild lightnings in the sky. This was not all. King Shui also discovered a strange thing. The thunderous beast was in this cave. For a moment, King Shui couldn't understand what was going on. The lightnings in the sky kept on plunging down, but the gold cave was like a bottomless hole, drawing in all the lightning bolts no matter how many there were. The faint gold cave became increasingly condensed and glimmered. It was unlike any other caves. At the very least, it was different from Beiwang Fan's caves from earlier, as well as the Golden Yaksha's caves. King Shui felt that his physical strength was increasing as well. It wasn't increasing at a very fast speed, but it wasn't slow either. This was given to him by the lightning that had struck him. The first few caves that appeared at the cave realm were very important. Most people would get one when they reached this realm, and geniuses might get two. Even very powerful geniuses would only have two. Having three was already a little heaven-defying and demonic. Only in the legends were there people who would get four. But there probably weren't many people who had seen someone who had achieved this. Slowly, together with the lightning, King Shui's gold cave stabilized. This cave was right behind King Shui, unlike how other people's which would be above their left or right shoulder. King Shui's cave appeared directly behind him, and it looked very different as well. Roar roar! The strength of the thunderous beast in the cave suddenly grew in leaps and bounds as it glimmered in violet light, having a striking appearance. The thunderous beast was a divine beast that controlled lightning, but it hadn't been able to encounter a suitable fortune and thus, didn't get stronger all this time. The thunderous beast was a control-type divine beast. King Shui had no idea what changes the thunderous beast was going through, but it was now a lot stronger than it was before. The dark clouds and the violet clouds in the sky continued to come down, and the gold cave no longer sucked them in. Therefore, all of them landed on King Shui. Despite that King Shui's body was very strong, he gritted his teeth and hung on. However, it was as if there was no end to the lightnings in the sky and King Shui started to panic. Ah, King Shui couldn't hold it in any further, and once again let out a loud bellow. His hair floated up, the green veins on his body popped up. His muscles, that were tougher than steel, were tensed up tightly. King Shui continued to receive the countless lightning bolts that were coming down on him. Cave. This time around, a cave appeared on King Shui's left shoulder. It looked very blurry, but he was certain that this was a cave, a second one. Gradually, this cave took form and looked like other people's caves. It didn't draw in lightning either. King Shui's mouth was filled with blood and a thought struck him. He rapidly took out the tribulation evasion pills and took one. Instantly, he could feel a mysterious change going through his body. It was as if his body was a conductor. There were no changes to the lightning in the sky, but when they struck his body, 80% of them were conducted out. This made King Shui feel a little better. The second cave took form, and the lightnings in the sky were reduced by half. This made King Shui heave a sigh of relief. He sensed that his strength had grown a lot and right now, his body was extremely powerful. He had achieved a major breakthrough in his realm and had gotten stronger as well. With that, his ability to withstand the lightning in the sky also grew. Moreover, with the tribulation evasion pill that he had taken, it would be much easier for him to brace against the next tribulation. The third cave also gradually appeared. King Shui glanced at it and heaved another sigh of relief. 
He was satisfied just for the third cave to appear. He didn't feel that he was a person of great talent. Yet it was true that he had some treasures and it could be counted as part of his talent as well. All in all, he already felt very satisfied to have the third cave appearing, considering Bei Wang Fan's first breakthrough also brought her three caves. Having three caves was already very terrifying. To have three caves appear on the first breakthrough was already the best achievement currently known maybe with exception of the legendary warriors in the myths. A lot of the current top experts only had two of them back then. The lightning in the sky reduced gradually, and the faint shape of a fourth cave suddenly appeared behind King Shui in the end. It was very faint, and one wouldn't be able to tell if they didn't take a close look. If they did, they would be able to see the faint silhouette of a cave. King Shui was now in a very bad state. He was covered in wounds and in a great deal of pain, but on the contrary, he felt very happy and agitated. He had now reached the cave realm, and even the fourth legendary caves had appeared for him, spiking his battle prowess by an extreme amount. Having reached the divine connection realm, his attacking prowess had increased by a lot. Right now, the attacking prowess of King Shui's physical body was at 22 billion Dao force. King Shui's current strength was at 22 billion Dao force. He had a defense of 220 billion Dao force. The Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda would increase 20% of his defense and thus, King Shui's defense had reached 264 billion Dao force. The Parry Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda and the Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda would increase his ability to block off attacks by 22 billion Dao force. It was like King Shui now had a defense of about 280 billion Dao force. King Shui's Divine Weapon Flying Sword could fend off an additional 3.2 billion Dao force, and increase his defense by 3.2 billion Dao force. King Shui's current defense had reached about 290 billion Dao force. This made King Shui's strength increase in leaps and bounds. It was too much. Most importantly, he had reached the cave realm. This realm was very terrifying. Just being able to reach the divine connection realm was very terrifying. Many geniuses had never been able to truly step into the gates of the heavenly Tao in their entire lives. King Shui was covered in blood now. And then he realized, there were also demonic beasts that had appeared in his other two caves. Right now, King Shui had no idea if they were the real demonic beasts or just their spirits. It was the Diamond White Tiger King and the Dragon Slaying Beast. King Shui entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal to take a look and realized that the demonic beasts were still there. This meant that the ones in his caves were strands of their spirits or consciousness. He had no idea what the meaning of this was. After all, he was still trying to figure out the cave realm. Chapter 2236, Won't Let You Leave Again. The breakthrough this time really did surprise King Shui. It was because he skipped past the half-step cave realm. The reason something like this happened was related to Bei Wang Fan. Although King Shui was happy now, he still felt upset at the thought of Bei Wang Fan and about what happened the night before. King Shui liked this woman. There was no reason why a person would like another. It was like how there would be some women and no matter how beautiful they were, he wouldn't have the feelings of love for them. The power of the secular world, as well as setbacks, would tend to produce huge impacts. He hadn't thought that a single change from Bei Wang Fan, just a gaze, a single word, and the feeling of the change of the distance between them, would let him go through such a huge transformation. After cleaning up, King Shui started to cultivate and temper the power increment he had just received. The increment to King Shui's strength was very stable. After all, 
huge breakthroughs in one's realm would tend to stabilize one's foundation. Moreover, King Shui's primary ability was his defense, and it was easy to familiarize with it. Nine Continents Mountain. This supreme treasure's attacking prowess had also reached a terrifying 110 billion Dao force. Moreover, it had its terrifying shield attack. The Nine Continents Mountain was very useful and could be used in battles from now on. Cave. King Shui started to slowly study the caves. He thought of the cave with the diamond white tiger king. There was a white tiger divine feat inside. Something that was akin to a destined legacy's battle technique. Other than being able to provide the cultivator with origin key and strength, the cave could also nurture beast spirits. When the cultivator was injured, they could recuperate in the cave. The cave absorbed and purified powers from the world which provided origin key, speeding up the person's cultivation. One could even reach the level of a cave heavenly technique, which would have mysterious and unfathomable abilities. King Shui sensed the thunderous beast in the gold cave. This should be a spirit, yet also like a thunderous beast that was formed from a type of energy. It held a terrifying electric force, and this spirit seemed to be like that of the ancient desolate beasts, emitting a terrifying aura. King Shui attempted to mobilize the thunderous beast in the cave. Boom! The thunderous beast darted out like a bolt of lightning crashing in the sky and sending smoke all around. Most importantly, its spirit didn't disappear, as if it were a real thunderous beast. A familiar power was transmitted into King Shui's body. Right now, he could use his consciousness to control this spirit. Thunderbolt, Violet Lightning Strike, Violet Lightning Net. There were no interferences from the outside world, and this continued on for about 15 minutes. King Shui understood a little on how amazing the cave realm was. The cave realm allowed one to refine and nurture the spirits of demonic beasts. One could even change the beast spirits in the cave, allowing the cultivator to grasp a powerful battle technique of a demonic beast. Controlling beast spirits wouldn't imply a distraction. It would be just like performing a battle technique. After leaving, King Shui was in a bit of a daze. He didn't chase after Bei Wang Fan earlier and didn't know if he should. A woman like Bei Wang Fan wouldn't be pacified just by saying something good to her. However, she was still a woman. Would she be pacified if he were to say something nice? King Shui walked to the front courtyard and saw that everyone was around. Bei Wang Fan didn't leave either and this made King Shui very surprised. After all, with what had happened earlier, he felt that she would leave. Seeing that she didn't go away, King Shui heaved a sigh of relief. Earlier on, King Shui seemed to have comprehended a lot in an instant. He didn't worry too much about the gains and losses. He had an indescribable disposition, confidence, and warmth, but it wasn't sharp. King Shui, make us some food. I want to eat food that you make. Nuo Lan looked at King Shui and said happily. King Shui smiled and nodded. When he headed to the kitchen, he had to pass by Bei Wang Fan. King Shui looked at her and saw that she was smiling as she looked at him. Although she was smiling, King Shui felt that they had grown further apart. King Shui's footsteps were a little heavy and he walked over, telling himself that what's his would eventually be his. Things mustn't be forced. At least, he couldn't force a relationship. Even if he loved her, he wasn't willing to force her. Give up. Should he give up? King Shui's internal struggles were very strong. He looked at Bei Wang Fan and struggled intensely. In the past, he had always taken the attitude of not forcing things. Thereafter, he felt that if he liked a woman, he would have to get his hands on her even if he had to do it by force. Of course, the prerequisite was that she loved him as well. 
King Shui maintained the same stand. If the woman he liked likes him back, then there was no one who could break them apart. However, if she no longer loved him, then King Shui couldn't get himself to forcibly keep her by his side. Suddenly, King Shui felt that someone was pulling on his hand, and he shivered as he sensed that warm and beautiful hand, feeling great anxiety. His entire body seemed to be trembling as he looked at Bei Wang Fan, having the anxious feeling as if he had lost something but gained it back. He asked, Have you forgiven me? If I don't grab your hand, I'm afraid that you'll leave forever. You're irresponsible. Bei Wang Fan's voice was very cold, but it sounded melodious to King Shui's ears. Bei Wang Fan turned to leave after saying this, heading toward where her father was. However, King Shui felt very happy. He calmed down completely and that existence in his heart that felt like a crack was stabilized. When Bei Wang Fan appeared indifferent and cold to King Shui, he became mature. The blow he received then made him comprehend a lot of things about love, leading him to attain a breakthrough in his realm. However, humans were emotional creatures. Even after maturing, one couldn't avoid feelings and should be able to handle relationships and emotions better. King Shui had always felt that he wasn't mature enough in term of his feelings. This was both for the past and the present. King Shui was very happy now, and he made a lot of unique and good dishes, a lot of them being made with the best things in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Not only were they nourishing, but could increase a lot of one's origin key. These people had a great fortune to be able to enjoy this feast. Bei Wang Fan ate happily, but King Shui didn't eat at all. He kept himself very busy. I have no use for this anymore. I'll return this to you. Thank you. After the meal, King Shui handed the ancient drawing of Divine Realm to Bei Wang Fan. Him, Bei Wang Fan received it. King Shui stood before her, wanting to say something but found it hard to speak a single word. In the past, he was able to tease her casually, but now she had changed and King Shui was unable to act like how he had done before. King Shui smiled, feeling ridicule over himself. I thought you were a very daring person, so why are you acting so cowardly now? You seem to be very arrogant when you first met me. Bei Wang Fan also felt a little awkward when she saw King Shui acting like this. Back then, I didn't like you, so I wasn't afraid of anything. And now, I suddenly feel that you're so distant. King Shui shook his head, smiling a little bitterly. He had put in a lot of effort before this woman acted like an ordinary woman. But in a flash, she went back to how she had been in the past. Of course, King Shui would feel gloomy over this. I'm angry because I'm not that important to you. If I had allowed you to pass by me earlier, you might really disappear for good before my eyes. If you truly loved me, you wouldn't let go of me so easily. Bei Wang Fan looked at King Shui and said seriously, My heart isn't that strong. After very long, King Shui said softly, He was the only one who knew that these were characteristics from the memories of his previous life that had been embedded into his bones. If he didn't have his current strength and things he owned now, he would probably not even dare to look at this woman when he was standing before her. Bei Wang Fan hadn't expected that King Shui would say this, but she seemed to understand a little. She smiled, my realm has progressed and I've comprehended a lot. Right now, even if I were to change, some things wouldn't disappear. I still want to get married in this life. You've taken so much advantage of me. If I don't marry you, who else can I get married to? King Shui put out his hands, wanting to embrace her, but halfway, he found it hard to reach out further. A hint of disappointment flashed in Bei Wang Fan's eyes, and this made King Shui summon a lot of courage to embrace her tightly. He said, 
No matter what happens, I'll never let you leave my side.